everybody. Welcome back. If you're watching this as a catch up, I feel sorry for you. We are on day 13. We are 83.3 Completa Tetativo of Assetto Corsa single player. Look at all these goals 48 out of 71 single event races. Uh, hot laps done, drifts done, drag done, time attack to be done. It's never ending. It's crazy. It, it, oh, I'm losing the will, but we're doing it. It's happening. They say it's impossible, but uh, the, poss the impossible seems to be being made possible right before your eyes. Click that like button, click that subscribe button, and cry yourselves to sleep. Um, let's uh, let's continue. El Continuos. Who will be first in chat? Who will be first? Is it JK46? Off to the gulag for you. <laughs> Great news on the kitchen front today. Hello, Peanut. We got ourselves a coffee grinder, and it works fantastic. So now I can make coffee well quick, mate. I don't, I don't like ACC, but I do like the normal. Normal, the so normal. That is amazing. So it's probably one of the, probably one of the, fun. one of the or not the best simulation to practice, like uh, even F1 or GT, GT cars. They're really, it's really good. <laughs> Frosty, but did you um, did you um, did you set fire to the people above you and they've now left? <laughs> did you install upside down landmines on the floor <laughs> and now the people above you have no legs and can no longer make noise? Uh, it's a bit extreme, but sometimes that's the solution to noisy neighbours. You, you've been given 80 to 100% not able to work. Well, how is that good news? <laughs> not good news. Getting, yeah, but I mean, that's not necessarily good news. I mean, it is and it isn't. <laughs> For the name, the name has been good news. Oh, dear. Oh, well, we're doing this, guys. We're doing this. How do they, uh, how do they work out the percentage <laughs> how do they work out the percentage what if you want like um what if you're only 70 percent not able to work <laughs> i'm 100 percent not able to work look what i do yeah look look what i do i just play driving sims all day i don't think that's working somehow it ends up with people giving me money so i don't know apparently it's working but i think it's all made up anyway Now find work you can do. Uh, your your job is to watch Game of Muscle adverts. I think it's a great job to have. Lots of people do it. It's not pleasure, <laughs> that's for sure. It is. It really is work watching this channel. That's why people do it at work to feel productive. Hello, Sim Racing Wales, Rob. Hello, everybody. Capzor. Where's the quote from? It's from a live stream. <laughs> Poor Max Verstappen. That's why it sucks if you're actually successful and famous because people just clip stuff. You, do, you Anything you say. Well, I mean, Paul and Max Verstappen, probably not correct terms, but, you know. Very motivational. I motivate people not to play driving simulators. I'm, I restore the balance. You have, you have people like Matt Malone motivating people to play driving sims i'm i'm the great demotivator i'm i'm restoring balance in the universe going all right i think uh frosty bird free money well you you should try and find something that you like stuff that you can enjoy or like use it as an opportunity to like do do your own thing as well you know what i mean oh. save save money <laughs> yeah uh morning yock in drs yeah, you should do do streaming and stuff, or like do um, make make videos or something, or like um, just build build something up. Use it as an opportunity. It's good. I mean, it's the same with everything. Try and try and use everything as an opportunity. 
do the opposite of what I do. I, I do the op- I I I, I uh, turn everything into an ant- into a non opportunity. <laughs> oh dear. Morning, guys. Look at all these. Look at all these people popping in straight away. What are they doing? I hope you guys are all in an office, um, ruining a company's productivity by watching this channel. not optimistic about this race guys oh, he's already got gloves on sleeping for NASA you could do that thing where they uh, you know where they put people in like a fake moon base and you have to go go insane I, I could do that you have to get certified you know no, if you're playing no Hesse, you're already certified. <laughs> Certifiably weeb. You, you're weebed. Breaking where the AI, AI but that's a lift that's a lift there. No break needed. I'm gonna become I'm gonna go to a furry convention. I wanna go I wanna go to a furry convention with um Oops. Okay. <laughs> I wanna go to a furry convention with um what's his face? Corey. <laughs> I think it'd be hilarious. Cory could be my fairy guide, yeah. <laughs> and he can go in his adult fursuit and we and then I can film the ensuing hilarity. <laughs> It'd be so funny. It'd be so awkward, like uh, I would find it so awkward, but I find that hilarious, so be good. Oh do but every time. like a BMW driver. What? <laughs> right, do I go to the right to avoid? I'm just going to go right. Drives like an eye racer, that guy. I know. Well, everyone hates me, but it's all right. <laughs> I'm used to that. It's fine. get there eventually guys I'm well bad at stuff like this Yeah, guys. So that, yesterday, guys, I got a, I got a new coffee grinder. Thanks for all the donations and memberships that buys me kitchen, kitchen utensils. Really appreciate it. Off, oh, go faster, you shit. And uh, so last night I ground like I don't know, like five shots of coffee. I didn't drink them all last night. I put them in the fridge, but get 
getting my coffee grinder working. It's awesome. It's only a cheapo one. It's just a basic coffee grinder that has a timer on it that grinds coffee to X amount for X amount of time. So I don't have to do it with my hand. Yeah, I did. I put... Well, technically, isn't cold brew just you get coffee and you soak coffee in, in the fridge overnight? It's well good. I could like, but I couldn't just grind all the coffee. I was doing it by hand before. Ah. Uh, okay, we have to blip the throttle on the downshift. I don't even need to downshift. What am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Get in there. You always need tea. In Nam? Get the cup of tea. I can't do Vietnamese. Get, get the cup of tea. <laughs> Vietnamese accent has got to be the hardest accent for like a Westerner to try and do, even when they do it badly. I've always wanted to go to Vietnam. I mean, I'm sure you were saying since Nam, since 1970s. I don't know even know what you're saying, but I've always wanted to go to Vietnam regardless. It's fascinating. I'm not sure about the climate, it's a bit stuffy. But Yeah, I, 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 I don't think that goes down too well. AC number 10. Okay. Right, we, can we adjust the gearing on this? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, hang on. We can move this up. Oh, shit. Try that. Yorks now uh, twice. Well, it depends. There's a whole bunch of nice teas, but out of the ones you can buy in the supermarket, Yorkshire Twinings are really good. Uh, Lipton's is fine. It's just uh, Tetley Tea's crap. PG Tips is crap. Uh, there's loads of like Indian teas that are really nice. This, this car's unhinged at speed. What What on earth? What we'll do with the rear? Okay, let's reduce the diff coat. No, hang on. Yeah, we'll, we'll tighten up the rear diff a bit. That'll, that'll help. And then... Ah, uh... oh, let's lower it. That, this will help. This track's all in fourth gear and above, really, so. Ah, there we go. It, what was happening before is the back would lose it, and then it has so much suspension travel that when I corrected it, it you then couldn't get it to go back the other way again.
Ah, oh, there we go. That's way more stable. <laughs> Power of setups, guys. I, I, I'm like a... Kunos has taught me uh, setups through the single player. If there's anything of value, not that the setups actually make sense, but at least I know roughly what does what. Been forced through pain and suffering. Hello, Lee. Yeah, look, the back's not even coming out too much on the gear shifts now. It's actually a good track for fiddling around with setup because it, like centrifugal circuits, are really good. All right, me duck. Hello, me duck. <laughs> yeah, well, I obviously already knew about brake bias. These cars don't have brake bias. Oh, it does. <laughs> a lot of cars, a lot of older cars don't, or a lot of road cars don't even lay change brake bias. Oh, bloody hell. Yes. Can we catch up with P1? 1.8 second gap. It's, it's proper rainy in the UK today. It's school trip weather. Does anybody else feel this? Whenever it's like super rainy in the UK, I feel like I've, I feel like I've got to go on a school trip. Because whenever, whenever I was at like primary school or like whatever you'd always whenever you'd have a school trip it'd always be that kind of like drizzle <laughs> cold and drizzle and you'd have a soggy school uniform ah oh, wrong gears right we need to do this again we need to I think we can change this gear to be a little bit lower 230 280 160 yeah it should be alright yeah, you'd always go on school trips to like Bosworth Battlefield. <laughs> and it'd be tense and it'd be wet and it'd be miserable. And everything would smell of like bananas. Hello. How do you say hello in Dutch? Hello, Netherlands. Where, where in the Netherlands are you? Hello, hello. You've just changed one letter. That's not another language. I thought it was something like. Um... <laughs> Surely that that sounds more Dutch. Oh, nice. Whereabouts in Maastricht? I walked around it a lot in, in January. Yeah, it's well nice, Maastricht. I, I walked all around... Um, I don't know what north and south is. You know where the main city centre is, where the big supermarket stuff is? All around there. And then I walked uh, all down the river. Pretty nice. I, I'll be going there. We'll be at Sim Formula Euro uh, next year as well. Pretty good. Maastricht's well nice. Proper nice city. Well, I missed the break point. <laughs> yeah, I really like Maastricht. On the border. All right, cool. Yeah, well, so I got the train there, so I'll have gone. I'll have gone past your house. I got the train from uh, London, and then changed it. Brussels Midi and then changed at Liège. Yeah, it's really nice. Really, everyone's really friendly there. I, I said this before, but I say it again. We, we were like, um, I was filming like rando B roll and videoing stuff in the town, like the old castle, uh, the old walls and stuff. And um, I was like walking across bridges, taking pictures and things. And like attractive women. <laughs> well, they would just be seen. I'd be filming. So normally, when I'm in London, if I was doing B-roll, if like an attractive woman is in the shot accidentally or gets in the way or whatever, and I'll be like, "Oh, sorry, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not filming you. Don't worry." They'll like give you. They'll like 
pull a face at you. You can tell they're pissed off with you. Whereas in Maastricht, people just come up to you. They're like smiling, come up to you. They're like all friendly, like really attractive women. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? What is wrong with you people? Why? Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. No, I was filming there. There's a new, there's modern bridge which has quite an interesting shape to it. And there's also the old, the old walls look really nice. I was just trying to get B roll. I don't think I even used much of it to be honest. It's also made they have these huge canal boats that go all the way down the river. They're massive. I wouldn't personally. I have nothing wrong against people working in that field, but I, I wouldn't use use it myself. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing. London is depends how rich the area you're in, whereas Maastricht, pretty much all of the centre of it is like immaculate. Is the natural history is that in the tunnels? Is in the, in what they call the caves? Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely go. I I was only there for like. Uh, to be honest, I was pretty tired because, um, and often when I travel for the first time to certain places or just in general, I, I I get really tired. I don't sleep well the day before, and then also if it's like um, so if it's like sim racing expo or like a, something where I'm talking to lots of people, it like messes up with my brain. <laughs> I think I'm pretty introverted generally speaking. I don't mind being extrovert. I, I enjoy it. I like been around people but my brain is not extroverted so I, I really like just being on my own so so whenever I'd go to like events I, I really enjoy it but it absolutely destroys me like completely <laughs> completely destroys me like it's too much it's too much um, too much stimulation I don't know I'm a, I prefer being around one person at a time, I think. Oh, it's next to City Wall, cool. Yeah, I definitely will do. Um, I didn't know, last time I went, I only went for three days. Stayed, stayed next to, basically next to the McDonald's in the town square. Like a weird sort of 19... Oh, like 1970s hotel that had been done up. It was, whatever, it was just the cheapest hotel in the centre. That I could get last minute. Oh, we're not going to catch up with that guy, are we? Christ. Uh, I don't know if there's a theatre. It was like, you know, so you've got like a car park in the town. Oh, DD girl. Here we go. Guys, get your candles out. Time for a beautiful song. DD girl with a DD wheel. What a babe, what a beauty, what a reviewer for the tube. It's a DD girl with a DD wheel. She's been decapitated by the completer Tetativo. It's a DD girl with a DD wheel. What a babe, a beauty, a servo motor legend. DD girl with a DD wheel. She's got servo motor legs and a servo motor wrist. Everybody needs a DD girl, even reviewer for the tube needs one. Don't put her in your bathtub, unless you've turned the electricity off or she will cook herself to death. DD girl with the DD wheel, put your candles in the air, don't set fire to your hair. It's a DD girl with the DD wheel, powerful, strong, perfect silver motor babe. DD girl, DD girl, everybody's dreaming of this lady. DD girl, DD girl, reviewer for the tubes, she's road sainting for you. There she goes again, disappearing off into the sunset. She hates her job. But she's contractually obliged to appear whenever people become members here. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. <laughs> she's 
it's great scrap value. Yeah. Oh no, reviewer for the tubes donated as well. What is wrong with you, man? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, releasing Wembley DD Gill concert tickets. <laughs> See, the Wembley fall. Hang on, why is my car spawned sideways? What's going on here? <laughs> We've broken the game. Oh, thanks for being a member. Really appreciate the support. Hacker. Boom shakalaka. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Every time I sing DD Gill, the view numbers drop for some reason. I don't know why. Thank you very much. Oh! Bloody AI! Just took me out. Really appreciate that. It's safe to unmute, yeah. Oh, look, we're still sideways. <laughs> it's all broken. I don't even know. The, how does this even happen? Oh, how are you not 100% this without actually... Uh, I, I, I'm well good with the shift. Oh, there we go. It's fixed. The AI wrecking me. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, at least YouTube's playing adverts for a change. Normally it doesn't. Oh, he's moving to the right again. He, he stopped doing that, and now he's doing that again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go right. Oh, he stays still now. Bloody hell. What is he doing? Right, will he go? Will he go left? This is the new AC Ace AC Evo. Okay, we got through. This just can't have wings on it. Don't forget it has adjustable wings. But we could probably lower it a bit more. I think fifth gear might be geared a bit too high. Okay, we need, I think we need to gear fourth and fifth gear a bit lower. Right, we need to gear those lower. This is where the excitement's at, guys. Third gear. I know third gear was all right. I know fifth gear needs... Fourth gear needs to be lower. Let's move fifth... Let's move those down more. Oh, hang on. Now we're pointing the other way. <laughs> What's going on? No, I... The AI is entirely the AI's fault. It's never my fault. Ah, uh, maybe fifth gear is too high. Oh, 
ghost. Right, I'm gonna reduce fifth gear down one. <laughs> that special, yeah, setup knowledge. It's really coming through, as you can tell by us restarting the race over and over again. That's how you know. That's how you know you're dealing with someone that knows what they're doing. That was a good launch. Okay, that didn't that didn't really work. <laughs> Tried to sandwich myself through, but it didn't work. Can't really go around the outside. Here we go, here we go. Yeah, I've got a good launch there. Outwitted all the dumb AI. <laughs> That's how you get P1, guys. 1960s style. Real race driving. Beautiful. Now we just need to not bin it for five laps, which is basically impossible. Thanks for clicking the like button on YouTube, guys. The conditioning is real. I don't know. I don't know what the like button does. I think every time you click it, a kitten is executed. I think that's how it works. Ah, uh, PC. Why, why, why is your PC not with you? What happened? Oh, you, you killed two kittens. I'd be happy. Go. Oh. Oh. Bit too much welly. What? Why aren't you building your own PC? Unbelievable. This, uh, you, you, you should build your own PC. You don't get PC builders. What? Like PCs are like Lego these days. What are you going to do when your PC catches on fire? Just send it back to the builder. Uh, hitting dislike kills a dog, so, you know, it's a choice between a kitten and a dog. Oh, come on. Dislike it is! <laughs> Wow, we know where you stand. The biggest mistake. It's a uh, it's a bigger mistake than uh, being born.
It is the biggest mistake that anyone can make in their entire life. Got a power surge. That should make your computer go faster because computers use electricity. More electricity, more speed. Obviously. Right, get ready for some blocking here. <laughs> Block muscle. Two laps to go here. Just have to stay in front and keep blocking. Ah, oh, no. No. Ah. <laughs> I went into the corner a bit too hot. Don't worry, we'll get it back getting it back. It's not over till the fat lady sings. <laughs> DL, I read chat messages for one minute and I'm driving into the wall. You, should, you need to put your computer in the washing machine. Yeah, it's just dirty, you need to clean it. That's what I do. Yeah, you just need to go in the dishwasher, give it a good soak. Yeah, tumble drying is good if you've got one. Just make sure to put all the components in at the same time so they're all dried off at the same time. You, you need them to bounce off each other to help clean the dirt off as well. It really helps. Big mistake is people just put one item at a time in. You really want to get them all, all rubbing on each other. Uh, also, pro tip, leave the heat sink on the, power supply, on the uh, CPU. The extra weight helps it bounce around more. But it's really good if you've got one of those Cooler Master Aero or Aero Cooler <laughs> heat sinks. <laughs> Can you imagine putting that in a washing machine? Uh. Finally, oh, finally. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's another one. Thank you, guys. We're now on. 
What are we on? Bloody hell. 69% still. 49 out of 71. Imola in the Porsche Cayenne Turbo. What a car. This is going to be fun. No, we're, we're blitzing through it though. We did good on that last one. All in base racing. I went to upgrade to a 5800 3D, then it turned into upgrading my Mobo. Then I threw an extra 32 gigabytes RAM in it to a new case to a PC. <laughs> well, I really want to get a um, 5090, but I think they're going to be like £3,500 when they come out, so I don't think I will get one. What I think is going to happen is NVIDIA will release a 5090 for like 3500 and then they'll re-release the, the the 5080 will be the same as the 4090, but it will cost 2000 And then they'll they'll be like, well, we've reduced the price. <laughs> yeah. You know they will. I've called it. You know what NVIDIA are like. Pesky NVIDIA. Or, you know. We've only made three of these graphics cards because we make far more money selling AI chips these days, so we just don't give a shit. Oh, you you uh, you helped us build our business with with the uh, video games and people buying graphics cards over years. Oh, we don't need you anymore. We, we you know, <laughs> well, you know, we're we're really successful company now. We don't need you guys uh, that have uh, that that helped build us by buying our products for so long. Don't need you anymore. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Go. Why this car sounds like a bloody tractor? Why do people buy these? Why use ABS when you can use the car in front? That's what I say. Bloody hell, it's understeery as well. Oh, just drive into me, mate. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I know why you buy these. It's to run over children in London city centre and not notice. That was it. It's because you hate the environment. <laughs> You're like, oh, oh. No clutch on this. You say you can drop the kids off at school whilst running over everyone else's children. You can run over the lollipop lady in this and not notice. Genius. To, uh, what have we got here? Tire pressures, that's it. Oh, we can, here we go, we can take some caster off. Get rid of some tow as well. Tow and caster, that's where you get your pace in AC with these cars. Move, bitches. <laughs> Coming through. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Game of Muscle on a school run. I always wanted to be a taxi driver. I'll get, your, I'll get your kids to school faster than any other child. They might have a concussion, but we'll get them there. No worries. Oi! You're just putting me off the road. Oh, this is going to be well hard because P1's disappearing.
<laughs> Sent him. Oh no, this is gonna be impossible. Is it? It was a textbook move that. Oh, thanks for subscribing. Back something or other. Hello. I mean the AI. Oh, the AI's not even taking the corners. Oh, this car's terrible. Oh no, this is this is a nightmare. I can tell already. What is it with these cars <laughs> in AC? Not even one of the best tracks in the world can save this car. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was the AI's fault. That was the AI's fault. <laughs> Bloody hell. Jump the first chicane. Probably might have to. I mean, it's not good when the AI are driving into each other worse than me. This is the new wreck fest. Oh dear god, this car is so bad, guys. Low. <laughs> the AI is killing it. Yes, come on. The AI can't handle it. It's, it's just, this is all football mums. Oh, don't drive into me. How is this car safe? It's got less grip than like a bar of soap on a wet washing up bowl. Teflon wheels. Maybe, maybe the secret is these cars are actually awesome drift wagons and that's why people are buying them to drift their kids to school. Steer. Thomas, are you are you at work today? Varking! Zandong! Zandong! No! No! Oh, he's just punted me! You shit! He's just punted me off the road! Oh my god! What is this? <laughs> we had that. Bloody hell, the AI's gone. Full Jack the Ripper. A pace car is out of control. Mr. Mark might be here. Hello. Oh. Got a plan. Oh. <laughs> Okay, let's let's try and do it properly. <laughs> I I thought this was a Seto course and not the new burnout game, but I know, I'm not complaining. Mental. 
This is the mission that Italians use to pass the driving license. Adaptive AI. How does a hundred percent work? It doesn't. I don't. I don't know what you mean. Why are you stopping there? Lol, get off the road. Right, come on. These ties are terrible. Avatar. That driver tar thing was a total scam. It didn't actually work at all, did it? Go. Well, I'm a lot faster through corners than the AI, I think. Gap 1.4, 1.3. Come on, okay, oh, on the track 1.2. This is really hard to go quick in because it's so like, wants to get stuck in the slide. You have to throw it in on the suspension. Yeah, you wouldn't want to get lost on a closed race circuit, would you? It's very easy. It's very easy to take the wrong turn on a road that has one turn in. Let's, the poor, poor should, the type of people that buy this car, probably not the most intellectual, let's be honest. <laughs> You've got to keep it basic for them, you know. You don't want to overwhelm them with too much. This is for the ultimate footballer wife. <laughs> it's got to be simple. That's why I'm good at driving it. It kept it simple. As I say, the only thing this car's good for is running over children and polluting. Listen to that engine purr like a, a broken power drill. Oh, these moves. Did, see, you didn't even notice. As we made that pass, I ran over a lollipop lady. You didn't even notice, did you? That is the beauty of this car. 
didn't even suspension barely move the car just floated right over the top incredible incredible engineering Weirdly, when I was in uh, Mallorca, loads of people were driving Porsche people carriers. But that means that they took those Porsche people carriers on a boat to get there. Why would you want a Porsche people carrier in Mallorca? There was loads of them. It was really weird. It's like when you go to Portugal, everyone's driving Peugeots for some reason. Like Peugeot vans, Peugeot cars, everything's a Peugeot. Pull that. Never owned it. Well, maybe you're not actually Portuguese. For this. <laughs> Obrigado. I don't know any other Portuguese. I just say random words that sound Portuguese. Right, maybe, maybe you actually were driving Peugeots, but they swapped the badge over to make you feel like you were driving a different car. <laughs> They just they just changed the badge. The dealership was actually Peugeot, but they just they just swapped all the. Uh, uh, where's Random Call Sign? Probably on the motorway in a broken down Alfa Romeo, <laughs> with a radiator leak. Where else would he be? That's not anybody that owns an Alfa Romeo is normally in their car waiting for the AA to arrive. Peugeot actually owns every single car manufacturer in Portugal. <laughs> it's just all rebadged. White label cars. Was it yellow label? I can't remember. What's the term when you when you rebadge some other product? Is it yellow label or white label? I can never remember. Turquoise label. Oh, uh, Miguel Rad Weasel and Random Call Sign. I try and teach me Portuguese, but I'm too dumb. <laughs> they, Miguel just keeps telling me swear words all the time. <laughs> like, I had to edit my last Sim Racing Expo video because as soon as I bump into him, he just started saying like loads of obscene Portuguese <laughs> words, and I'm like, ah, oh, I know what you're saying. I don't know what you said, but I can have a guess. <laughs> uh, Rad Weasel's awesome, Miguel. Pretty funny. Look at these superb lines that we're taking. You're basically a master of Imola at this point. But once we finish this, we can do the Game of Muscle uh, race school. You can teach people how to drive badly. Genius. We do. Uh, we can uh, do eye racing setups and sell sell subscription fees. 
We can do bottom split eye racing setups <laughs> for five pounds a month. Make thousands. Beautiful. Beautiful. The people set up. Ah, oh dear. What's this? Silverstone in the Porsche 911 GT198. This is a good car. Thank you. Well done. Like a like a perfectly cooked pizza. Well done. Man S, si tu veux, je parle une français, si ma petit non. What? Pois tu non, eh? May porti non. What? I can't read French. If you can speak French, you may for something. What's nan? <laughs> For your for your nan. What's nan? <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. No, a 1982 racer. Oh no, that is how you spell no. For no. What? <laughs> what are you saying? Qu'est-ce que tu to a fuller, vas, vous êtes vache full. <laughs> vous êtes vraiment une débile. <laughs> Is that all that? They're useful French words. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Uh, right, here we go. Rear ring, turn it down. Depends on the accent, what how south you are. Basically, the further south you are in French, the less you can say anything coherent and people are like, oh yeah. <laughs> uh I think uh, really southern French people are like are like what Birmingham like Brummies are like or like um uh what the Geordies are like for most people in Britain. People just go nod they nod and they're like, Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. But no one knows what they're saying. What if a Seto Corsa was French? What would it be called? Voiture très vite <laughs> Voiture grande vitesse Eh oui Baguette racer de fromage Le bon, bon voiture. <laughs> what would they call it? What would the French call it? It would be something like, Très bon voiture. Vite. Le corps de bon voiture. Le, le assetto. Uh. Une bonne... <laughs> Bangano <laughs> What's that? Oh, here we go. Oh, nice chilled out car. Peugeot <laughs> Peugeot Simulator 2024, that's what they call it. Oh, bollocks. Okay. Oh, look, fiberglass all over the car. It's nice. Unsettled by the bumps, just a little bit.
Ow! Oh, bloody hell. Thought I'd left enough space. This car's wider. <laughs> wider than I, than I thought, intuitively. Oh, we need to add reviewer to the tube to the sponsor list. Forgot about that. After this race, remind me to add reviewer to the tube, guys. Great apex. The AI is bloody crashing everywhere. Oh, we've got a setup here. Let's just, oh, wait, they've gone for full rear wing. Okay. Let's try this out. Oh, this setup's terrible. What is wrong with people that set up, do setups? <laughs> the terrible setup. What have they done? Let's see. Oh, that's what they've done. It's the diffs set up badly. Oh no, <laughs> slender! But I knew that it was it was rigged against me. It's got anti-British detection. Typical Kunos. Like the AI can't even do the first corner. <laughs> oh, he's... <laughs> yeah. Bloody hell, he's lifted me off the ground. Triple suplex me. Bloody hell, guys. Oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> this is going to be a tricky one. This car's a bit loose as well. Scooped. He, he treated me like an ice cream. Oh, fuck. <laughs> they all stop when they have to change gear. There's no space for me to go. Oh, they're fast that time. Oh my, oh my god. Right. Taking the game of muscle line. This is like the start of an eye racing race. Oh bloody hell, P1's gone. One's bloody gone.
Oh, bloody hell! <laughs> the AI are murdering me! Anybody got a rocket launcher? A little bit stiff on the suspension. <laughs> Thanks for clicking the like button on YouTube, guys. If we get 100 likes, that'd be awesome. Appreciate it. Don't think it does anything, but why not? Bigger number, bigger EP. That's how it works. Jesus. Oh, for Christ of the A, you've got. <laughs> you've got to, like, absolutely pwn it on the AI, but then they just drive into you, like, they can't see you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is going to be well hard. Oh, can they not move randomly? <laughs> Why? Whoa, whoa, whoa. With a wiggling around. <laughs> okay, that was on me. I think we could start in third gear. We cannot start in third gear. Uh, on second thought, starting in third gear is positively a terrible idea. Third gear, bad idea.
Oh, this will do. Game of muscle line. They all spawn. Not a track cut, I was avoiding the crash. <laughs> it's what it takes. Jesus, can we catch up with them, man? Oh, we might be. We're catching gradually. <laughs> 1.4 seconds. I love how the AI can break going into the corner with a wheel on the dirt. <laughs> the Kuno special break. Oh. The car's got a bit of a kick to it. I don't think we're going to be able to catch P1 here. It's fine. <laughs> totally normal catching of the car there. <laughs> what? Oh, the rears are gone. Oh, the rears are worn out. Within three laps. Oh, shit. I mean, I was driving him round aggressively, but... Oh, how are we supposed to do this? Oh, we had the slick 90s on. Oh, no. They're all slick 90s. Shit. Let me try the mediums. Oh, we're screwed. 
Thank you for subscribing and following. Welcome. This is how you do the first corner, we've decided. Because the AI are wrecking. Oh, they're still driving into us. Bloody hell. Oh. <sighs> this is going to be hard. There's no way, like, they're just going to understeer into this corner. I oh, know, we're all right. All right. Need all the force feedback. I get a workout probably a little bit but oh, for... why didn't he break <laughs> oh, la, 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 la. let's try it let's try, try the soft tyres but we've got to be careful on them oh bloody hell I've, I've got a break for the corner. <laughs> they don't. Apparently, they don't have to break for the corner. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I just punted him, lol. For, it's for the better. Ah. Uh, Ah, uh, of course, of course. <laughs> this is the AI will just drive into your car.
Ah, oh, there's not enough room. <laughs> Car's too wide. I mean, how do they even pick you there? Does not make any sense? Ah, oh, you, you have to leave an extra th half meter than what you sort of are expecting. Up, he's totally blocked. <laughs> right. Ever feel like you're going absolutely mental? Oh, why are you moving left there? Come on. Ah, oh, I needed to break sooner. <laughs> the game is trying to stop us. Yeah, at least it's not KTM at Vellalunga. There's always that. Uh, what is he doing? Right. Oh my god, it's bumpy. There goes the brake board. Take that, bitch. Oh, they just drive into you 100 like what you can't <laughs> the AI are just they've got to ignore that you're there entirely This is like playing a SNES game. <laughs> the AI just punted the other guy. Right, here we go. Let's go. Let's do it. Come on. You know it's bad when the AI are merging each other. I'm telling you, this is the new burnout title. Oh, it's getting painful to watch, is it? 
Oh, it's not painful to play at all. It's, it's, this is fine. <laughs> oh, we have to save the tyres here. As much as we can. Oh, he's going to pump me. Don't you dare. There we go. Come on. We have to be really careful with the tyres. Try not to slide because of the tyres. Because they, they just go off entirely when they go off. Whew. Right, here we go. Come on. First time, guys. First time. against the machines yeah I was thinking of doing that war against AI eighty nine ninety five see the rears are just going off eighty seven I don't know why they just, it's not like they've got a baked in 85, they're just disappearing. Eighty three. What is going on? The, the, no, the rears are just disappearing. 80, 79, what on earth? It doesn't make any sense. Why is, it, why is the rear left just going? Sixty-nine. Sixty-eight. 
67. It's just disappearing in a straight line. That does not make any sense. <laughs> Thank you, F2020. Sixty-six. Oh Christ! What's the gap? Three point one seconds. Two laps to go. Three point four seconds. Oh my goodness. Who needs rear wheels? Overrated. Could be on rip wheel rims. Oh dear. One more lap. I mean, 60's over half, so we should be fine. Okay, it's on 59 now. There we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, the front left's on 66 as well. Still more predictable than our racing cars. <laughs> still, it still drives better at and over the limit than I racing. So you know, oh dear. Here we go. Finally. Finally, this one's done. Bloody hell. Ridiculous AI on this one. Yes. Beautiful. First time. First time. Another, another great demonstration of how we do everything first time. It's over. It's over. There we go. Ah, oh, finally. Bloody hell, that was a bit of a that was a bit of an effort that one. Nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh 
Oh, we've only done gold on this one, so we have to do. We have to alien this. Monza five laps. Let's go. Oh yeah, review to the tube on the list. Thank you. See, at least someone's paying attention. Thanks for sponsoring us here. Thanks again for all the donations and memberships. Really appreciate it. It does mean that we keep doing what I do, which isn't, which is pretty bad for society. So. You've, you're only to blame. Uh, well, Sixty-one percent is the Steam achievements, but we've actually done more. I need to update that as well. So you have the game completion and you have Steam achievements. Wow, there's not many diff settings on this. <sighs> Car sounds like a dishwasher. No, there's only three cars in this race. I oh, know. Yeah, everyone behind crashed. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. It's random. Bloody hell, the AI is quick. We have to get in front at the start. Oh, the other cars are different class, so we have to drive through traffic. It's actually, it'll be all right. Yeah, it's using curves. So deploys the curves. You can see that on the uh, race essentials, you can see if he's deploying the uh, green and the purple bar. Well, it should be all right.
Oh yeah, we could we could deploy it to get a mega boost. Yeah, we do it's easy. Start this, we got this. <sighs> Easy. <laughs> really generous of Kunos to offer me a, um, a Formula 1 drive after completing the game. I, I was really surprised. What's that car doing? Oh, it's a GT car. If you're watching on YouTube and you click the like button, it means you're sexy. And we'll get to a we'll get to a hundred likes. Wow, number goes up. Skill goes down. Hello, days of blunder. Ninety nine likes, one hundred. Wow, the world will never be the same. Am I enjoying myself? Um, well, I don't know, I'm kind of neutral to be honest. <laughs> it's fun progressing through the single player. The challenge is fun. Uh, I like driving the cars. I mean, for me, I, I, I really enjoy drinking tea, so, you know. I, I enjoy really weird stuff. G generally, just feeling neutral is better than enjoying myself, I find. I'm not not enjoying myself. Is that enjoying yourself? <laughs> I don't know.
I'm drinking lots of coffee at the moment because I've, I've got a uh, coffee bean grinder. <laughs> and last night, last night I ground a load of coffee, duck, like trying to put it on the right setting. So now I've just got like coffee everywhere. You should get a medal. I get like a. I don't know what medal you get. The, the, the medal is. Um, it's like a, a smiley face. The medal is uh, despair. The medal is known that we've done absolutely nothing of value to humanity, which is quite funny, so that's good. It's a good medal. of any other video game that takes 10 hours a day for 15 days <laughs> there's nothing else that takes that lot like obviously if you're like an absolute alien you could do it faster but like it's not like I'm a complete noob at sim racing like I'm a, I'm a reasonably good sim racer not you know not very good but like reasonably good so Imagine if you're like reasonably good at a FPS game or like Dark Souls or something, a platform is, you know, if you're already reasonably good at that, it wouldn't take you 15 days, 10 hours a day to complete, would it? I mean, World of Warcraft, getting to level 70, I guess that takes quite a long time. That, that takes about a month of 10 hours a day when it first came out in the 2000s. But that's just grinding. It's not that it was difficult. It's just time-consuming. That's on uh, the, uh, the the Gary the Gary uh, parable. <laughs> what was the game? It's the Stanley thing. What? But what did the guy? What did they call it in chat? The, what's it called? Stanley parable. The Gary the Gary parable. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, so stupid. Yeah, it's called the Stanley Parable, but someone couldn't remember the name, and they were like, "Oh, the the Gary, the Gary Parable, <laughs> Gary, the Gary Parable." That's the name that they came up with instead of Stanley in their brain. Stanley and Gary are interchangeable. Oh, it's so stupid. It was really funny. Yeah, no, there's nothing. There we go. We did the we did the alien. I can't think of another game that takes a hundred hours, but it's not just grinding. Like this, you have to learn how to drive quick in loads of different cars. And it's not necessarily like it's not actual alien pace, the alien challenges, but it is like top split i racing pace is pretty similar to some of the stuff in this, which is you know I'd say it's still you know you're still not on the like. Well, what's funny is, right, in terms of real-world skill level, in terms of, like, um, race line around a track, brake modulation, acceleration, counter-steer and everything, to be able to d d do some of the stuff in this, you would be at a level that is pretty good. If you, it, I'm not saying that I could do that in real life, but, like, let's say you could have this similar control that you have to complete AC in a real car which which is di it's a different thing altogether obviously because you you've got actual g forces and there's more variability but the point would be is if you in terms of the actual inputs and track knowledge and stuff it's actually a reasonably high level of driving and as i say like um anybody that's driving uh if you're genuinely like a 5 6k i racer not not cheesing it but you're genuinely just that's where you're at 
you would do well in real life. Like, you know, when you look at someone like Swolio, who's, who's like an alien at Porsche Cup, he will absolutely shit on the vast majority of real world races because he's like fit and healthy. He's good at driving in real life as well. But like, if you're good at Sims at a reasonable level and you can put up with G forces and the physicality of real life, you will absolutely destroy most people. The vast majority of people. Because most people do most people are just rich. Just, that's it. Um, but, uh... Yeah. Uh, no, they don't, Palookan. It's actually the opposite. No, it's totally, it's totally the opposite. I so I've I've been around quite a few sim races early in the days when they uh, started to do first do. Um, no, that's bollocks. It's not. That's not true at all, Palookan. Early on, when they started doing driver scholarships from sim racing, from stuff like uh, Live for Speed or just driver scholarships and stuff. No, I know for sure. The problem that a lot of early scholarships had is that sim racers would overdrive the vehicles. They weren't scared enough. So pe people that were uh, like 14, 15 and had learned all their sim racing, all their driving through sim racing, they would attack curbs and do stuff that just real drivers wouldn't do because you'd be like, why are you risking breaking the car and hurting yourself? So it's actually the opposite. Like older sim racers, sure, but... It's the same like with go-kart kids. They drive like mental people. And they drive like mental people in The Sims and in real life. <laughs> so it's like there's there's just a different thing. But sim racers, well, sim racers that haven't done real-world driving generally and have basically done all the stuff through sim racing are mental. Uh, Palooka, yeah, but I don't know. That's one example. I'm, I know like five or six different examples where re where sim racers will go mental, especially younger people. Yeah. Or also, um, if they've never done any go kart, so like if they've never experienced G forces, and you're putting them in a race car for the first ever time, sure. But if they've just done uh, if they've just done like a f if they've had like three or four hours of go karting, they'll be totally fine. Like um, a rental go kart around Buckmore Park, a shitty rental go kart is a similar intensity to a Radical SR3. So you know, in terms of physical intensity and like because of the scale of the track and everything, it's worse. It's genuinely a worse experience driving a shitty rental go uh, go kart around Buckmore Park than it is going around a Radical uh, at Donington, an SR3. Because a track is wider, things are smoother. When, you, when you've got a safety harness, like a uh, five-point harness, you're locked into the car, you're not flailing around like an idiot. Go-kart is terrible. Um, what a uh, ride I ride 600 cc on track but riding a thousand cc on tracks don't, I don't know what what's a thousand cc yeah you 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 just need to put sim racers like someone that's never experienced g forces will shit the bed put them in a go-kart for three to five hours and they will, they will get to they, then put them on a full size track like a go kart, uh, especially if it was like a Rotax car. They would absolutely that's on another level to like the vast majority of general race cars. Yeah, motorbikes aren't cars, are they? Like I, I would shit the bed on a motorbike. <laughs> like, like I, I, I don't even like motorbikes are terrifying. Motorbikes are just on another level of insanity. You have to grow up riding a motorbike. Yeah, m motorbikes are just... That's like comparing base jumping to badminton. Like, riding a motorbike is already you're severely brain damaged to get on any motorbike. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> no, I'm sorry. Like, you have to be mental to get on a motorbike. You have to grow up with it. It's like it's like horse riding. Horse riding's insane. You have to be insane to do horse riding. It's not a normal thing. Whereas a car, a full size car on a track is bloody relaxing compared to like motorbikes, horse riding. I don't know. There's a load of stuff that's just insane. It's just on another level. Cars are like holiday time. And then to drive motorbikes on public roads as well, which people do, it's just stupid. Hang on, it's a bigger jump between racing in a sim and IRL than going from six that no, so the right. You're just ignoring stuff, Palookan. If you are familiar, so the biggest thing that throws people off that have never been in a race car or in a fast car or in a go kart, the initial violence of the bumps and the initial violence of G forces. It really doesn't take much time for people to acclimatise to that. Once they've already feel like, oh, they're in control and they're somewhat used to it and assuming they're not fat and, uh, and they've got good arm strength and everything. Once someone is familiar, as I say, if they've done go-karting um, for like five hours, I, th I would say is enough. Like Assuming they've got basic skills and assuming they're not just instantly intimidated by it, which some people will be, um, five hours in go-karts and they should be able to drive theoretically like they'd, they'd be comfortable driving like a, a, a radical or something certainly like a gt3 car certainly gt4 you know as on a full-size track because it's it's um yeah and probably put like f4 car i'd imagine as well you know they just need track with runoff Yeah, but I'm not saying it's not different to sim racing. Like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. You're just, you're just, you're, you're. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. Going from a, a, this is the other thing, right? Going from um, driving any like road car on a track is way less intimidating. Well, not any road car, but like um, GT4 is way less worse than rental go-karts around a nippy go-kart track in terms of like intensity like a gt4 car around silverstone is way less intense than a rental cart around buckmore park and most people would think of a gt4 car as being a pretty fast car you know i'm saying that irl racing is more violent and most sim racers would not be daring to go full tilt. But you're just like inventing a uh, scenario. We're not saying most sim racers, are we? <laughs> yeah, the point is, of the selection of sim racers that are pretty good at sim racing, i.e. 6K easily I rating, who could who are happy to drive, um, like, if they especially if they could drive Rotax X, X30 or whatever they're called, go-karts, and they've got at least five hours of go-karting experience, they would be happy. They would not be intimidated. You, you would already be intimidated by the go-kart. But So if you've done that five hours of go-karting and you're not intimidated by that, you would be happy driving Radical SR3, GT4, GT3, probably F4 car. You might be a bit tired, but it'd be, it'd be like... You'd be happy with it. There's shitloads of examples of sim racers that are not even experienced at go-karting that have gone into race cars and driven them reasonably quickly. <laughs> Hang on. I would give them my keys to a crappy 240 for rallying and the race simmers would not even be able to be near the rest of the... I don't know what you're talking about. There. So, f first of all, rallying is a whole other thing than track driving. So, that's like motorbike racing. So, <laughs> rallying is a whole other thing. And you'd so, for someone to get used to rallying, you'd probably want them to do shitloads of Richard Burns rally 
And then you'd probably want them to do uh, like cart, what are those cart cross cars that are awesome. And if they did that for a bit, got used to cart cross, then I'm sure you could put them in a lower low powered rally car, and they'd be like, oh, okay. But rallying's a whole other thing again. I'm, we're specifically talking about track driving. I don't, you're just there's so many examples of sim racers that have only a little bit of go-karting like what you, so okay uh james baldwin uh igor fraga jan mardinbra <laughs> well, uh, i mean jimmy broadbent's not that experienced and he's driving uh well, they're not the fastest of cars but they're pretty decent race car um Super GT mostly did go karting and then Gran Turismo. Well, there's just like shit loads of examples. <laughs> Swolio got gone from sim racing to radical SR3 straight away and is absolutely poning it. Um, it was a, he was a go karter. Igor was a, did a lot of go karting. Super GT did go karting. I mean, this is exactly what I'm saying though. You just need once you've done like f five hours or so of go-karting you would be acclimatized to the general g-forces of and the violence of the thing uh, that's the thing that people struggle with yeah the guy that did, did uh, drifting from ac instantly was dr drifting straight away at a decent level and then from from the stuff i know are uh, with with younger sim racers that were totally clueless and the event organizers specifically had an issue that they were doing stuff too risky because the drivers didn't realize how uh, well how costly it is if you break stuff but also how much you can hurt yourself and actually one of the big problems you see in uh, go-karting and in in motorsport is that a lot of people feel invincible until they have a big one a, the big one and then that really changes that really reframes it and that's for some drivers it's only when they have a big accident that's genuinely a really violent crash that they then go oh shit this is actually quite dangerous a lot of people go through driving quite a long time um and don't have a big accident and it really throws them off when they do have a big accident what do you mean palooka yeah if you've done go-karting i don't know what you're i don't, really don't know what you're arguing I really don't know what you're arguing. You're just saying that... Yeah, what What are you even saying? <laughs> I don't even know what you're saying. do not make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't even make any sense. Also, if it's so bad, right? If, it, if, it's, if it's so intimidating and bad... Why would um, Lee uh, from Seven Motorsports, why would he go, oh, Game of Muscle, I've done some online sim racing with you in ACM Race Room. Um, we've, we, we run a business where we prep cars for race drivers. They're not, they're, they're just, they're not crazy race cars, obviously. They're, they're just front-wheel drive, tread sneakers, race prepped. But even so, why would he go... Ah, uh, Game of Muscle, I know you don't drive. I know you don't have a license. I know you have, like, two hours in a real car. If the, Well, at that point in time, I had, like, 30 minutes in a real car. So why would he go, oh, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen you. I've done sim racing with you, mate. Oh, come up and drive my car that if you bin it completely, well, our business is in a bit of trouble. <laughs> like, it wouldn't make any sense, would it? I'd been go-karting twice before doing that. So... I'm not saying that I drove it super quick, but the point is, is that you can get into it and just start driving and get get faster. Like, that, those are slow cars, but they're still, like, what a lot of people consider reasonably quick cars. I, I don't think they're particularly, from my perspective, they're quite slow cars, but there's nothing. there was nothing uncomfortable about them. And actually, from my experience, which is very limited, the more racy a car, like the tighter the suspension... And the more responsive it is and the more nimble it is, actually, it feels way more comfortable and less intimidating than road cars on a track that have loads of roll and are really imprecise. Uh, take, sim, take longer for sim races to jump from sim to rally. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's the thing, exactly. Because motorbikes... 
I would say it would take longer for sim like a sim racer that's generally not done much stuff, maybe a little bit of go-karting, okay, they yeah. would genuinely struggle more with stuff like, uh, even like downhill mountain biking or, um, you know, uh, downhill mountain, anything where when you make a mistake, like if you fall off a motorbike, it's insane. If you drive a rally car off the track, you are screwed. On a, on a full-size racetrack, even with quite a fast car, you can really do quite big mistakes and it doesn't really matter that much like you know you have like a lot of margin unless you were absolutely poning it on the absolute limit so i, d I don't know what you're saying also you have like bloody kids you have like 12 year olds what's the youngest person in junior janetta <laughs> right <laughs> yeah you, 14 year olds Driving is unnatural. We'd all be terrified to drive if we hadn't. But that's, that's what I'm saying. That's the thing with sim races as well. Well, I don't even know what you're arguing. <laughs> you, just, you can't just ignore everything that's being said to then just say no. It doesn't make any sense. Um. Also, like, compare compare motorsport in stuff up to, like, a, a Radical or, like, an F4 car, right? Compare that to, yeah, horse riding or compare it to, like, uh, Olympic, like, Super G track skiing or uh, ski jumping or <laughs> like downhill mountain biking on in terms of like absolute intimidation uh you you driving on a racetrack is like the g-forces initially are going to be like oh this is quite novel but it's not anywhere near like skiing down a super G like i've had the chance to go down a bit of a super g track uh ski slope when i was like 14 and I, I i wasn't like going down it i was like <laughs> like i mean come on it's just not even and, and and yet you have teenagers going down super g ski slopes so yeah and i'm i'm saying palooka we should just completely if you ignore what the other person is saying you could just repeat what you're saying and it like i don't even know it's just mental i specifically said if someone's good at sim racing i.e 6k easily in i racing like does all the, the really hard hot lap challenge stuff in in ac so they've got the fundamental skills there and they've done about five hours of go-karting then i don't think they would have a problem driving stuff up to say a radical sr3 on most circuits I think they might shit the bed on Alton Park in, a, in an SR3. I certainly would. Um, but even even more so, it would be the case that if they were sim racers that were, like, teenagers, the all the evidence suggests that they just don't care about their safety. And, and as you agree, until they have an accident. A lot of people don't have an accident until, like, later on. So... You just, I, I, you're like, oh, I disagree with you, but you don't actually disagree. You just, I don't even know what you, <laughs> to, to make any sense. Right. I mean, also motorsport up up to like um, an SR three and stuff, uh, maybe even up to F four. But let's say up to up to um, a radical is so easy compared to, as I say, like uh, motorbike riding or uh, 
going down a big ski slope like super g ski slope or downhill mountain biking or like um crazy um uh like uh aggressive inline skating or something like it's just not even in the same it's just a it's closer to badminton <laughs> Right. Got everything here. Uh yeah, yeah, that's it, counter debate. Marco's said that contractually. Oh bobsledding, yeah. Uh skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to, oh, no clutch on this car. I, 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 in terms of like violence of the experience and and that being the intimidating component of driving, um, go karting is super super violent and physical. So if someone can do. This is why go karting is used as a training tool. Because it's all scaled down, so you have to be uh, sort of <laughs> what on earth? You have to be more precise in some ways. But um, go karting is violent, uh, especially what? What are they? X thirties? What, what's their go kart classes? I can't remember, never remember them. Uh. <sighs> what is it? is it are the x thirties is a sort of standard yeah they're just raw Yeah, uh, um, an X thirty go kart. If you can, if you could take that, if you were happy and comfortable in a go kart race with an X thirty, um, and you had like five hours of driving those, I don't see, I don't see how you would be at it. Like assuming you've got the money to, uh, to you know, with a you can afford to do full size car racing. You're not going to be intimidated by the G-forces and the vibrations, are you? I mean, I don't know how many examples you need of, like, uh, people that basically just come from sim racing and a bit of go-karting that completely dominate. I, I, w I honestly wouldn't be surprised if in the next sort of 15 years you will just... Um, it will just be the norm. Yeah, relative to how much time that they have at real world driving, yeah, no, I, they they absolutely will. It's exactly the same with poker. Like people that played shit loads of poker games online, when they then go into real life, they absolutely dominate statistically. 
and replaced most of the real like people that only had real life experience of poker. It's just a time thing. Like it's just to do with how much time you have to practice stuff. Like you, so you're just are you just going all sim races? Yeah, a lot of sim races are shit. I'm talking about good people that are actually talented. Yeah, it's, it's harder to drive a simulated car from an input perspective. It's harder. And from a, comp uh, from a competition perspective, there's more competition. So it's much harder for someone to be to stand out as a top 500 sim racer than it would be for them to stand out as a top 500 real-world driver because the competition is just smaller. It's just, it's just mathematical. Like, you... In the same, like same as online poker, it's harder to win in an online poker tournament that has uh, ten thousand entrants compared to winning in a real poker tournament that has two hundred. Yeah, they are different. Yeah, no, they are different. I, d I don't get what what are you arguing. I don't get what you're arguing. Ah. It's really weird how, like, there's a bunch of you that do this. The way you argue is you ignore the actual points being made and then make a second. It's, it's always a straw, man. <laughs> it's really weird. So nobody is has ever said that real world driving isn't very different to simulated driving nobody has ever made that claim so when you have something that nobody is making that claim and ever has made that claim why would you jump to that as your counter argument or a point it don't make any sense it's a really pointless way of arguing what do you mean the overlap is purely coincidence the overlap of what <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. Does make any sense? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Do you, do you not think that um, people that are alien sim racers... Whoa! Hello. See, this is how you drive in real life. Do you not think that people that are alien sim racers that have managed to be... Uh, as, like, consistently precise on a steering wheel, brake and pedal... And um, also in terms of being calm and also competing against people that are also very good on the steering wheel and brake and pedal from an input perspective, do you not think that there would be some correlation between those people and then an ability for them to also be precise on a steering wheel and pedals and knowing racing lines and being calm in a real car? Do you think there'd be no correlation at all? It's just coincidental. <laughs> it's, it's purely coincidental. So is it is it totally coincidental that you have quite a few uh, alien sim racers that, with very limited opportunities and chances, actually do really quite well whenever they get an opportunity in real life? It's just purely coincidence. It's absolutely... <laughs> It's absolutely coincidence. So I, I, I guess I guess it's also coincidence that people that have done a lot of poker uh, online happen to then coincidentally also be a lot better in real life. Purely coincidence, totally different. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You can know of cases of success and failure... But how does that equal... That doesn't... That's not an argument for it just being chance. <laughs> well, if, if it was completely unrelated, why would you bother having simulators in race teams? 
<laughs> why would you even bother? Why? Why would it also go the other way as well? If it was totally like just coincidence, why would it go the other way where you get really good real world drivers that are really decent at multiple driving simulators? If they were totally unrelated, it would go both ways. Oh, they help to learn concepts. Yeah, so so uh, what? They <laughs> so they're so they're actually connected then, because any of the concepts there would have to be some crossover for the concepts to be applicable. I.e., uh, racing line consistency over a long period of time, raw raw precision. <laughs> No, they, they, you're the one that's been um, LARPing. I'm not making... So again, you straw manned what I'm saying. It's so moronic. This is the shittiest way to argue. I'm not saying that, by default, a sim racer is going to be automatically good in real-world cars. And I'm not saying that sims aren't drastically different. It's, you're, you're such a disingenuous argue. I'm not going to bother talking to you. It's, it's, it's really... I'm just going to mute you. <laughs> but you can't have an interesting conversation with people that talk in a totally disingenuous way. Uh, right. What? Well, Right, so you guys... Right, it's so stupid. I just... What is wrong with you guys, right? There are a selection of people that will only be good at sim racing and only want to do sim racing and that are will be terrible in real life because uh, they're intimidated by it. They don't... It's, it's a different skill, so they're not good at it. Um, there's loads of reasons why people that are good at one thing aren't good at another thing, even if that thing's relatively similar. Nobody's arguing against that. But you can't ignore that... You you would be stupid, put it this way, if you had a child and you're right, you're like, I want to waste all my income supporting them getting into motorsport because I hate myself, you would be an idiot to not have them do sim racing on top of go-karting. Like, it would be dumb not to. And... You just... Why, why wouldn't you? Like, because it's another form of using similar skills. <laughs> it's just... Like... And the fact is, if someone is really good at sim racing... They'd probably be quite good at real life racing if they're also the type of person that can cope with g forces yeah, sh sh or, or like the stuff involved with real world driving. Obviously, people that can't do real world driving at all or intimidated by it won't be good at it. Surprise, surprise. That is not how is that an <laughs> argument? <laughs> how, how does that then become an argument for uh, Sims are totally disconnected to real life? Um, and uh, yeah, no, someone that's good at sim racing is completely unrelated. Yeah, because yeah, they're old, so the simulators they've used were predominantly shit, and they also didn't grow up with it. They've actually started to use them more, so like uh, 
real drivers I know that are very talented real drivers in the past I've talked to them they're like oh sims are shit they hate them because they were forced to use them as part of their training and stuff and they hated it and then uh, le later on they've got home simulators that they've tweaked themselves or got set up and they don't have like obnoxious horrible motion that makes them sick and they end up quite enjoying it so that's there's there's multifaceted aspects to that you think motion simulator is better than real life and safer <laughs> well the, the problem is they don't they can't do g-force there was a for a long period in time the even the simulators that formula one teams had uh were absolutely shit like would just make people motion sick they, they just did everything terribly but you had like engineers going this is correct <laughs> So, you know what it's like in business. It's no different from any other stuff in business. You'll, you'll have a company using, like, some terrible software that the company settled on because it might have been the best option when they decided to settle on it. But then, but then you're stuck in that framework. That's exactly what happens in any corporate environment, in large businesses with anything. And so, you know... I, I just don't know how you could, with a straight face, argue that there would be no correlation between someone that's really good at sim racing and them being quite... the likelihood of them also being good at real-world driving. Like, what? Full send. But yeah, sure, sure, there's also a load of sim races that are completely deluded to what degree sim racing would would uh, go across to real life driving as well. I'm not even arguing against that. The most important part of real world driving is bank balance. <laughs> by far, by far, and by f it's not being scared, it's not even driving skill, it is bank balance. That is the single most important part of any form of motorsport. Bank balance. <laughs> That's the most important skill you can have in motorsport is a dad with three jobs. <laughs> So, until that changes, there's room for people that have been able to practice more or uh, do whatever to have an edge over someone that's just there because they've bought themselves into it. Uh, yeah, no, no one has... Uh, there's no one that's flourished from sim racing to uh, real motorsport because they don't have money so it doesn't matter how good you are you have to either have been selected by a driver program or you have to just be rich or like a like a sort of c-list celebrity or something you just need you need shit loads of money or connections It's like it's just like normal other business stuff as well. Like the vast majority of people that are very successful in business, there's a lot of people that work really hard and have, done, have been successful. But a lot of the time, you look at like all the mega success stories in business. It's because they already started with a lot of money. 
like you're like oh B- Bill Gates wow he started a business in a garage oh it's like yeah his mum was on the board of IBM I wonder if that was helpful <laughs> but, like <laughs> oh oh Elon Musk wow he really pulled himself up by his bootstraps oh I got his family owned diamond mines oh okay <laughs> it's like you know there are examples of people make oh Richard Branson wow what an entrepreneurial uh, motivator oh hang on a minute his dad bought him uh, a music shop uh on the main high street one of the busiest high streets in London I wonder if that helped <laughs> not saying that they did do loads of work and that it's still not massively impressive but it, you know it's the same in motorsport it's like uh, even Hamilton who would have faced a load of racist bullshit and w- would have been way less well off than most formula drivers Oh, his dad had three jobs. I think he owned, like, IT stores or something and invested an inordinate amount of time into him and into his go-karting, way more than any normal parent would invest into a single child. Like, (laughs) you know, they're not to undo uh, what Hamilton's achieved, like, obviously, absolute legend, but you've got to be realistic about the actual underlying stuff there. So if a poor poor man wants to race, they're a victim to the software, guys. That's it. Well, right, this is something that people often don't really talk about. One thing that you see, you know when people have come from sim racing or won competitions and get into, um, like, events, right? There is, like, it's not jealousy, but it's like people feel like they haven't earned it or invested the same amount of money to get into that position in, in, the, in the motorsport. So... I wouldn't say it's jealousy, but you have, like, resentment on a grid, somewhat rightfully placed, because some people have... They've they've invested their entire childhood, family, whatever, money and everything into getting into motorsport, and then when they see that some guy has uh, got onto the grid through some video game competition, obviously there's a bit of resentment there. You know? So... Hang on, it could go it could go both ways. Someone who plays FIFA great might be shit at football. Um but, but FIFA's not analogous to real football at all. <laughs> so like <laughs> the point is driving sims are very different from real world driving for a multitude of reasons. The biggest one being uh, real world driving is expensive. The you still use the, the fundamental pedal input and the steering input, this is one of the things with driving sims which is so good just because of the nature of cars and things, same with flight sims in many ways, you use the same inputs. So it means that, and you've got laser scan tracks as well and other stuff, so it can be quite similar in many ways. So the crossover is, like there's a lot of crossover there. This is why like o- online poker has even more crossover than driving simulators because it's very 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 similar but I- even in real life poker the environment the pace that you know there, there's a lot of stuff that's very different in real world poker compared to playing online poker but it's even closer than driving simulators the, the more you have crossover between it doesn't have to even be a simulator any activity or thing the more crossover there is the more you're going to see skills that are interrelated and then will be beneficial for the different things. It's not hard to understand. Yeah, like brought like Jimmy is he's actually quite a good driver from my stand. Stephen is a really good driver, like really good at go karting. But like Jimmy is just like a pleb that's done sim racing, and got it done a bit of go-karting and then gone into like doing motorsport thanks to his youtube success you i don't know how this like why this is confusing to people imagine trying to enter any local like uh, not even national imagine going to your local tennis club as someone that's done a bit of tennis generally and trying to beat people at your local tennis club good luck 
Im- imagine doing county running. <laughs> imagine trying to turn it up at county championship running as someone that just does like like as a running YouTube channel or whatever and then winning the county running or like you know good luck <laughs> you're going to get blitzed absolutely shat on but motorsport you know because of the cost aspect of it the competition is just not there it's still impressive to win I'm not knocking it like f- guarantee you uh, Jimmy do way better than I would do at anything uh, driving wise so I'm not I'm to be clear I'm not knocking him like he's he's um, he'd just be on another level to me same with like uh, well I mean I'd say Giardia would be even better than Jimmy and, and Super GT is probably the best of the YouTuber drivers but Yeah, but Skywilk, even when Jimmy was doing the the initial Praga stuff, he was doing really quite well. Like, I don't, I, I don't know what your your way you argue is insane. Uh, Super GT is really good at go karting, yeah. Especially as he, you know, um, he never had like shit loads of money to start with. If I'm I'm not sure what it what it'd be like on like a national go kart level, but like he's good, he's he is decent. Yeah, he just plays GT seven. Steven Steven's more of a, like a go karter in general, I think. A really good example of how stupid motorsport is and how rigged it is is look at someone like Emil Bernstorff, right, on Twitch. Look at how good he is at sim racing and how he would obviously be very good at real wheel driving, but he obviously can't afford to do it. He would, he would, uh, it'd be fine. Like, he, if if you put Emil in like a GT3 car, I'm sure he would absolutely pwn in real life. But he can't afford it can he (laughs) so think how many emils there are out there i mean i don't right i don't know like i i'm around a lot of people that have done motorsport just because i've been around sim racing and people that come into the channel and people that message me and stuff so many of them the story it's always the same story it's like oh i was doing really well i was actually winning or in coming in the top three ran out of money <laughs> it's just like and then so whenever i go to i go to lots of uh, events and things and uh talk to like driver coaches because that's uh, and a lot of driver coaches are basically people that just want to drive like that's a whole passion is driving because they've got some disorder and the only job that they can really do that gets them in a car where it's a stable paying job is driver coaching and it's always the same story Oh yeah, I did pretty well. P- people know that I'm a good, pretty good driver. Ran out of money. <laughs> so, so, and because people know they're pretty good drivers, they knew they are. Oh, they're like, oh, do driver coaching here, whatever, do this. But it, it, you know. Just. It's uh, yeah. Is it, it, I don't it go as I say it goes both ways. If Sims were completely unrelated to driving, um, why is it that people that are genuinely and this is the case of not everybody I know that's good real world drivers, but uh, people that I know the the vast majority, so so probably like eight out of ten, the the drivers that I know real world drivers that were like they're drivers that you would know um very successful real wheel drivers that are shit at sim racing it's because they're older and they just never got into it but every other driver i know that's really good in real life they're very good in simulators they, they would be like six to seven k i racers not even trying 
So it's sort of like Emil Bernstoff sort of thing. They just they just be naturally good. They or like Emery, Emil, um I don't know. You know you know the type. They're like basically if they put the time in they'd be aliens. No, I'm not a natural talent. I'm shit at driving. <laughs> I I am terrible at it. I I I really struggle. Um, driving is I, I enjoy it, but I'm really not. Um, I mean, ironically, the fearless thing would apply because I'm stupid. Um, so if you took the money component out of it, I like this is what I was like on mountain bikes and stuff and skiing and things. I do stupid shit, uh, but that's just a mental disorder. I'm not good at stuff. Hang on. you got to go out there and make connections and meet people at the track. What do you mean? To be a real driver? That's not how it works. So, I, again, I, I'm not going to say names, but I know people that are professional drivers that have raced in known series, right? The amount of hustling that they have to do, like, 20% of what they do is driving. And this is for stuff that's not, like, high-tier motorsport. <laughs> they spend, like, six months of the year hustling mentally to get enough sponsorship and stuff. And this is with them already having uh, known connections and them also being pretty, like, known, well, like, good drivers. So... It's ridiculous. It's not a case that you just go to a track, put in some good results. It's uh, or, or network at the racetrack. <laughs> it's insane. Uh. Right. <sighs> Bad pilot. <laughs> Start a company, make a boatload, sponsor your kid. No, I've said this before. If you if you genuinely want to, um, if you uh, if you're watching this, if you're one of the five people watching this, if you really want to be in motorsport, and let's say you are like, well, if you're if you're over seventeen, it's too late for you. So forget it. <laughs> But like if you're if you're like fifteen to twenty and you're like, Oh, I genuinely want to be in motorsport well you need to uh you need to get into business or you need to start a YouTube channel or and uh cover a game that's it doesn't even have to be sim racing. Do stuff that's like you have to get on the wave of a game that's not popular yet and be established as the person that plays that game. That is how you become that's how you're successful as a um, as a general YouTuber or a general Twitch streamer, outside of like review stuff, but even then, if you're reviewing stuff, you need to review something that's not that popular yet, but is likely to become popular. So that that is how you become like successful on YouTube and Twitch, um, or the the quickest way to become successful. So. Um, let's say a new game is coming out. There's also a console. It, it has to be a game that would be console and PC, or maybe also on mobile, so you know it's going to have an audience if it is successful. And so you you make it that you are the person that's one of the go-to people for that game, or so the sort of a cultural ambassador for that game. So so remember, when, like No Man's Sky was coming out, or Kerbal Space Program or when Gran Turismo or Forza were, were you know, when a new one of those is coming out or a new genre of those types of games um, so th the reason why Super GT is massively successful is because Gran Turismo is a very su popular game and Super GT is, pop is positioned as the Gran Turismo guy the reason Jimmy got really successful is because he got into that Gran Turismo um, audience and it's the out of all the game driving related games, 
it has the viewer base there and once you've got that viewer base once you are going to that viewer base you've got an audience that's much bigger um jardier was doing race room he had fuck all views he's always been amazing he, jardier has been consistently awesome at what he does he's never changed he's always been exactly the same really good streamer he was getting no, no views no progress through race room and stuff because it wasn't popular he got into acc acc released on console and pc and he was in the position to be one of the top acc streamers so he got he's re, he's regarded as the like one of the acc uh, ambassador guys and it's a console and pc game and he's also good you have to be good at this as well that's how it works <laughs> same with people that did fours uh, uh what's his name black panther um basically covers uh like need for speed all these sorts of games and positions himself so he is like the uh arcade sort of racing car guy on console does the kind of stuff for the audience that will play those games covers the games before they come out and then focuses on the games that get more audience there you go now we, and he's got like millions of subscribers are doing really well um tim et mar um and a bunch of the f1 guys uh the, the f1 um youtubers they were all playing the formula one games doing uh playthroughs of the career mode p doing the role playing of being a formula one driver appealing to the average type of person that would play the formula one games on console which is quite a large audience also tying the stuff into formula one which is quite a popular sport in the it as well and so they then become like the cultural ambassadors for those video games and therefore they then have a really big audience that they can capitalize on if you do what's known as the Michi hoyer you could be like an, an alien and really good at what you're doing but if you're playing r factor 2 you could be the nicest guy ever it's going to be really really hard to to like build an audience um they, there's loads of people that do um are really good and they just aren't doing stuff that's popular so like you know that's just that's how that works so if you if you wanted to get a real driving career through youtube that's what you have to do <laughs> uh corsi you have people very closely that got into racing in their 30s and managed to get into the highest tier motorsport in their country brazil this age thing is bs unless you're talking about f1 well okay so first of all brazil is not europe so i don't know what the race they, i know in america and s some places there are there's more opportunities i think they're diminishing but from what i understand in in america you can there's actually more of a grassroots motorsport where it's actually feasible without being stupidly rich so i don't know about brazil but like if you're british or european you're not gonna it's not likely that you're gonna go to bloody brazil is it <laughs> and then then also i don't know what what sort of salaries are they are they actually getting in their 30s in that motorsport i, I don't know how it works so so you're not it's not really total bullshit is it like how you've just took what i've said which is obviously very eurocentric like obviously i'm british so i'm obviously talking about sort of it's a british uh, north american <laughs> it's like it's not total bullshit is it you you all what your your comment should have been oh actually in brazil there are opportunities still for certain things uh, for certain series for people that are 30 plus years old but i I'd imagine that they um, they probably still had money, but even in Brazil, they probably were still quite well uh, well off. <laughs> they're not going to be like poor. They're not going to be like people on median income getting into motorsport. I wouldn't have thought. Maybe maybe they are. Maybe we all need to go to Brazil. Yeah, I mean, I I know quite a few people that uh, that. Uh, 30 plus that are doing motorsport but they they they're rich so <laughs> you know if you if you own multiple properties and you have like a uh, hundred thousand pound a year coming in that you can afford to spaff up however you want then yeah you can do motorsport funny how that works
yeah, I was talking about like, sustainably being in racing, yeah. So yeah, you can do as, as I say, you can do there are races in the UK that you can you can do without being ludicrously rich. Um like Clio Cup is one of them. But you're gonna be you're gonna be doing eighty percent, ninety percent is gonna be you working on trying to get sponsors, and you probably do also need to be quite wealthy as well the yeah it's it's a whole crazy thing all right we go oh! <laughs> okay right that's not what i was expecting to happen It's just funny because I uh, like the people I know that have been involved in motorsport. Ah, oh, bloody how the grass pulls you off here! Are relentlessly complaining about the costing of it and how it's impossible and how they've had to quit. Like pretty much, I'd say like nine out of ten people I know involved in motorsport have all had to quit because it is, they just can't afford to keep doing it. So, so for when people are then like, "Oh yeah, you can afford it," you're like, "Well, okay." I'll, t I'll tell that to all the uh, people I know that are good drivers that all stop driving and then find themselves stuck in the land of sim racing because they they still have the driving itch, but they can't afford to do any form of relatively fast real wheel driving. Bloody hell! A bit of understeer. Oh, thank you for subscribing. Wow, has this got drum brakes on it? I, the, the other thing is you get I, you often have people go oh no but you can afford to do racing and then their their idea of racing is like um one of the like mx5 series which is fine i i personally i'd love to do that but it it doesn't it's not self-sustainable it's just you paying to do an activity which is fine um or oh shit we're doing the oval or, or they um, they conveniently ignore the time cost <laughs> where it's like okay so you can get the car for 20k or something or even like cheaper okay you're only going to use three or four sets of tyres for the 10 races you do but then you've got to factor in the time cost of the weekends traveling there and the the cost that has on your life if you act like and most people with normal jobs just really wouldn't have the time to be able to do it even if the thing isn't so expensive i've walked on this in real life guys it's absolutely insane <laughs> it's an insane bit of oval You're only saying it's hard, not impossible. No, it might as well be impossible. It's not about... That's bullshit. <laughs> You're saying what I'm saying is bullshit. I'm sorry. It's, it, it's not that it's hard. It's statistically almost impossible for most... For, for like... Unless you're wealthy. Like, I, it just... It's not about it's not hard what's hard is having a youtube channel but make enough money <laughs> right building a youtube channel or whatever is is hard right very time consuming and you also have to just be lucky and you also have to be in the right knees and that's hard right 
being able to do motorsport full time is not hard. It's like on another level. Um. Oh, a bit of lock up. Oh, it locks up very easy. This car. That worked out well. Yeah, like uh, becoming a pilot, becoming a normal pilot, like a general aviation pilot, that is hard. Um, becoming a, a doctor or a lawyer is hard. <laughs> becoming a race driver is not... Oh, my God! Oh. Oh. Nailed it. That's the line. And understeer off the road. I know people that get their way around, share cars, has two to three pilots looking for a sponsor at the same time as managing their own life. If you're a, if you're a fighter, it's far from impossible. I mean, right, yeah, if you... St It's, it's just like I don't know I don't know what to say to you <laughs> I don't know what to say it's like it's not impossible to become an astronaut at NASA is it if you really try really hard you get really fit and you're a little bit lucky you can become an astronaut Yeah, there's people that live in their parents' basement and spend all their money on driving and stuff that can't lead to anything. There's all, there's there's ways. Motorsport will always want to try and take money off people. So there's a difference between paying to do motorsport and motorsport being a, um, a sustainable, viable career. That, that's two different things. So, like... I mean, yeah, okay, like, Swolio is a really good example. He has had to become, like, he's become, like, an eSports uh, driver in the first place through iRacing. He's also very good at business, Right. He's then managed to be in the right place at the right time for driver training with it timing up nicely. He's done a really good job with it. He's then created a driver coaching business that he's then linked into sim racing, using sim racing to market it, and then establishing himself as an expert in sim racing or like race driving as well, which has then managed to make enough money for him to then be able to, to pay for him to then get into doing uh, radical racing where he's, he is actually genuinely talented and good and so that's maybe businessly uh, like sustainable as a professional driver because he can tie the racing into his business of the driver coaching so it actually can be sustainable uh, exactly Jimmy Broadbent has managed to build a successful sim racing and uh, driving game YouTube channel which has built a huge audience from um, through skill, but also through luck. And that has allowed him to then be attractive to sponsors because he has an audience. It's nothing to do with the drive. He, you know, he's not driven himself to that audience, but it's then become, it becomes a sustainable business for Bill Steen to then want to sponsor a car <laughs> for... for, for um, so it makes sense as a, so he can be a professional race driver in that it ties into the business right but that's not really through the race driving is it <laughs> like 
yeah, anybody could technically do what Jimmy Broadbent's done, or even Jordier. Anybody could technically be really good at streaming, happen to pick the right game at the right time, also be very talented at streaming, and then after years and years and years of ridiculously hard work, manage to get a driving Clio Cup that's, that's somewhat funded or what have you. Anybody could do that. <laughs> you just have to try hard enough. It's like, by that logic, anybody can do anything. Yeah, I, 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 you, I could uh, put, all, put all my money into getting a pilot's license to be a pilot. And then do uh, pilot tours, yeah. Well, yeah, that's the, other, that's the other thing you can do. It's funny how money works. Yeah, you, all you need to do is make a graphics mod and a user interface for Assetto Corsa, and then you have enough money to drive in GT3. <laughs> so yeah, anybody can be a GT3 driver, you just have to build one of the most successful mods ever made. Right, to be to be fair, yeah, you can. If you're a certain age, you can take. Yeah, so this would be the difference. If you are someone that's hard work, just just raw hard working, and you want to be a pilot, you don't need another business to get into being a pilot. So if you're like, let's say you're 20 or like 18 to 25, you can get a loan to to pay for the qualifications involved for you to then become a full-time pilot. Like, you don't need anything in advance. You just need to be able to show that you're not a numpty and that you've, you, you know, you're, you're committed to it. So same as if you want to become a doctor or a lawyer, you can get loans to be able to get into that where there is a genuine career. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's... Uh, uh, 120 I think it's like 240 it might work out at in total but I think 120 uh, I can't remember what last time someone told me it's about 120 I think but you can become like a, you, so the nice thing with being a pilot is that you can get a basic uh, 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 what's it called like a private pilot's license then you can get a license for um What's it called? Like a the, the license which allows you to then take other people out to to, um, to build your flight hours. I don't know. I can't remember the names of it. But like, there's a there's ways for you to fly to keep flying and being more successful. That's the difference. So it's like with poker, you can enter small cash games, win prizes, and enter bigger tournaments and bigger competitions if you're good. That's not a avenue in motorsport. You can't do that activity to do more of that activity. You have to do something else to do to do the other thing. In the UK, at least, yeah, there might. There, I'm, I'm, I'm not denying there might be um, in other countries. And, and people have said to me in America, for certain oval racing, there are actually maybe maybe less so now, but there, there have been avenues for people to progress through the sport within itself because there's more sponsorship opportunities and things and yeah i'm not sure i'm not sure Paluca. so there's a whole bunch of flight hour stuff from what i understand the cheapest way to be become a pilot is you do gliding <laughs> you get loads of hours in gliders like loads of flight hours very affordably and then and then you can uh, I don't, and then you you'll also be a uh, much better pilot if you can glide well um, and then you do like light aircraft and then I think you go to like doing the traditional training for larger aircraft I'm not sure how you become a helicopter pilot, though. That'd be the dream. <laughs> a 
Anyway, we have some viewers that are pilots. I don't think they're awake. You know when someone's a, a pilot because they'll tell you. They're worse than vegans. <laughs> but even, even with YouTube, right? I there's no way that I'd be able to do what I'm doing now if it wasn't for me having like a completely bullshit middle class upbringing and like it's, it, it, it's bullshit it's, and I don't know why people don't understand this at all like it's all rigged the whole system is rigged through wealth basically it's so it's so utterly rigged and, and this is one that big problems with I think uh, it's that the the Anrandian uh, some, sometimes neoliberal sometimes alt-right sometimes far conservative l uh, general liberalism in some sense I'm quite liberal in many ways but like the mistake they make is they want to attribute everything to like individual intention and ignore systemic components of stuff Yeah, and Rand is a uh, lolbertarian. It's like the thing, yeah. So a lot of these sort of like Reaganism, Thatcherism, and stuff, they make sense from the perspective of if you're already in wealth. So like. If, if you already own if you already own multiple properties or you're already quite wealthy as a family or where you live is already quite wealthy yeah you actually have to be pretty shit to mess it up like you really have to go out of your way to like you know because you have money coming in all the time so you actually have to be pretty bad to mess things up so you can understand from their perspective why they then look at people that don't have that wealth and they're like well what are they doing why are they so useless but it's like they're, they're completely unaware of how different the game is for someone that grows up in a higher poverty area where there isn't just wealth around them. Like you can't, if you grow up in like a shitty area, you can't, you can't go around mowing people's lawns for money because people don't have money to pay for you to mow the lawns. They don't even have lawns. You can't. You can't go around cleaning people's cars because people don't have money to pay for you to clean the cars. They might not even have cars. <laughs> There's no start point to get on the ladder. Um, your parents probably haven't taught you how to talk clearly. Or like, you, you're just stressed about getting food. Or one of your parents is probably an alcoholic or has some other issues. So you're too busy dealing with all the family shit rather than being able to do other stuff and like develop yourself but they just ignore all of that yeah the, the when you've got wealth around you the opportunities that appear are insane But I just think people that are a lot of people that, have, that are always around quite a lot of wealth, and so certain areas in the UK, and just people, they don't. I don't think they have much like intuitive awareness of what poverty, poverty outside of like oh, there's some poor people. I don't think they understand the sort of pervasive na uh, nature of it all. And then also just the the basic stuff of like if you if you are in an environment growing up with no money at all. Um, everything is just inaccessible and everything is like an affront to day-to-day -day living. You'd like look at a vending machine. You're like, oh, I can't afford anything from that. Whereas a rich person would look at a cafe, not even a rich person, but like an a, a, a upper middle class or wealthy person would look at like a restaurant, a cafe, a vending machine, whatever. They'd, they'd be like, oh, that's cool. That's convenient. That's really nice. 
um, oh, that, that we could go out for a meal, or oh, I'm thirsty, I can go buy a drink. Whereas a, a, a person that doesn't have wealth, all of that is like someone going, ah, you can't afford it, <laughs> you can't afford that. <laughs> Do I mean? It's like it's insulting. Oh, you can't afford to rent here. <laughs> Here's a nice house. You can't have that. <laughs> And they wonder why. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, Cor Corsi. I don't know how it is in Europe, but an easy way to get into motorsport here in Brazil is through engineering university. Given that you already had an opportunity to create some kind of skill on racing course, right? So you're not talking about being a driver. I don't know. I don't know what that's. Uh, filtered that <laughs> um, yeah that's you, you can do engineering degree courses in the UK but you're not going to be driving are you yeah there, there's quite a few jobs in motorsport as engineers as pit crew people and what have you but you're not likely to get into a race car doing that Next challenge. Of course, I was saying you're not you're not likely to um, get in a race car if you do engineering. So you 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 can get around motorsport. You can be around it. There's lots of people in the UK that are around motorsport. They're not driving, are they? They're, they're engineers. Hello, Mank. I don't know. It's the it's just the auto bot. It's it's what I do to filter out um the bots that spam websites. Yeah, just take a Brazilian from the favelas and stick them in an engineering university. Even in the UK, right? You can't. A lot of people can't do degrees because it's too expensive. Also. A lot of people wouldn't think to do a degree as well because they'd be like, "Well, first of all, they don't want to. Maybe they don't want to get into debt. But then they'd also be like, oh, I have to take out uh, other loans, or I'd have to get multiple jobs, and then they have to rent where the university is if it, if they don't have one near them. And then if it was an engineering uni a, a, a university for engineering specifically." You'd have to find a university that's actually got a good reputation for that specific course. And then what you'll find is that in universities, the most valuable stuff that actually leads to employment is extracurricular stuff outside of the course directly. So or, so I did uh, like games uh, art degree, uh, Mickey Mouse degree. The people that got jobs from the degree were people that already knew people that worked in the games industry, uh, people that managed to get work placements, which was nigh on impossible, like out of 500 people, I think five people got work placements. Um, and uh, people that were able to then do, uh, people that took it on themselves and just in, had the initiative to do things anyway, those people didn't even need to have a degree they, they could have just done what they did and they probably would have got a job regardless so and when i did a degree it was a lot cheaper it was, it was you didn't need the same loans that you need now uh here if you're an engineer and have any kind of skill on racing it's an easier way to get into it as a driver yo so i don't know what you're talking I'm, I'm not sure what sort of motorsport you're talking about if you're just talking about being at a racetrack, driving whatever random cars, fine, you can do that anywhere. That's not uh, necessarily sustainable. Yeah, wasn't Biden supposed to forgive uh, the student debt? Because people are already, like, when you tally it up, people are paying off a certain amount that it's irrelevant that you've got the debt outstanding anyway so it's, it's economically damaging having that student debt because the debt's resold so many times as well that it's, it's just stupid
not what you expect here on a sim racing stream. Oh, Kim, Kim Walls, this is. <laughs> well, I just rant about economics non-stop because <laughs> it really is really annoying. I think people, more people, should talk about how rigged everything is. I've I've been bullshit lucky, so I I feel like it's my responsibility to talk about these things because I'd feel like it's just, um, yeah. I think if you if you've been bullshit lucky and you don't talk about the bullshit that's made you lucky or the stuff that's, you know, the, the actual reality of stuff, I think it's a form of lying by omission. So. You're talking about getting into racing while being sponsored, creating the opportunity to race in the industry. But yeah, look, of course, I don't know which specific context you're talking about. Maybe in Brazil, maybe maybe you can be very talented and get in on a lower amount of money. I don't know. Seems unlikely to me. Maybe you're right. I don't know about the Brazilian motorsport scene. Well, I've told you the solutions, Poos. How can you disagree with my solution? of everyone has a dd wheel <laughs> we create an island called game of muscle island with nice sandy beaches everyone is uh there's gyms for everyone so everyone's like sexy um free sun cream as well because that's important everyone you have to shave your head <laughs> everyone's bold <laughs> Brazil! What happened to Natalie Santos? <laughs> For those of you that don't know, years ago we had this person, I think it was a bot, or it was just like some guy, I don't know, called Natalie Santos when we play Project Cars 2, and they'd come in chat and they'd just type, Brazil! <laughs> it was really weird at like 2 in the morning. You brought it up because you want to know if there was something of the kind in Europe. Well, no, look, as I said, you can, you could go in, in the Europe, you could do MX5 racing for like under £15,000 a year. So if you had like median income and you really dedicated yourself to it, you could do MX5 racing, which just doesn't lead to anything. It's just, it's the same as like, you can buy a boat for £20,000. You can buy a boat for like £5,000 and spend all your time doing it up. And there you go, you live on a boat. But that's different to being... That's different to having a sustainable business yachting. <laughs> it's like... It's, they're totally like, it's different doing like uh, low-tier motorsport, Formula Ford, G Ginetta, MX-5, whatever, or... A Caterham Cup or something, which I'm sure are fantastic to do, but that's totally different to doing that and being a works driver in GT3 or um, being uh, in BTCC in the actual, you know, like actual top of the series or having a route to being in uh, a, an actual athlete, if you will, in that series. Like there's, there's very few people in any motorsport that are genuinely race drivers and not hobbyists paying to drive cars and the general public and most people don't uh don't don't know where that dividing line is they they, they really think anybody in a race car is a race driver which is you know i'm not that just like you can exp knowing how it actually operates <laughs> You could buy a little rib for 7k. Oh, I mean, I'm happy with my kayak, so technically I'm a sailor. Under motorsport logic, <laughs> me with my little my little uh, Piranha River Cross kayak, I'm a sailor. I'm a I'm a professional sailor because I go kayaking all the time. It's, it's exactly what motorsport is for most people. Oh, have you have you done Olympic kayak? No, I just ride my kayak on flat water. Oh, so you're just a hobbyist that spent money on a kayak? Yes. Oh, so you're not really, a <laughs> not really the same thing, is it? Uh, no, not really. Uh, Pluto, you have three degrees, and I don't use any of them, as I always go back to Volvo floor. 
Volvo for life. And you only like Volvos because you can drive them through walls without them getting a scratch. Yeah, I mean, I go walking, so clearly I'm a, um, I'm a athlete. Um, I'm an ultra athlete. <laughs> I can't think of another sport, actually, like motorsport, where people generally consider something like uh, the, the degree to which someone's considered like a race driver when that's not the case I, it, you know The new ones are pretty mid. So much plastic. Wow. Volvo should be tanks. If a Volvo can't survive driving through three other vehicles, then what's the point? To be fair, Zwift is hardcore. Have you seen like the people that are really good at that, where they have to pre-charge before the race starts? Oh, I, no, I, I would say esports is more legit, not not than like physical, not not in terms of physicality, but in terms of competition, esports is insane. Like, the so with something competitive, as I, as I said before, it's like the numbers of people taking part affects the difficulty just statistically. So to be good at esports, to be an alien sim racer or like a Counter Strike pro or whatever, it's so hard to stand out. It's mental. Like you, also, it's insane the amount of work they put in. It's not like a great thing to do. Like, at least, so at least with physical sports, there's a limit to what people can do in terms of being optimal. Like you can't, you can't spend twelve hours in a gym lifting weights because your muscles will it's not it doesn't work like you there's certain routines and stuff even for someone that's doing um running or whatever like you can't do the activity for all day long like yeah you'd have to diet and stuff and eat and whatever there's tra there's other training you can do but with sim racing or like with esports they put so much time into it and because you can always you can keep doing stuff There'll still be a limit for like mental development and what's productive, but uh, esports is insane. Like really, <laughs> like I, 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 I don't think it's even a good thing necessarily. Like I, I respect people that do it because I think they're mental and it's hilarious. Exactly, Nikki Fistics. If you're Brian Cra uh, Chatfield, if you're a professional racing driver, 99% of the time you were raised from one as a very young age. Yeah. Uh, Palookan, I was a mountain bike cyclist when I was younger. It was quite easy to understand that without performance in those drugs, I was nobody. That was just you, Palookan. You just weren't very good, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Palookan, Palookan stick legs. Oh, I can't cycle fast enough. <laughs> oh, everyone's quicker than me. My little legs can't pedal. <laughs> this is his legs. This is to scale. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Well, you saw what happened with the Tour de France. <laughs> so, so mean. You know, with the Tour de France, where it was just like everyone was basically doping. So stupid. Imagine a cyclist with tiny, tiny legs.
Oh. Nailed it. Barge your way through. Esports more competitive than real sports is ridiculous. No, why? It's just statistics. Like, it, unless you want to argue the semantics of competitive, not saying, not saying it's necessarily easier or harder. It's more competitive. It's, it's well, it's harder to stand out, but it's a different activity. But the point is, it's just a numbers thing. It's a mathematical issue if you have more people to compete against that's more competition therefore it's more likely that there's someone that's better than you <laughs> it's not t it's just what numbers the reality how it, right if you have to do a sport and there's only two people that like even in the context of sport let's say i do a sport and only two people do it well, I can only either come first or second, right? So the first place guy could mess up. They could not be very good. Whatever. You're more likely to win if there's only two people doing that sport. Now, if you had a sport where there's 500 people doing it, well, it's going to be a lot harder to win the sport, whatever it is, if there's 500 other people that you've got to go against. Just statistically, even if you were really good is more likely that there's someone else that's as good or better than you or more likely that if you make a mistake someone else will capitalize on it just the, the the random variables of it the more people there are doing something statistically the harder it is to win or the and the, the more likely that you have to be better because there's more chances for someone else to beat you so it's just, it's just a mathematical question it 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 gets more complex in real life in the sense that if you have a sport that's bigger with more opportunities in it, then you might not have to be as good to be able to do the thing professionally, for example, in that context. What are you say looked up some numbers, normal sport is far more competitive. What are you saying? <laughs> like why 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 are you struggling with like basic reasoning? No, I don't. Oh dear, guys. Do you understand that if there's only two people doing something, it's less competitive than if there's five hundred people? You, I, I, you can disagree with that if you want to, but I don't know how. <laughs> That's normally what competitive means. I've got a pro tip on how to win the lottery. You just buy all the tickets. Hang on. It's only more competitive. Bloody hell. It's only more competitive if you take into account the competitivity to get into the sport as well as being inside no it doesn't it doesn't matter <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what you're saying i don't know what you're saying right if the goal is to win something even if it's a real world sport if the real world sport but i'm talking about esports in real sport if the goal is you have to win right if there's more people in something it's harder to win it to just statistics we're not even talking about one person if they're good or bad it's just harder to win something if there's more people in it like that applies to sports esports anything if you have a real world sport with not many people in it easier to win if you have an esport with less people in it easier to win if you have i don't know why this is hard to understand So 
So normally, generally speaking, most esports has a lot more people competing than most real world sports. Therefore, it is harder to stand out in the esport than it is to stand out in the real sport because there's normally, not always, there are some real, like football has a lot of people in it. I don't, there isn't a football esports anyway. I mean, there's FIFA, but it's a different type of, it's uh, not even slightly analogous. Does the statistical bell curve of skill change with the number of people in the in the set? You well, you you'd have to there would be you'd have to look at different activities, um, and then certain activities you will probably have like um, some activities might be predisposition to uh, a very mi a small minority of people that happen to be exceptional at that activity. So even though you have a lot of people in it, a given activity, there might only be a small selection of people that are actually what you could class as valid competitors. So that would actually effectively be the same scenario as it being uh, less competitive because even though there's a lot of people doing it, there's a smaller group of people that are genuine competitors. But you'd still ultimately have the same issue as what we're talking about before. Yeah, and you would still, that, that percentage of people that are genuine competitors, if there's more people doing it, would be larger. So it would still... Hang on, a lot of sim racers are trying to get in as well in the sport itself. Yeah, I, d I don't know what you... Were, I don't understand. Um... <laughs> What issue was that? I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> I don't even know what is going on. Oh, dear. Oh, this card doesn't have a diff settings. CS2 peaks at 1.5 million players every day. Of course, a lot of them play casually. There's a huge pool of people. Yeah. Well, a good example is when I was a kid, um, I was like the fastest... Uh, 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 primary school <laughs> I just by having long legs and having run around a lot I was the fastest kid in my school so purely because it was a countryside place where there's no people I then automatically qualified for the county sports events for 800 meters 200 meters 400 meters and for swimming <laughs> so which, which was purely purely down to just having long legs and having uh, done a lot of like um uh, running around and stuff and swimming as a kid j just just because i had right there was no competition therefore by default i was at a county level <laughs> like, but when i went to the county guess what i didn't do very well funnily enough <laughs> i didn't come last in fairness yeah, so that's a really good example of like, like how competition operates when you've got more people to compete against. I was like the Jamaican bobsled team at running. It was very humbling. It was quite. It was good fun though. It was pretty funny. <laughs> really like absolutely shit at something, and then being, <laughs> and then you're being like. <laughs> go to county and you're just like oh there are all these kids in like sporty equipment who've had parents that have trained them up and everything you're just like oh oh dear no rs66 alec i was giving i was just giving an example bloody hell <laughs> No, you've completely missed the point. 
the discussion's confused because I don't know what on earth some people are talking about. Like, they need to either directly disagree so I can understand what they're disagreeing with, or they're just coming up with random shit that makes no sense at all. Imagine, imagine you need to buy tea bags at Tesco's, right? And your goal is to get tea bags because you run out of tea bags. Now, what are your chances of getting tea bags if everyone, uh, if there's more people that have run out of tea bags? It's less likely that you're going to get tea bags, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not against everybody. I'm just like, I don't know what is going on with some, some people in chat. Like, I can't even follow what's going on. When, when the toilet paper ran out in COVID times, it was harder to get toilet paper because the competition for the toilet paper was higher. <laughs> so few some people had to shit and then wash their bottoms in the shower because the competition was too high for the toilet paper. <laughs> now, <laughs> that's what esports like compared to real world sport. Real, in real world sports, some people have to clean the bottoms in a shower because <laughs> the competition's too high. Uh, I, 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 I was well on top of my toilet paper. I was well trained. Yeah, John Hartley took all the toilet paper, so there was none left. It was jo John Hartley. He was actually the, the main problem. Hang on. Corsi, I think if you said directly... What? I think if you said directly, I agree with you, he'd managed to see a way, a knot in the middle of the phrase. Hey, mm. thanks for f subscribing, Mr. Fatsburn. I was always my bottom in the shower. Ah, oh, dear. Uh, wait, what? No, it was. It was RS66 Alec. Exactly. It actually was my middle class background that gave me the advantage. 100%. Because, um, uh, so, uh, when I was a baby, uh, I lived in Africa like every normal person, and my parents had a swimming pool like every normal person. We also had a maid like every normal person. Look, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so I was as a young as a baby I was swimming around in the pool so I I was like well used to swimming most people didn't have access to that did they so you know um well I, I also walk, walked like um two mile like a mile to school um no my my parents just did teaching in Africa so it was like um you you got um you got put in a house. Um, uh, yeah, I used to walk quite far to school uh, because my parents were like, oh, they, they worked as teachers, so they drove to work early in the morning. So I had to walk a, a, like a mile and a bit to school or whatever. Like, well, it's probably about a mile, actually. A mile there, a mile back. Well, that's like... Most kids don't walk a mile to school, do they? So it's going to make you better at walking. So it's, it's all like circumstance out of your control. I'm I'm pretty bad at skiing, but I'm okay. I can ski. I used to do a lot of roller skating. <sighs> no, a mile's not that far, but compared to other kids that would all be driven to school, it it adds up, doesn't it? water mile every day that was the wilderness yeah that was that was hardcore as a as a young child walking a mile uphill both ways in the snow Look. it was a hard childhood <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I like to slam my brakes on on the start finish line at the start of the race. Uh. 
Can't go up the inside there, they'll just drive into you. Oh, sometimes I'd walk I'd walk back from college and I think that was uh, seven miles. No, nah, that's not bad. Oh my goodness. They just pit you even when you've got in front of them with a send. Absolute filth, guys. This game would be greatly enhanced with rockets. I really think that's a missed opportunity. If Kunos had added rockets to this, it would have sold better than Forza. This is going to be well hard. I don't know how we're supposed to pass these cars. There's no way to get past them. If you take a different line, you're screwed. Ah, oh dear. I oh, we might as well put the ABS on, though. We'll give it a bit more aero, I see.
Uh, yeah, we've done all the hot laps. Like, if there's any overlap, they would they turn into and pit you. Yeah. All right, Mank. Thank you. Yeah, well, you have to play like wreck first. Is that the only option? <laughs> the aggression that you have to have in this is crazy. It's a good start. Problem is, we got pace, but overtaking is super hard with these cars.
Off. Get off. <laughs> Get off. Oh. No. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Come on, I think you got away so far. Yes, come on. Woo! That's a bit of a tricky. Let's not crash. He was in a pub. We got up the inside and he turned into us. Beautiful. It's nice driving. It was a good challenge. Bloody hell. There we go. It's a good car, this. Alienitis. Awesome, thanks, guys. Oh, bloody hell. I need to get some food quickly, guys. Started to believe there is no, there is no sim rig. Woo! Oh, we've almost we've seventy six percent of all them. We're on uh, eighty six. Oh my god, coming up to the last ten percent. I need to grab some food, guys. I'm absolutely starving. It's uh, three p.m. I've not eaten. I had some porridge this morning. So I'll be back in a minute. Uh, give me like ten minutes. Put like BRB on the screen. Well, I'll be back in a bit, guys. Thanks for taking part, really appreciate it. Thanks for the follows, thanks for the donations, thanks for subscribing, thanks for following us on Twitch. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh. Well deserved food. I'm back in a minute.
Noodle Master returns. Okay, let's go, let's go. Hello. <laughs> okay, let's go. Ah, pure noodleage. Fried the stir. I didn't use the air fryer though. Yeah, if you if you complete um, a Seto Corsa, it, it uh, unlocks Ace on Steam. That's how it works. I, I don't know why no one else worked that out. Very few people have bothered risking their, their wasting their lives to complete AC. I'm not sure what else happens once you complete it. I think you become like fluent in Italian. Literal Easter egg. <laughs> I like crystal star. Can't beat some egg noodles with the vegetables. Bean sprouts, egg noodles, cabbage. Pure pure vegetable. Not vegan. Is there a way of getting vegan eggs? <laughs> if you steal if you if they're your own chickens. I don't think a chicken minds you taking his eggs. Where do vegans draw the line? Ask the question for ChatGTP. Where do vegans draw the line? Where? <laughs> what is the line? Where do vegans draw the line? <laughs> Can ChatGTP work out what I even mean? Here we go. Vegans draw the line <laughs> with a pencil at abstaining the use of animal products, byproducts, to any extent. Yeah, but what? What about eggs? What about eggs? From home chickens. From, for many vegans, the use of eggs from backyard chickens raises ethical concerns. How? Ownership and consent. I don't think a chicken gives a shit. <laughs> like, like, honestly... Will you took my egg? I'm going to consent to this. It's a chicken. <laughs> like, if you've... 
If you've got a chicken, you uh, you brought it up yourself. You've looked after it. It's a happy chicken. It ain't gonna give a shit if you take its eggs. I mean, they lay lots of eggs on purpose so that some can be taken. Normal. Yeah. I'm not talking about factory farm chickens. I'm saying you got normal, normal chicken, a normal chicken, proper healthy chicken, and you you have like a really nice open wild area for chickens, like an orchard or something, and you have a really nice chicken coop. So these chickens are living in chicken heaven, and then occasionally you take their eggs. I think the chickens would go, that's a fair trade. Chickens eat their own eggs as well, yeah. Consuming backyard eggs may indirectly support the notion that it's acceptable to use animals for human benefit. I think it's acceptable to use animals for human benefit. To, you know, also within within the reason. Right, if I had a if I had a byproduct that I didn't use, like aliens took over the earth and uh they want ranting, they take rant energy. Um they take time model complaint energy, right? They're like they're like we 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 require more more time model complaining. I'll be like, "Eh, hey, sure have some. Have some." Oh, thank you. Are we using you? No, no, it's all right. You can just have it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it'd be fine. We do farm humans for their blood and hair. Can't farm me for my hair, though. I win. You're level level five vegan. What what <laughs> what? Hang on. What doesn't cast a shadow? Oh, you can eat glass. There you go. Potatoes. What well, they do if you take them out of the ground? Hang on, you can eat worms then. Hang on, does that mean you can eat anything at night? <laughs> as long as you turn the lights off, you can eat it. Just eat with your eyes closed. Loophole. Technically, a shadow isn't being cast, is it? 
if you think about it, like a shadow is the lack of light. You should be able to cast a light, but you shouldn't be able to cast a shadow. Okay, let's go. Let's go, go, go. Right, ah, oh, what's this? Another Porsche cup. I oh, know this is Porsche GT3 R. I guarantee you in the future, if we don't have World War Three, which we probably will have, I bet you um, people look back on like mass farming of animals as like degenerate behaviour and they'll be like they'll be like, What on earth were people doing? What were they doing? In the same way they'll look back at eye racing and they'll go, People thought that tire model was it acceptable what were they doing what were they thinking <laughs> what were they thinking true story you gotta make it stiff guys everyone likes it stiff I just use default default AC FFB. All achievements, everything, one hundred percent. King Muscle, Legend of Sim Racing. Hello, Ultra Instinct. How's it going? Full send. Oh, we're drifting. <laughs> the rears are overheating a touch. catch P1 here, it might be too far away. Oh, we 
need to address the rear tire shenanigans here. Good line, that. Ah! <laughs> okay, might need a little bit more rear wing. Just a little touch. <laughs> That's the cheap way to find out. <laughs> Thanks for following, welcome. All accounts are banned. You, you made a new account just so that you were banned. <laughs> you, you know there is like ban protection. If Twi Twi Twitch uh, could track, um, it, it knows by if you write dumb comments, Twitch goes, "Oh, there's a dumb dumb." <laughs> we know, we know this dumb dumb, and so that's how they get you. That's why I'm shadow banned on the internet. Ah, the rear tires are overheating. Car didn't drive. Some like higher pressure, but then the pressure's too high. Maybe some different uh, camber settings or something.
Yeah, the, the problem with physics and multi-core stuff with games often, or just anything with multi-core, is when you have stuff that has to be sequentially in order, and if you have the opportunity for stuff to end up out of order, it messes everything up. So, um, you have a whole bunch of stuff in a game that doesn't isn't dependent on something else happening in, in temporally the correct order. So th those sorts of things don't, it doesn't really matter. You know, like so, like an object could load into the environment at different times. Doesn't matter depending on what else is loading elsewhere. It's fine. But if something is, if something depends on something else to load before it for it to specifically work, then you have issues when you send it to different threads and depending on architectures, I think, of uh, how memory's managed and everything else. Yeah, so that's the big problem. So I'm sure you could do with physics. I'd imagine you could do a whole bunch of. Well, let's say, let's say uh, the tire model. Use lookup tables for tire temperature and God knows what for a whole bunch of stuff, or for like like the car the car damage, um, the physical appearance, of the, the visual appearance of the car. Um, there's loads of stuff that you can not do like that but if it's anything that's absolutely core to the fundamental gameplay and the stuff that has to this going in and out of the game let's say 500 times a second I mean there's probably like really clever ways of making it so that stuff can wait for something without it interrupting something else or, or maybe the uh, engine Maybe it, it makes a guess, a, an approximation, and then that approximation is updated at a later time. So it stays, on aggregate, it stays accurate, but for at singular points in time, it could be incorrect, but it wouldn't matter. So it doesn't hitch everything. I don't know. It, it'll get really complicated. <laughs> it'll just be mental. Well, and it's any any sort of prediction, yeah. You you use that with loads of stuff. Uh, it's, it's it's ultimately it's all arbitrary. There'll be, there'll be loads of ways of doing things. Uh, our P one's well gone. We need a faster car.
what would be amazing is if we could get like a eight newton meter DD wheel with a wheel with a circular wheel rim that's nice with lots of buttons down to like uh, sort of two nine nine price point. That'd be incredible. thing is though a good dd wheel it doesn't really matter in many ways that they cost 600 700 pounds because it's not lost money like it's it's a device it doesn't break so it matters in the if you were to buy it and you didn't know you like sim racing or that some people just don't have much uh cash available to them so it matters for that but the point would be, you buy like a G25 or something, or T300, they should, they should be cheaper. Then you know you like sim racing. Then you could just save up for like however many years it takes to save up. To then buy a DD wheel that would last forever, basically. And then if you ever needed the money, you could sell the wheel because it's a, it's a good quality item that's never going to break. This is why, whenever it comes up, people talking about the price of iRacing, and they go, wow, people spend money on equipment. And it's like, yeah, but they've not lost the money. When you buy iRacing, you've lost the money, so it's more expensive. It's not an asset. It's, uh, it's burnt money. It's like, it's like petrol in a car. It's gone. You can't, you can't recoup the cost of the petrol, so it's more expensive than the car. I haven't tried it. I will, I will get it. Maybe we'll try it this evening. It was really weird. I was watching Matt Malone's stream, and uh, someone mentioned the price of iRacing, right? And the apologetics <laughs> for the pricing of iRacing is bizarre. It's so weird. All like loads of people going, oh, well, I spend more on coffee. Oh, well, real go karting costs this much. Oh, well, I spend a lot of time on it. And it's like. Every single irrelevant argument that's completely unvalid was made. <laughs> like 50 people all saying the stupidest arguments, which are just dumb arguments. Like, uh, like all you need to say for iRacing is, I, I, I earn enough money to be able to afford to play it, and I enjoy it. Therefore, I'm happy spending what is objectively more money than any other driving video game and most video games, because I'm happy with that and I can afford it. You don't... The, the bizarre thing is people lying to themselves and other people to justify it, like, outside of it. It's just purely subjective. It's like when religious people come up with all these bollocks where they're like, oh, well, you know, how do you explain trees? How do you explain this? Uh, oh, the Bible is the word of God. It's like, no, that's a load of shit. You, you have faith. You have faith. Fine, just be honest. You believe in it without any evidence. Just uh, that's fine. Like you can't. I can't argue with that. No one can argue with that. That is what it is. Just be honest. <laughs> You're you are content and you are happier living your life believing. Even though I don't. There's no real reason to it. That if you actually think about it, it doesn't make sense. But you're happy having faith, and you get on with the rest of your life, and you're a nice person. Just be honest. It's so stupid when people go, how do you explain trees? How do you explain eyes? Ah. Oh. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, just be honest. If you like eye racing, and even though it is objectively more expensive than other simulators and video games, but you like it and you've got enough money, so it doesn't matter. It's so weird when people try and defend pricing of stuff. Also, you know, the, the real thing with any driving sim is the time investment cost anyway. Like, if you're playing a competitive driving game, any of them, okay, AC, iRacing, LMU, r 2 in a league, the time cost is more expensive than the game cost. I just don't know why people make shit up or, or why people... I don't know why 
people can't detect when they're talking when they're like saying something that's completely logically like fallacious like it's so I don't, <laughs> I don't like ACC but I do like the normalist but that is amazing so it's probably one of the probably one of the but one of the or not the best simulation to practice like uh, even F1 or GG mods they're really it's really good yeah, like, like, why not just say, like, f so for me personally, I pay for iRacing, I buy the content on it. A, it's entertaining for live streams. Um, B, you always get a race on it whenever, and no other services is, is that populated. Um, and it, can, it, it, it is entertaining. That's all you need to say. You don't need to, like, make up some bollocks about it being affordable. When it's so objectively relative to other stuff in sim racing or in gaming, it is more expensive. Get a real job. <laughs> I mean, for me, I make more. If I live stream my racing, I make a lot more money from live streams than I do if I play AC. That's another reason why a lot of people live stream my racing. You make more money because people playing i racing typically have more disposable income. And there's more people playing i racing, so you, so it's a more profitable thing, which is another big motivation for why people will often play i racing as opposed to other simulators. It's almost as if a lot of people choose what they do based off how much money it makes, uh, on top of what they enjoy as well. Don't get me wrong, but you know, <laughs> that's casually ignored. We watch because you crash and blame the... Yeah, but it's perfectly valid to blame the tyres when you crash in a sim where the tyres don't work like tyres. I don't know why that is like... I don't know why that's a surprise to some people, right? If you are playing a video game and that video game doesn't do something that's very basically done in other video games, you would expect the person playing that video game to complain about that component when it happens. <laughs> I know you're just joking, but... Whoa! Bollocks! Oh, dead. Like, if I crash because of the curbing in AC, you would expect me to crack, complain about the curbing. If you're playing... Um, what was it? What games had, like, stupid shit in them? Oh, Half-Life 1 and you do a save game by accident because you pushed the wrong F key. It's almost as if, if someone has been sim racing for like 15, 20 years, it's almost as if they can identify when it's weirdo tyre or physics issues causing an accident versus when they do something specifically, uh, like they push themselves or do something that's, you know, really pushing the limit and they, they've run out of talent. I just, I really don't understand why why those people that are like, oh, you can't blame my racing's time model for when you crash, or you can't blame my racing's net code for when you crash. It's like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, it's such an absurd requirement. Oh, you can't blame the Tory government for the lack of d uh, dentists or the lack of healthcare provision. You only blame you only blame the uh, Tories when you can't find a dentist. You don't blame them when you're not. Using... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like when else are you going to blame something? Okay, let's go. Oh dear. I actually find, I think it's interesting how uh, cucked <laughs> fanboys of games are when they are completely oblivious to the video game that they play issues and then they just they blame themselves for stuff that's clearly issues with the video game.
Where do, where do you find the line of it's not me, it's the video game? If you're playing a, a, a game that's specifically trying to be something, like a simulator, and then that game do, operates in a way that's completely different to every other simulator, then it's pretty reasonable to be like, oh, that's a bit weird, or to, it's pretty reasonable for that to catch you out. So, like, if you're playing the old Microsoft Flight Sim, <laughs> and the, you're, you're trying to land in the, you know, like, Microsoft Flight Sim, uh, what was it, like, 10 or whatever, the one before 2020, and you're trying to land light aircraft, and they don't stall appropriately, you it makes perfect sense to blame the simulator because you have to do like you have to land in a really weird way um when you play war thunder and it has totally arbitrary uh, flight dynamics it makes total sense to be like oh that's really catching me out especially when you're playing on the sim mode of it uh, compared to when you play on dcs it's really natural it makes sense to be like oh that's a bit weird you know um when eye racing gives you completely random damage where you can have a car land on your head and you get no damage and then you can have a car fart on you and you and you've got a meatball it's totally reasonable for someone to go <laughs> that shit like there's nothing you can do <laughs> like it's a place like oh well okay pointing it out i'm not i'm not saying like if you oh it's it's perfectly healthy to vent uh, so like let's say you're walking and uh, you've brought like appropriate equipment and everything and the with weather is terrible and you're cold it's perfectly reasonable for you to go oh that's a bit shit and make a joke out of it or whatever or point out that oh it's raining <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that it's just being honest Uh, the lack of force feedback. Yeah, there should be there should be uh, force feedback in all sims, flight sims. No, I I, I have a force feedback joystick here, but it, the problem is it costs one and a half grand to buy, <laughs> and then you have to use telemetry to drive the force feedback. If you don't like the rain why do you go out playing it no because you you might not like the rain all the time but you might not mind rain in general you know it's, it's the problem isn't like it's normal to point out something the thing the thing that's weird is when people d dismiss reality in order to maintain their illusion as i say it's like when a religious person starts making up shit about oh the Bible tells me that you shouldn't do this, or that, that you sh we, we're going to make all this governmental policy based off this book. And it's like, but you you just it's, you just have faith, and you can do what you want with that. But you can't use that to justify affecting other people's lives. It's fine for you to do whatever you do with your life based off that. But at the point, even for like me or anyone, whatever your religion or non-religion. The point is, if you're going to, like, say s something to other people to do stuff, you need to have a good reason behind it. And it being written in a book from thousands of years ago, in and of itself, is not a good reason. No, we're not really talking about tires. We're talk we're, <laughs> we're just it's just the uh, we were talking about the pricing of stuff or like I was just bringing up the fact that people could ju they don't need to like defend the price of things. You know, they just be honest. 
Now, if I'm like a 4090 is a very expensive graphics card, but you know what? For some people, um, well, first of all, there's loads of business scenarios where it makes perfect sense, financial sense as well. And uh, yeah, someone might just decide that they really like to run games on the highest possible graphics settings and they're perfectly happy to then buy what is like that you that's they can't use your, your happiness of buying that as a justification for nvidia having really expensive graphics cards but it doesn't mean that you yourself can't just be honestly buying something that's overpriced and still enjoy it and you don't need to then go wow you know um graphics cards cheaper than buying a car <laughs> to make any sense Yeah, so and, and then and then someone brought up me the me complaining about stuff um, at the point of crashing as a, as a meme. But then the point to that is is that you're gonna complain about physics in a in a physics game when the physics break, which is gonna be when that's why you crash, right? When you complain about it. <laughs> like right, when we're flying the glider in Microsoft Flight Sim. And the uh, the ridge lift doesn't work properly at all times, and it's not synchronised. So uh, over network, so you could be doing a formation flight with other people, and sometimes um, one person gets lift and the other person doesn't, or it doesn't simulate uh, the, the the lift from the ground being heated and where the cloud positioning isn't correct for where the lift should be. So it's perfectly normal if you can't get lift in Microsoft Flight Simulator despite having a big fluffy cloud in the perfect location or you're on a ridge where you know there's wind hitting it. It makes sense that for you to then complain going, oh, this is a bit shit that I'm not getting lift in my glider. <laughs> it's when you would point it out is when you're not getting lift. It's not someone going, oh, I'm shit at gliding. I can't find the lift. <laughs> Is someone just going, oh, I've noticed that it's not working when it should. This isn't a religious channel. This is a religion, force feedback religion. Your pilot friend said Microsoft Flight Simulator shit. Aspects of it are shit. Uh, the, some aspects are quite good, some aspects are shit. It has some pretty big holes in it. Uh, hopefully the next flight sim they improve. It's, it depends on the the planes and things as well. But yeah, it, it was just really weird. What uh, Matt Malone's an awesome streamer, guys. You should watch him. It was just really weird. The pricing of iRacing came up, and there was at least fifty comments, all of which were. Ab like absurd <laughs> oh, a cup of coffee is cheaper <laughs> I did go-karting and it cost way more oh, oh shit whoa <laughs> uh, Dan I've, I've flown a Cessna it's exactly the same as uh, I'd say it was closer to X-Plane 11 than Flight Sim 2020 but uh, it's still different flying a plane but yeah, uh, the, the difficult part of flying a real plane is all the air communication with air traffic control and awareness and having a good sense for, you know, knowing all the stuff about how all the dials and everything operate and making sure fuel levels and uh, uh, understanding weather is quite complicated, like all the, you know, planning, all that kind of stuff. Like an air, a, a, most aeroplanes are designed to be very easy to fly. They're, like, they're designed to be like cars in the sky. <laughs> the, the skill of flying is not like the uh, balancing of the aircraft. There is a skill to that, but it's mostly it's procedural stuff. Yeah, procedures, are, that's the complicated part. Like an absolute Muppet could fly a Cessna and, and land it, to be honest. You, you get people that have absolutely zero intuition on how to fly, being able to fly. But yeah, if the weather conditions changed dr drastically, visibility changed, 
um, air traffic controls talking to you or like a fault happens on the plane and then you need to know about like altitude, the maintaining velocity, keeping awareness of where you could possibly land. Um, all that there's just a whole list of stuff. So it's just aware. It's like awareness. It's like you know, if you're driving a road car, you're like looking around all the time. It's not when you're driving a road car, you're not like balancing the car at the limit. <laughs> the the point of driving a road car is. Oh, there's another vehicle pulling out over there. They're going to do something stupid. Oh, there's a pedestrian over there. Are oh, they going to walk into the road? Oh, there's a there's a, a dog tugging on someone's lead. Oh, there's a child kicking a football. Oh, that tree looks like it could fall on the road. Uh, do, do you know what I mean? That, that's the that's the the thing that you're doing in a plane, but on, in three dimensions with weather. That's true. Well, you, you're just on another level. <laughs> Driving to work on the limit. Most aircraft accidents are from, like, really stupid shit as well. Like, whoa! <laughs> like, uh pilots turning too aggressively when they're too low, planes being overburdened with too much luggage, uh, running out of fuel, flying into bad weather, maintenance issues with an aircraft. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, Neil, well... The, I think I have issues with being too, like, hyper-aware of stuff in those sort of situations. <laughs> but I don't trust other people at all. But the thing is, what happens is with people that drive a lot or do anything a lot, they internalise that awareness. So they will still be aware of a lot of things. They're just not consciously thinking about it. Which sim has the best AI? Uh, iRacing has really good AI, but then I think the physics are really bad. But the AI is really good. Um, it, actually, the, the rain's broken the AI, from what I understand. Um, Automobilista has quite good AI, but they broke it with an update. Um, R Factor 2 AI can be good at times. Um, race Room AI can be surprisingly good at times as well, actually. None of them drive like people, though. <laughs> uh, there's no AI in any game that really drives like people. They they all drive like AI in different ways. Like you, when before a few updates ago, AMS two actually had quite good AI for in many ways. Yeah, the problem is if you're a moderately skilled sim racer or driver, you very quickly learn the shortcomings of the AI, and then the AI will basically, they all drive in the same way. So th this is one of the nice things with online racing, is different people tend to have different flaws in how they're good and bad at driving, or, you know, the different degrees of aggression, different ways of positioning the car, different reactions to pressure all that kind of stuff and so it's like poker it's, again using poker as an analogy when you play against ai poker players obviously they can just play perfectly but like let's say you put ai poker players uh, let's say you're playing that valve uh, poker game or like some some like ai single player poker game it's just very obvious the patterns that they that, that occur Whereas when you're playing poker against real people, you can really sort of understand p people's poker personalities. That's, that's probably like one of the biggest skills in poker is actually working out how people tend to respond to different like situations in the game. But yeah, that's a, that's a fun thing we... It's a bit lacking even in iRacing because you can only really drive in a very singular way in iRacing. It's a bit lacking, but 
it is a nice thing in sims where you do come across uh, drivers that are good that understand the limitations of the sim but then also you, you can see how they drive differently it's, it's good fun problem with ms2 is the, the physics are not very good like it's very floaty it's very slow motion i think ms2 is great for people learning like that are new to sim racing but it's very like imprecise and overly slidey in in how you drive everything in that game it's like everything's on worn out road tires or something really weird VR helps make it feel a bit tighter, but... Yeah, when, when, they're, when the AI works in AMS2, it's really good. Uh, the, the good thing with a, uh, the AI in AMS2 is that when they drive into you, they don't impart full momentum into you so so it means that the ai can be more aggressive without accidentally wrecking your race whereas in a lot of sims when ai hits your car it's like you're being driven into by a tank <laughs> so by by project cars 2 and automobilista 2 having ai that's can hit you without wrecking you it means the ai can just be a lot more aggressive which then makes it more fun to race against I think force has got better force feedback than Gran Turismo, to be honest. Like, Gran Turismo, its force feedback is clipping all the time. If you're on, like, any of the racing tyres, the force feedback's outright broken, and for some reason people don't bring it up, they don't mention it. I think they just don't know any better. The road tyres are less worse, but even then there's, there's just a real lack of uh, depth. <laughs> there's a lack of depth to the physics as well. It's, a, it's just super bland. Forza, I think, is just a bit vague and slidey. But there's a little bit of range to it. Gran Turismo is fantastic on a gamepad, though. No, no, I've, I've spent a long time messing around with Gran Turismo and Forza Force Feedback. Gran Turismo Force Feedback is outright, is clipping most of the time. It's completely bollocks. It's just it, people don't notice that are used to um, people that like really strong self-aligning and vibrations don't notice when force feedback is completely broken like ACC, Gran Turismo 7. They don't notice because to them, they're like, oh, it's really strong, heavy, detailed force feedback. <laughs> it's just self-aligning and vibrations. Well, I've played GT7 on CSL DD, T300, uh, Logitech wheels. The force feedback has inherent clipping built into it. It's knackered. I've driven it on other people's rigs as well. And so I can guarantee you it's messed up. Well, you can disagree, but I know I'm right, so, <laughs> so you know.
I have a PS5 behind me with this ESL DD on it. I went through every single setting. Uh, even the, uh, funnily enough, the haptic triggers are also bugged on GT7 as well. So, you know, on the PlayStation controller. No, it's not a priority for GT. Their priority is gamepad, just general gamepad input, because that's how like that's how ninety five percent of the people playing it are, are playing it. Also, like, also the wheel rim, <laughs> the Gran Turismo wheel rim on both the Thrustmaster, uh, you know, the Thrustmaster, um, it was like a T three hundred but Gran Turismo edition, and then the Fanatec Gran Turismo wheel rim is so absurdly small which is ridiculous given that Gran Turismo is either it's mostly GT cars or road cars so why have they got a 270 millimeter wheel like what were they thinking like it makes no sense at all <laughs> it's like they're absolute like it, go, it shows you they haven't like it just makes no sense Also, Gran Turismo has insane latency built into it and uh, V-Sync that's locked on. But the uh, the actual driving with the gamepad, how the analog sticks work is really, really good. And the piezoelectric uh, rumble in Gran Turismo is really, really good. Yeah, AC1 is like on an another level to force feedback to any other title. For, for dynamic range of forces at the limit and detail and information about what the car's doing. If, if, you, if you were to play like Gran Turismo and then AC and come to the conclusion that Gran Turismo has more detailed force feedback, the only conclusion I could come to is that you, you've set your wheel up totally wrong. Yeah. No, it's not about the cars being heavy. There's just no, there's no dynamic range to the force feedback. It's, it's as bad, it's as bad as ACC. It, it probably worse than ACC, to be honest. Uh, ACC has much better force feedback for suspension, compression, track details. It has less latency than GT7. But ACC still lacks dynamic range once, I don't, once you've compressed the tyres. I don't like ACC, but I do like the normalist. But that is amazing. So it's probably one of the... Probably one of the... Well, one of the or not the best simulation to practice. Like, uh, even F1 or GT mods. They're really, it's really good. But if you, if you set the late, the newest Forza, if you... It doesn't help that Forza has completely arbitrary <laughs> force feedback settings. But if you spend, I think I, I can't, I can't remember what we did. We spent like ten hours messing around with force feedback. If you dick around with the force feedback in the latest Forza, you can get it. So you get, you're getting more usable information and detail than you're getting Gran Turismo. I mean, it's still a bit arbitrary and a bit weird, but. Yeah, but I don't know what you're doing on your wheel, Palookan. Yeah, well, you don't need to do anything on the software side in AC, but I, I don't know what's going on for you to... I, I can't help you, I don't know. <laughs> no, you don't put minimum force feedback on. Why are you doing that? Are you using a DD wheel? What wheel are you using? If you So... Min force feedback is bugged in most games and with most wheels. If you if you put min force feedback on, you end up with the dead zone in the centre of the force feedback because the wheel basically just doesn't get anything. In, it, like I don't know why it, it shouldn't do that. It, what min force feedback should do is it should be that uh, the game starts out putting force feedback at a higher level uh, as its start point. 
but for some reason with a lot of wheels if you set min force feedback in arc, arc g motor base games ac a whole bunch of stuff r factor 2 what you'll get with the dd wheel is you won't get any force feedback in the very center why are you putting min force on that doesn't make any sense at all Uh, most games should ignore spring effect because it's an old direct uh, direct input uh, part of force feedback that most sims don't bother using at all. No, so John, it, it, if so, the point of min force was for wheels like a G twenty five. Even then, it didn't work properly. So I don't know what's going on with people, but like the point of it is that with some wheels, the motors in those wheels would not receive a signal to push the wheel left or right until that signal passed a certain threshold. So the idea of min force is, is that the game starts putting force feedback out at a higher threshold so the wheel can then detect it and it should get rid of a dead zone but i had a g25 i've got a g293 i had a t300 tsp racer t500 uh csl fanatec csl elite wheel moza r12 simucube uh osw <laughs> fanatec podium uh csl dd and what else i can't even remember in no scenario have I ever used min force feedback because it always did like weird shit to the force feedback. Oh, the G25 had a built-in dead zone to it, but that was built into the hardware to stop the wheel from uh, bouncing off the two motors because it uses two motors rather than just one. It doesn't use a belt, and so it, it needs like a point in the middle so the motor so the wheels just doesn't go like crazy when the two wheels play against each other yeah all you need is vibration <laughs> i don't know what's going on in people's heads with force feedback like I, I also have a novent falcon and a force feedback joystick never have i used any equivalent of minimum force feedback for those devices like you what you want is like just um to be able to get the the so a given motor will have a certain newton meter output and you want to line up the game with the capacity of the device that you've got so that you can feel what's going on so you can feel the uh, the range of force from the game with your device okay, let's go. uh yeah well the the so um Rebby, there could there are manufacturing differences in the different wheels as well so you might not notice it at a certain point as well also if you use if you put lots of damper or certain amounts of damper or other filters on wheels then you won't notice more subtle other things that are occurring so yeah you say that utrid under turn but from my experience it isn't necessarily but i could see why it could be in theory but i've just never had that ex that's never been a uh, you know arguably you'd be better off rather than using a min force you'd be better off running higher force feedback in the game and then lower on your wheel so it's not clipping but it's magnifying the the overall force feedback anyway but yeah t300 g g25s are so subtle compared to dd wheels you know they have their own they have their own thing would i recommend using iffb it depends what you what you're doing um if your goal is to be really good at i racing you're better off just memorizing how to drive like a robot um irffb is great for formula cars to be able to feel the point at where the back will like uh, go over the limit when you're on the throttle through sustained corners uh but you don't really need like for the uh 
like GT3 cars and slower cars, it, it doesn't really make much difference using IFFB. Like you can ju- just memorize how to drive iRacing. When the when you actually properly go over the limit in iRacing, you just stamp on the accelerator and brake because it's better than you, you can't drive over the limit in iRacing. So you just have to you, you need to drive iRacing like a bobsled. <laughs> just how you drive it. Yeah, you can't get ACC feels shit on everything, so I won't worry about it. Uh, all right. In terms of AC clipping, it will depend from car to car. Well, you can disagree about ACC, but you'd be wrong. It has no dynamic range. Unreal Engine is broken. It's it just has suspension feel. <laughs> you can say you disagree, but you're just, you're just wrong. I'm afraid. Um, ACC's force feedback has no dynamics to it. Uh, right. Uh, why would it be to blame because I, th- I think that Unreal internally clips force feedback Every Unreal game has weird force feedback, so maybe it's not inherent to everything, but there's a weird dampened feeling to every single driving game that uses Unreal. Range Sport, Kartcraft, ACC, all of them have a sort of weird dampened aspect to them. It could just be chance. But I definitely think there's something weird going on with Unreal. Well, I've, I've looked at ways that you could graph the force feedback from games, but there's not really much you can do. Because you'd really, you'd really want it at, at the uh, force feedback wheel. And then also, you have a lot, there's a lot of noise. So, as I say, a- ACC, for example, the uh, suspension compression, which is a range of force, is perfectly fine. Uh, track bumps, loads of stuff, is perfectly fine. And there's visualizers on some of the wheels, but it's, they're not high enough resolution. And then isolating, isolating what is a variation in a sustained force from a specific thing versus another thing causing it. So as, as I say, like the the suspension compression causing wheel a wheel to get lighter and heavier um, is going to be difficult to isolate from the wheel getting lighter and heavier from tire grip. Also, I feel like there's some weird shit with ACC physics, to be honest. And you notice it with the type of slides that the cars get stuck in. 
the, the physics seem to lack range as well, which is probably what the force feedback's reflecting. I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't like ACC, but I do like the normalist. That is amazing. So it's probably one of the probably one of the well, one of the or not the best simulation to practice. Like uh, even it's still one, ongoing. GG mod never ends. Really, it's really good. Not really an argument it's uh i mean you know and there's few things that i'll be like i'll, I'll stake uh, my sort of knowledge on but like the end output of force feedback as someone that owns 10 plus force feedback wheels has been an absurd force feedback hobbyist since the 2000s um owns multiple force feedback joysticks <laughs> spends literal days dicking around with force feedback when the new game comes out or i'm using a new piece of equipment i honestly don't think anybody else spends that amount of time messing with stuff or has that amount of equipment to be able to say with the same degree of clarity what the quantitative differences are you know like I don't think any. I don't think there's any other people that have a force feedback joy. There's only like four people in the UK uh, ha that have force feedback joysticks, uh, like n the new ones. So I don't think many people bought Novant Falcons. <laughs> Also, I know for sure the type of stuff that people latch on to. And also, a lot of people get used to one type of force feedback and then they associate that with being good force feedback. And then that's where it stops at. They don't... They're not thinking about it in terms of how is it different? How does it affect things? why is something good at a certain thing and worse at another thing or how does it affect the experience and in what ways um or how do you get the most out of specific types of hardware and you know the, all these things Well, right, so the GT2 cars in ACC which seemed pretty fun to me. I drove them a little bit. I got the uh, Nordschleifer update, played it for about an hour, two hours or something. The actual general GT2 cars seemed good. Um, but again, just utterly dull to drive because there's no feel, uh, no dynamics to it. It's like the car's sliding around and moving around nicely. Little, not as nicely as AC, but like I, I actually prefer the peakiness. <laughs> Funnily enough, I I actually prefer how I prefer more abrupt tires because you get to the limit faster. So for me personally, I like that snappiness. Um, so in a sense, I would actually prefer ACC physics in in many ways. Like. I really don't like how sloppy iRacing's tyres are at the limit. They, they, they're they not peaky. It's actually really gets really sluggy uh, as they warm up. That You end up with this really like dull slow motion slide. So the irony is ACC is actually in my preference. So uh, like a good example in, in AC1, um, what's that RSS... Um, G is it GP2 car, the F2 car, the free one, Formula F2 or whatever, that is like super, super unforgiving and super, super peaky, relatively speaking. Maybe the time model is the same, but like how it handles, how it operates. I really like that. <laughs> I, 
I like snappy cars. Um, yeah, like I, there's no way if you knew what you, if someone knows what they're talking about, I there's no way that you could play AMS one and AC, then play ACC and come to the conclusion that ACC has doesn't have some kind of bizarre fundamental issue to both its input and its force feedback like you just you just couldn't like you'd be like you'd be like well it handles how it handles you might like that you might like strong force feedback you might like uh the suspension compression feel you might like the um the rumble and the that kind of stuff the po that sort of uh abruptness of it you might like that but you'd have to be like yeah it, it doesn't have the dynamic range for where the limit is Even iRacing has more range to the force feedback <laughs> than ACC. Uh. Also, if anyone's ever been in a real car, the range of forces that you feel is really like nuanced. It's not abrupt, it's not like binary. Even in a go kart, it's still there's like a lot of like dynamic range to how you experience g forces. It's not just a constant set force. And that, so the the issue with curbs in AC, supposedly, is to do with uh, having a single point for the um for the tires mm. and what happens is the tire is either on the curb or not on the curb and it's like a binary condition and i think when you combine that oh, there we go when you combine that with the stiff suspension um the car basically goes from being stable going around the corner to instantaneously one of the wheels is lifted up from the curbing i think that's what causes the issue um whereas in reality and when you've got multiple ray ray uh, casting for tires or multiple points for where the tire contacts a road in reality uh a tire doesn't a hundred percent suddenly be on the curb or a hundred percent suddenly be on the surface that's the really low grip in in reality a tire is like half on a curb and half on the road or gradually moves across to it do you know what I mean? it's not it's not an instant transition so i think that's one of the that's why the curbing in ac causes the issue but some aspects of the curbing problem in ac1 aren't necessarily unrealistic uh, again i know people that drive race cars and I was having this conversation with them and they were pointing out that there's loads of scenarios in real life where a totally normal piece of curbing in certain scenarios when you happen to put if you're on the throttle and you happen to go on it the, the car can just spin from it in perfect conditions so <laughs> it's not entirely it's not completely wrong all the time um fast boy it depends on the car that you're driving in ac and the curbing and the type of curbing as well so um certain radius corners um and also so so this is the other thing i racing ha didn't model curbing for ages so there's loads of curbs that you can drive on in i racing you're like oh i racing does it better and it, it, it might do it better don't don't get me wrong but a lot of the curbs are just as flat as the road, so the game just treats it the same. Um, uh, so we're like in the the curbing that causes issues in I in AC uh, on Spa after the after Eau Rouge when you're on that the right the the right and left I can't remember the corner names 
you can just really slightly clip the kerbin on the right and the car will just lose it and it doesn't make any sense because that tire's not even loaded up at all uh, also like the sustained uh, long corners sometimes you can just clip a kerb on the inside and the car just loses it um as I say, it depends how stiff the car is in in AC or some things. No, I know. I, I'm, that's what I'm saying, fast boy. But I'm, th there's multiple. Th it's not binary. <laughs> this is a, it's not a binary thing. There's scenarios where the curbing, as I think, I mean, Kunos have said this as well. There's specific issues that arise from having a single contact point on the tire, and it makes sense that that would cause abrupt situations that would not be. That are going to affect physics in weird ways but there's also curbing that would spin you in real life especially if you had a super stiff setup or you drive it in a certain way and you know so there's a mixture of stuff but i think it's pretty safe to say that there are certain issues with some curbing and kunos has never really been that good at suspension i don't think if, if you were to say well project cars 2 has that whole tugging you off the road thing and the curbing would tug you off the road <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Right. But it's, it's pretty reasonable to say that you can't attack curbs in AC with a lot of the cars how you might naturally attack them in other simulators, at least, and probably in real life. And also, it's pretty reasonable to say that having a single point for generating the behavior of the tire it's probably not going to work as realistically as having multiple points as it's going to be more analogous to how a real tire operates yeah no i i'm it, there's um where's there's another one uh, there, there's a whole bunch of them in real life that people will tell you if you go if you do like if you're at a track day or you know people that have spun there they'll be like oh do not drive on this curb. well actually it's like the nordschleifer isn't it it's like um I mean, this is different from the curbing issue but you know the after the long straight and uh the right hander and then you go up the hill and you turn left it's like you sort of go right a bit and then up and there's a bit of curbing on the left before the right hander and the left and the right <laughs> it, at times drivers have been able to ride over that curb totally fine and then they change the track a little bit and now we like supposedly would totally wreck your suspension or mess up the car whatever so that's that's a uh, track super specific no it's not youtube corner it's it's like in sector one i think but that's like a super specific thing that you would get from knowing a track intimately Also, the fact is, basically, when you need a car to grip and not spin, that is when it will spin. It's by design. It's like God. It's, it's not even Sims or physics. This is in real life as well. When you need something to work for you, um, reality will make it so that it doesn't work when you need it to work. That is just how it is. Oh, you're doing some live event with computers. Uh, it's going to break just before you go live, obviously. Um, you need to get a train somewhere. Trains are delayed. You need, you've got to get a plane at a certain time. Oh, cancelled. It's never been cancelled before, that plane. Cancelled. Oh, the one time you need, there's a solar eclipse. Oh, that'd be nice to see. Cloudy. That's, <laughs> that's the real issue. If God actually exists, he's a dickhead. That's the real issue. <laughs> that's the big, the big, that's the real problem. We can break, break, blame Sims and all this other stuff, but honestly, reality is just an arse. Oh, Highland Short. Here we go. How far are we? Let's let's update this. Eighty-seven. We're almost in the top ninety here. Welcome to everyone that's watching on YouTube. Appreciate all the viewers. I, I put my face on the thumbnail, and we're getting more viewers. I'm a bit worried. This is how YouTube works. It's all about putting a stupid face on the thumbnail. Bloody hell! I I hate everyone. I hate you all. If if you if you clicked on the YouTube because of my face on the thumbnail. 
I, I hope you fall down your stairs. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Bloody hell. Look at that, it's a nice uh, turret. Looks very moist. Did you know that AC1 is DirectX 11? It seems crazy to me. I wouldn't have thought it was. Like, Half-Life 2 was DirectX 9, and that brought, like, uh, DirectX 9 could do normal maps, uh, distorted, like, transparencies, uh, cube map reflections... Uh, bump maps now may maybe DirectX were normal maps DirectX 10 hang on oh no you've got normal maps in it what's the other one that's uh, more advanced than a normal map like um, with Z depth in it uh, Perfect Dark was like one of the first games that on the Xbox 360 that did it um, not a normal map what's it called like a de the depth map that's really clever what what features did DirectX 10 bring? It did ge geometry shader, particle systems, tessellation, dynamic procedural geometry. Oh, maybe it was in direct text. Uh, what type of mapping could DX9 do? What's di direct X? It's the um, like uh, the stuff built into graphics cards, effectively. Well, how do you, how do you explain that? So you know like stuff like how shadows work, lighting, um, texture, uh, all, all like the sort of visual graphical stuff that's then that a graphics card can then do on the graphics card basically uses DirectX. Uh, shaders, basically. Yeah, I think it's... Graphic APIs. It's, it's stuff that allows the game to communicate with the graphics card to do advanced visual graphics. Don't know if that's a good explanation. What was it called? Like, Z depth map? So you have normal map. You have you have uh, like a, a bump map, which is like bumps, and if you move a virtual light around that, it's like the bumps look like they're casting shadows on themselves, like a basically embossing in Photoshop. Then you have normal maps, which are, how why is a normal map even more advanced than a bump map? I mean, a normal map is a type of bump map. <laughs> displacement maps, that's it. It must be a displacement map I'm talking about. So a displacement map physically deforms the surface. Oh, so a bump map doesn't have directionality in it, but a, a, a normal map does. Oh, yeah, based off the normal. But you, a bump map still changes dynamically when you move a light around it it's just a bit limited but why okay I used to use ZBrush it was awesome 
and I could bake uh, like depth into stuff. It's crazy. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so a uh, a bump map just just has height information, whereas a normal map also encodes the surface normal, i.e., the the direction that the surface is facing, rather than height information. Each pixel in a normal map stores three component vectors x, y, and z. When applied to a 3D model, normal maps perturb the surface of the normals of the model, altering how the light interacts with the surface. Yeah. Anyway, normal maps are supported in DirectX 10. Yeah. It's just weird that AC's DirectX 11. <laughs> um, I, I would say once once we pass like DirectX 10, you can basically make photo real looking games. So like, um, what's that? What are DirectX 10 games? Um, Yeah, Crisis. Crisis 2007 looked looks still looks amazing. Yeah, so like but graphics have not. I mean, stuff like uh, lighting and all the that you know, they have improved, but. Yeah, that's it. Like, direct the jump from Direct X seven to eight was huge, and then to nine, and then after ten, it's like, well, you can do reflections, you can do like complex transparencies, you can do normal maps, you can do depth maps. Um, yeah. Whereas you really know, so before Half Life Two came out, and they were showing demos of Half Life Two, like just having dynamically reflective surfaces or like real time shadows was like a really impressively big thing compared to DirectX 7 where everything was either flat or like super baked in. Yeah, there hasn't been a really impressive graphics demo, has there, for ages? Nothing will beat uh, the uh, Elite Atari ST graphics demo. <laughs> uh, my favourite shadow. I mean, I can't. You can't beat like a shadow map, can you? A, a ten eight a <laughs> five twelve by five twelve shadow map. Oh. Oh yeah, that, I think that, I think you're right about DirectX twelve. Yeah. Well, fast boy, what you can do is you can have something called a VR headset and then it feels like you're actually inside of the game and then everything infinitely is like a billion times more graphical, uh, advanced looking because it's like you're in the game. But what happens is there's a whole load of people that have never used a VR headset and so they don't realise and so companies still pursue 2D graphics by putting shit in the games all over the place as a way to go we're super advanced look at the graphics <laughs> or, or or you have things like IMAX cinemas and cinemas where they go oh look how big our screen is it's so immersive and it's like yeah but it's a 2D screen mate <laughs> it's, it's, it's a screen it, it's not going to be as immersive as VR so you can't really sell it on immersion you can sell it on it being comfortable or something but not on immersion but we've got a big screen with surround sound full of people in a room all coughing. Oh, okay, that sounds good. 
VR is incredible. Like, VR is so ridiculously incredible. <laughs> and, and, like, the problem is, unless you've used a VR headset, you don't know. It's like good force feedback. Unless you've used a good force feedback wheel, you just don't know. Um, isn't VR fundamentally 2D? Uh, no, because you have stereoscopy from, like, uh, but each eye is receiving a different view, so that's one form of 3D stereoscopy. You also have head movement tracking, which is like, which is, which gives you parallax 3D. Uh, so you have two components of depth perception that humans use. It's lacking, uh, dynamic convergence uh, and it's also lacking proper uh, foveated uh, tracking which will come with time but it's got like two of the f three or four main uh, specific ways humans perceive 3D as opposed to like a 3D monitor that only has parallax I had pa uh, only, only has um, stereoscopy sorry No, it's Highland Short, isn't it? <laughs> Ten laps. Let's hope the AI is not too quick. What I think is really weird with VR is the reluctance to allow people to use VR headsets to play otherwise 2D games uh, like for that to be supported so for example like I, there's that mod that Unreal thing that allows you to play Unreal games in VR but like there's no some games are obviously entirely designed around 2D so the assets have holes in them and uh, you know there, there's some things where they're not they don't work right fine but there's lots of 2d games that could just have vr support and th this happened in the when vr first came out you just play loads of games that were originally 2d games and they're bloody amazing in vr playing with the mouse and keyboard and uh for some reason it's like oh no can't have that i'd love to play hell let loose in vr or you know with the mouse and keyboard, like loads of stuff it's just fun with a VR headset. It's, it's even better in some ways. Yeah, Half-Life Alex is incredible. So good. Have you played it on a Quest 3? That is actually... Because the first... I played Half-Life Alex on the Valve Index. And then I played it. I, I played it more recently on the Quest Three, and it's like the graphics are incredible. <laughs> Don't notice how good the graphics are on the Valve Index. I spent like half an hour just looking around the room, <laughs> just like going, "Oh, that's a nice bit of building. That's a nice bench. That's nice." The problem with a lot of VR games is they try too hard to make them VR games and they're like, oh, you've got to move your hands all over the place. Oh, you have to pick all these things up. Oh, you have to reload the gun. It's like, well, what if I just want to play in 2D, like, a, like chilled out, sat down, but I want, it in, I want to be able to look around and I want it to look 3D in VR. It's like, why can't I do that? Like, 
There's uh, there's a really good uh, dolphin emulator has VR support, and there's so many good GameCube games that are fantastic in VR. Yeah, Sky Skyrim is great in VR, with uh, especially with bow and arrow. Yeah, NVIDIA GTX, maybe one day we'll be able to get one of those super new GTX graphics cards. I wonder I wonder if they will be good enough for, for AC. I wonder if they'll make the game run faster. Did any of you guys in chat buy a PhysX card? <laughs> when I was at university, I knew someone that bought one. <laughs> All they could play was that tech demo. There's like a weird FPS game with like flags everywhere because nothing used it. Nothing used PhysX apart from the flags. Oh, look, you can rip this flag and it runs in real time. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that was worth £150. <laughs> what else are you going to use it for? Oh, I don't know. They just integrated it into the graphics cards eventually. That was pretty funny. That would that lasted for like two years, but then they were like, "Oh yeah, should just put it in the graphics cards." Physics. Oh guys, talk about physics. Click the like button. We're on 150. Maybe we, maybe we can get to 200 likes. We've had pretty good viewership today on YouTube, not on Twitch. Twitch hates AC. Oh, actually, that's really interesting. Uh, ah, lol. <laughs> In the wall you go. Um, I was looking at uh, games on Twitch to see what the viewer numbers were. Uh, for like, so, so on your Twitch dashboard, you can see what the average number of watchers are watch watching games and the number of people streaming the games. Um. So, like, a streamer can go, oh, look, there's there's a lot of people watching this, but not many people streaming it. So it's a way for you to work out what might be a good game to stream. It doesn't quite work like that. That's the point of it, but it doesn't work like that. But anyway, it's quite interesting, looking at The Sims, that um, AC1 has more viewers on Twitch than ACC. Um I race so basically the popularity of racing games in terms of viewership on Twitch is AC uh, I racing number one. This is out Sims. I racing, then AC one, then ACC. <laughs> and LMU has like twelve people. <laughs> uh, R2 is like ten or something. Uh, oh dear, yeah. Uh, I think Euro. I didn't look at Euro Truck Sim. I think that's quite high as well. But, but then I was like, oh, I wonder what popular games are like. And, uh, like, Fortnite was like 200,000 people. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah, so the thing with AC1 is there's loads of people. There's a lot of people streaming it, but a lot of people streaming it with, like, two viewers whilst they just do drifting. Uh, whereas iRacing actually doesn't have that many people streaming it, weirdly. But I iRacing has quite a lot of viewers, but not many people streaming it. Um, and v there's a few people on iRacing that get good views. Like there's, there's only like five people on iRacing that get over 500 viewers at a time. And then there's like 10 people that get over 200 viewers or over 100 viewers. 
It's crazy how it dis how it distributes. It's, it's really bizarre. Like, it shows you how stupid streaming is. I don't know if you can see that data without a Twitch account, or like unless you're a streamer, you should you should be able to see it on all all Twitch accounts. It's just quite interesting. It's another so it's different from. It's interesting to look at as another metric, uh, separate to like play accounts, because what you can get from the Twitch viewership, for, first of all, it's limited. Like Twitch has its own culture, and uh, so some games are actually. Like ACC, for example, gets a lot better viewership on YouTube than it does Twitch. But, um, yeah, but uh, it's interesting within Twitch, just as a data point, to be like, oh, how how generally active is a game from a viewership perspective? But, yeah, a a both AC1 and ACC get much better viewership on YouTube than Twitch. And there's a whole bunch of games like that. I think YouTube YouTube has a wider audience and also skews older, whereas Twitch skews younger. There's not a chatting bollocks. <laughs> uh, depends on the time of day. Yeah, weirdly, Mondays at uh, now. <laughs> no, Monday at 1pm uh, is a weird time zone where you get the most amount of viewers and the least amount of streamers. I, I didn't know on, on Twitch. Really weird. Uh, iRacing is the same. There's plenty of viewers below, uh, plenty of streamers below four viewers. Guess what? There's some of the ones who go to your chat to grief you. <laughs> most griefers are these people. Yeah, but if they watch my adverts... I I I I'm just, I'm really lucky that the sim racing industry isn't full of morons. Basically, I I was I was a little bit worried because I thought, oh shit, you don't know how dumb people are, you know, you don't know how stupid people are. But it turns out that pretty much all the companies in sim racing are actually not stupid people. So with a good sense of humour. <laughs> so you know that's fortunate, really. Right, here we go. We're doing. That was a nice, easy one. More Highlands, here we go. Exactly, only a moron can recognise another moron. <laughs> Morons are us. Right. I don't think Twitch is for hot tubs. Like, I'm not saying that's not a valid thing. I, like, there are people that do it. Look at this car, it's nice. Um, there are people that make good money out of being a thought and stuff. But I think it's actually quite a competitive space now. So unless you've already built yourself up as a thought, I think it's really quite a tricky thing to do now. Because there's, so, there's much more equality of men and women in the space. So there's probably an opportunity to be like a man thought, like, like an Andrew Tate. I need to build up muscles, and then uh, we can. I can just stream topless. I can project the sim onto my stomach, on my six pack, and I can drive. I can. I can drive like this. <laughs> the top G, top G force. Just wear a bikini. I can do that. That's within my skills. Top GM. Yeah, the foot foot cams for those weirdo foot fetish people. Uh, you know, you got to make money out of them. Make it stiff. Yeah, well, we've talked about this before. It is really weird how boring some of those thought streamers are. Um, 
I mean, I get, I understand it. I guess you're getting loads of money. You're kind of just like, oh, I'm doing it as a job. Uh, I might as well just sit here whilst people pay me money, whilst I shut, wave my bottom or whatever. So that you know, fine. Um, but it is, it is kind of. Uh, That's why ugly people are better. That's why I'm proud to be ugly because you you uh, you have to work. You can't just wave your bum. You have to you have to uh, come up with weird shit all the time. <laughs> it makes it more interesting. That's that's my uh, that's how I deal with it. Yeah, why would they do anything else? I don't know. Out of out of sheer boredom. Out of out of sheer boredom, that's that's why. Um, what would I do if I was a thought? I, I I would I would be a well good thought. I would be taking the piss out of all the viewers non-stop, and that would then I'd be so it'd be like a dominatrix type thought, and then, and then people would be like, oh, wow, she's got personality," because I'd be like mocking all the people that subscribe to me. But I do exactly what I do now, but I'd be hot. Okay, let's go. <laughs> It'd be exactly the same, but I'd be really hot. Ah. Oh. I wouldn't be a furry. It's too, they're too warm. The the fur suits are too warm. Complaining about tire models. Ah, oh, look at this car. Oh, it's got brake calipers. It's got actual brakes. Got actual understeer as well. Whoa! <laughs> this is a real car. Oh my goodness, we might need to make this rear a little bit. Did I open a rear diff? See, this is a proper race car. Where are you going? <laughs> the AI's struggling. That's how you know it's a good car. Oh, I don't think I'm making the corner. Oh, I am. Happy Christmas. Well, to be a furry, well, you, you just get a fursuit. It's not like you you could just you just put a fursuit on, right? Oh, they're all dead. No! <laughs> the AI! They're doing eye racing stuff. <laughs> oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's do this rear diff. Drive... Oh, here we go. It's a bit too open on the rear. Let's put it on 35. Oh, diff... Hang on. Diff coast goes up. Diff power's all right. Everything else is fine. Oh, did we change the height? Make it even lower. Lower it down. Lower it... Let's put it on the ground. I'll give it one. Full stiffness. Maximum lowness. Easy. Gurney flap. I flapped your gurney. Ah, oh, ow, ow. It's fine. Bloody hell, rear's still a bit loose. <laughs> Oh, no, we need... Oh, no. Oh, dear God. No, I need the rear to come out more. Okay. Rear ARB needs to be reduced. But the diff... 
can be open. And actually, we're going to give it some... Oh, it's already some maximum... Okay, give it some negative tail. That will stabilise it a bit when it steps out. Here we go. Okay, Ree's still loose. Bloody hell. Ah, oh, gearing probably needs to be longer. Where is he going? Ah! Oh! <laughs> this is going to be a long, a long one to do. We need to break sooner. Jesus Christ. Oh, 161 likes. Thank you, guys. Can we get to 200? 200. Ow, 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 ow. is a good car and it's nice and easy to drive as you can see this is a fun car to drive in VR <laughs> oh thank you I mean that <laughs> you gotta click it three times for good luck that's how it works What are you doing? I can't do anything. <laughs> Bloody hell. Hey, hey, I can't handle it. I'm, I'm meant to cope. Okay, let's go. Ah, uh, we might be here a while, guys. Five laps. I've not managed four corners yet. Forget five laps. Ah! <laughs> Nailed it. Woo! Four corners. And the lawn mowing session. This car would be awesome on like super crazy large track like tracks like this, but are just easy flowing tracks. That that could be a whole game. Oh shit, shit! Where you get? Oh, no! <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Then like doing random crap. What am I supposed to do when the AI is blocking the road? Ah, oh, Game of Muscle, all you do is blame the games when you crash. Ah, oh, blaming the AI when it's blocking the road. Ridiculous. That you, can you believe it? Can you believe I complained about the game then when the game made me crash? What a ridiculous thing to do. Where are they going? What are you doing? He's not stopping! Oh, it's alright, it's alright. Use the wall, use the wall. NASCAR. Jackie to its fault. Oh. Oh, what's going on with the cars in front? Ugh! 
car's unhinged. Maybe it's my crazy setup. Ah! No, you idiot! You idiot! <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Uh, uh, I've got a bad feeling about this and being stuck on it for the next bloody five hours. Ah, yellow car can't get me now because he's behind me. I was it a different yellow car. Thanks for following. Welcome. Oh, it's a good overtake, actually. Oh, here comes the yellow car again. Oh, we need longer gear in, don't we? Oh, this is going to be so hard because the AI is quick. My goodness. Ah, oh, this is going to be so hard. No. I'm give you driving tips. I need PG tips. Oh, thanks for the slip road there. That was nice. Thanks for following. Welcome. Oh, my God. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, we're learning the track at least. It helps when you know where the corners are. I think we have a little bit longer gear in, we might be able to do this.
This is what Formula One should be. Trees, safe cars, real racing. Right. Right, we need a bit longer gearing if we can change that. There we go. Two. There we go. And then tyres, fight. They, they were... I don't think it was the pressure or the temperature. Let's turn them up a little bit and then take the fuel out because we don't need that. And then uh, this is fine. Put that on. Minus three. And then diff was all right. Can tighten this up. And this is all right. Diff power. That was okay. Maybe a little bit more. Oh no, a little bit less. And then diff coast was okay. Preload was okay. Oh, extra power. Always need more power. Brake bias, brake power. Okay, here we go. Our brake power can go down a little bit. Go. Easy. Perfect car. Now we fixed it. Oh, it's a yellow car. The yellow car tagged me. It's always yellow cars. Leave me alone. Oh, here we go. Look at this power. Power. <laughs> A bit too much. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, oh. Okay. Okay. We need to break a bit earlier now. <laughs> Easy. You ah. This car is the most stable car I've ever driven. This would be a good starter car to put a toddler in, you know. Oh my god. <laughs> it's Game of Thrones AI. Every race starts a red wedding. Oh, we're blocked. What are they doing? Whoa! <laughs> so stupid. Ah, oh, look at this top speed power. We've got the performance here to do this now. It can happen. Oh, shit. Yellow car, yellow car, yellow car. Right, there we go. He's down. <laughs> Rip. Donate some tyres to his family. He died doing what he loved. Oh, God. Ugh. 
car just can't make up its mind if it's a car or an aeroplane. Ah, uh, bonk. Ah. Uh, This is going to be such a hard race to win. <laughs> this is going to be so hard to win. Can you all sit on the front wheels to give us some more grip? Why are you moving, you pillock? <laughs> it just moved. Ah, oh, God damn it. What are they doing? <laughs> They're killing each other before T1. Come on. This is a chance. Two hundred and sixty eight kilometers. Oh, where are you going? Oh, my God. What is he doing? <laughs> oh shit. Nailed it. It's fine. Hit the corner just right there. Oh, this car loves the grass. Oh, I'm just going to knock off the wall there. Don't worry about that. Well built, these cars. Pretty normal for them to drive into a wall and just bounce off it. How are we supposed to beat these two other cars? We have to be so quick.
Oh. Oh, we need more pace. We need more speed and pace. <sighs> what can I do? Okay, we can do this. I oh, know, skill's just too... That's overrated. He's always set up. He's never the driver. <laughs> see? See see how the setup caused that? See what happened there? Pure setup. Maybe we need to be drunk to drive this. Phantom Racer, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate the support. Welcome to the teapot. Are they still pulling away? What's the gap? It's fine, it's fine. Here's the wall. Yes, we've got the pace. up on the cobbles. I think we've got the pace, I just need to not crash. <laughs> No, we've not had any rants today at all. I don't know what you mean. We never rant on this channel. Thank <laughs> you. 
full opposite lock. Yeah, I might upgrade to a GTX. Probably a pretty good card. Uh, 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 uh. Right, we need to restart. We need to get up there early on. Bloody hell. We have the pace, we just have to get up with them straight at the start. Oh god, this car's cooking my brain. It's well hard to overtake on that start bit. doesn't turn <laughs> it doesn't turn if you go in too fast there let's move the brake bars a bit further back all right take that bitch <laughs> we got away with it let's go Law mowing, law mowing. Carnage up front. No, don't you dare try and overtake me there. need to get with these three cars changing gear whilst in the air that should be an achievement change gear with no tires on the ground oh <laughs> take that I just locked up all four wheels into that. Okay, 
Bloody hell. The hands are falling off. Hello, James Boss. Oh. My hands are falling off here. There's two cars coming up behind us. You can't do it! <laughs> you can't do it! All it takes is a slightly too much throttle, slightly the wrong line, a bit too much grass, and we're dead. No! That's what I mean! That's what I mean! <laughs> Woo! Close. See? A little bit too much, and you're a fire, and, and you're you're on fire. You've turned into a human candle. Got two more laps. Christ. Uh, I think they're battling each other. Which is good for me. Woo! I mean, you could basically you could just have this car and really like long windy countryside tracks like this, basic online ranked multiplayer, and you got yourself an incredible online racing game. I think if you just that if that was all it was was this one car, but with awesome countryside tracks and stat tracking, I think that would be like a really compelling game that people would really get into. Who doesn't like a bit of trees and cars? Oh shit, he's right behind us. It's 
It's a good car. Oh shit, here they come. Here they bloody come. Oh jeez. Oh, it's a yellow car, you shithead. Oh, he's lost it! <laughs> Take that bitch! Try to wreck me. Yellow car tactics there. Didn't work out for him. <laughs> God damn it. We GTX'd him. Final lap, come on. Car behind's catching, 0.9. Thanks for following, welcome. People keep changing the width of the track, I'm telling you. Oh shit, here he comes. I feel the Ring's really good, yeah. Not in this car, but yeah, it's a good track. Christ. No. No. No, not the final lap. Oh, come on. Bollocks. <sighs> ah! <laughs> no! no! Oh, fuck's sake! I don't like ACC, but I do like the normalist. That is amazing. So it's probably one of the, probably one of the, well, one of the or not the best simulation to practice. Like, uh, <laughs> it's called a motor one, race. GG mods. They're really, it's really good. Ah, oh, I mean, like. <laughs> It's like, it's exactly like what an eye racer would do. <sighs> right, I'll be back in a second. I'm going to get a cup of tea. Jesus Christ, this game. <laughs> that that was a, that was a kunos. They've got a button in their office. They push for it to do that.
We're having an orange, <laughs> then we're murdering AI. Bloody hell. Any of you in chat finish this level?
Uh, three times was easy, yeah. How much it would cost to build one of these cars now? If you were going to sort of replicate it but with modern components. what it would take to make it road legal <laughs> imagine just casually driving around in a car like this what do you mean it wouldn't be safe enough there's no there's nothing unsafe about this Got a windshield. His health and safety got mad. A tray with a giant engine. <laughs> sounds like a sounds totally fine. A, tr a tray with an engine. Ah, <laughs> uh, what do you drive? Oh, you know, tray with an engine. Oh, yeah, yeah, we all drive them. If you if you rebuilt this car, you could call it the tray. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. You just have to embrace the punt. If they clip, if they clip you at all, you're you're screwed. The slightest tickle, you're dead. Thanks, Joe. Welcome. Uh, thanks for subscribing on YouTube. Thanks for clicking the like button, guys. YouTube, 176 likes. Perhaps 
absolute like bonanza. Bit of a wall tickle there. Too much there. And wall. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Bloody hell, 2.2 seconds. I just put my race goggles on, really, for this.
Oh, he's bloody pulling away. Come on. Ah, ah. Ah, we're going to have to restart here. <laughs> this is the one, guys. Let's do it. Don't have nearly the patience. Well, you probably have brain cells. I, I I gave all mine up. It really helps. Ah, oh. ah, oh. there it is. <laughs> Just uh, lose the brain cells. Everything gets easier. There we go. Locked up! I locked up! Oh, 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 oh! Low! Low! Still in front. <laughs> Skill! Don't worry. Oh! Oh my god. <laughs> Skill and pace alone. It's fine. If you crash, you've got to make sure you take everyone else out, and that way they can't overtake you. Advanced technique. I learned that from NASCAR. This is fine. <laughs> This is why all, all 60s drivers were alcoholics. Thank you. 
fine. Ah! <laughs> the AI just driven into the wall. Let's go. All under control. Just testing out the tyres. This is that was the Joker lap done. Oh shit, there's two cars behind us now. on the inside. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's close. out of the way there. Has he got magic pace? Great overtake from the AI. I'm terrified of them. AI has a psychological advantage because they have no feelings. so slow, I nearly killed him, nearly killed him. <laughs> that was close. This is it, this is it guys. Full send.
Oh, here comes the AI. Oh, a cup of tea this ai this ai <laughs> oh. they have plenty of insanity great oh thanks for subscribing me the ass uh. No, I went on the inside, but it's so slidey. Then I went round the outs because you have. To, it's really hard to do that corner on the inside. The AI just has monster grip, monster breaking skills. Oh. <laughs> this, this bloody. We're getting pretty good at this card track, though. Oh, Jesus Christ. So close each time. Get in there. I just lost it. Right, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Sixteen second gap. Let's go. This might be the the one. The the nice easy one. Loads of money. Yeah, this should be nice and easy now. The AI folded. They didn't have the game of muscle endurance. Typical AI, tiring. Loads of money. The most fun car to drive. I've always liked this in AC. It's always been a really fun car. We need to put it on the list. Type 49 on the list. Car behind's catching us. Oh, 
Thanks again for everyone that's clicking the like button, followed, joined us, subscribed, donated, regretted, everything. Thank you very much. $5 dingle donation or five in whatever your currency you get to be on the sponsor list. What a dream. Unbelievable. Hundred and eighty five likes. Then we can get to two hundred. Two hundred likes is possible. Champion of the oh, thank you. Don't spin it. Uh, Craig, thank you very much. Welcome to the teapot. He's, well, he stayed in the teapot. Twitch Prime, thank you. Yes, guys, you can link your Twitch Prime and uh, sub and get no ads and enjoy for free. And support us with a cup of tea. But it will, I, I warn you, it will encourage us to keep doing more of this shit. So maybe don't do it. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, I'm proud to say that we probably are the worst sim racing channel on the internet. So, you know, I'm proud of that. Should get a trophy. The most successful, least successful sim racing channel. <laughs> that, that describes this place. The most successful, least successful YouTube channel on the internet. I need to put that on the banner. Guys, 11 seconds to the car behind us, they're catching. My arm's falling off. What am I doing? <laughs> My brain's falling off as well, apparently. Well, we just spread the gospel of force feedback, that's all. Two laps to go. Two laps to go. Oh! Oh, dear. This is a uh, Scott Schleifer. This is what happens if you designed uh, the Nord Schleifer after drinking too much iron brew.
8.7 second gap. Oh dear. This is a Limish Limishlifer. <laughs> oh. One more lap, come on! Come on! Nice and easy. Oh dear. Cook my brain. Iron Brew Raceway. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Nice and easy. Oh, nice and easy. Does anybody want to get an NVIDIA GTX graphics card? I do. I think I need to just buy one. I don't, I don't know why. For some reason, I feel like my graphics card's inadequate. Whoa, there's the edge of the track. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. <laughs> Take it easy. Nothing stupid. Nice and easy. Six, seven second gap. Nice and easy. Oh, come on. Come on. Final three quarters. Yes. Surely it's in the bag. The sack is full of wind. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. There it is. Here it is. Get in there. Ah. Oh. Yes. First time. Ah. <laughs> First try. My arm's falling off. <laughs> My arm's falling off. God damn it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. God. Ah. Ah. <laughs> My arm's falling off. Too many right handers. Oh bloody hell, there's another one at the same place. I don't I don't like ACC but I do like the normalist. So that is amazing. Normal. So it's probably one of the Probably one of the eighty-eight percent completed or not the best simulation to practice, like uh, even F1 or GT mods. Eighty-eight point really two completed tentativo, almost in the final ten of these uh, seventy eighty-one eighty-one point seven percent of uh, these. Oh, let's update the Steam achievements as well. Hang on. Thanks everyone for like, clicking the like button and all the support, appreciate it. And uh, let's get these Steam achievements. I can never find them. It's weird how Steam achievements aren't more prominent on Steam. So go into the game library and then you click. 
on your username and then oh yeah it's on your user we have 615 out of oh we've we're on the last hundred like we 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 yeah I, I, that's numbers i don't know how it works hang on how do we see our achievement pro oh here we go 87 percent beautiful let's update that yeah, yeah just gotta check the library gotta get a get a book from the library sign up get a new library card Six hundred and fifty. Look at this. I didn't think that. I didn't realise that. Uh, I, I doubted. I doubted that this dream, the most important gaming achievement in the history of YouTube, could be done. But uh, it, 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 we're on progress. Are any achievements on the Not when you're as good as me at sim racing. You know. Not not when when you're at my level. No, you can do anything. You just have to believe and eat enough bananas. We do community races, yeah. We did uh, three hours of them last night. 200 likes. M3 GT2 with Imola. Don't worry. We'll find a way to cheat it. <laughs> There'll be a way. We've only had to cheese one race so far. Is there anything I can't do? Not really, no, no. When you shave your head and grow a beard, the whole world becomes available to you. In ways that you just wouldn't expect. It's a magical world that's only only visible to bold men and bold women. If you're bold, you just you just see things from a different dimension. It's like it's like our uh, physicists, theoretical physicists, physicists and mathematicians can like see the world in different ways. You know, they understand the inner workings. That's what happens when you shave your head. But even it's even more pronounced. So you guys are seeing a simulator. I'm seeing. I'm like Neo in the Matrix, seeing all the numbers. But in my mind, they're all tea bags. That's what's going on in my head. You and Jada Smith in the same club. I was a. Uh, is that Will Smith's son? <laughs> or is that his wife? I can't remember. Randomly, he was at uh, he was at the Formula E in London, and I was like, "Oh, well, why are they walking around as a group of people like that?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, oh, oh yeah." I said, I was, <laughs> I was like, "What's going on?" Yeah, what's his song called? <sighs> Pink is it? Pinkett Smith? I don't know. I, I don't know what they're called. I don't care. <laughs> it's nice when light bulbs warm up your head, yeah. That gives you it's an extra sense. Like you can tell when it's gonna rain before anyone else. Cause you feel the raindrops on your forehead. You can feel the uh the temperature change. It's like when you don't wear socks and you can feel stuff on your ankles. Uh, I'm really bad at like recognizing famous people. <laughs> Being at like some events and uh, people are like, oh, look who that is. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know who they are. <laughs> I don't know who that is. I'm like, I play football. I love big football. I play football. I'm like, okay. Oh, dear. Rain perception plus 10. 
Oh dear. Right. Here we go. You're a, yeah, you're you're a weeb. <laughs> oh, gravestones. That's from all the drivers. There's that's all the gravestones from the last race, from the last event. That's how many uh Formula drivers died. Uh oh well, at least they had somewhere to put the bodies. It's good, good. That's why they did racing in the countryside. All makes sense. Oh dear, this is gonna be terrible, isn't it? Oh, oh, God. I'm using a 3080 Ti. Go-kart technique there. This is a little bit easier to drive than the 60s Formula car. The easy mode. Is this faster than the 60s Formula car as well? I've got 3080, not 3090. Hello, BC. Nice and easy. Give me muscles to learn how Oh, thank you. Appreciate the hard work plus more. Thank you very much for the donation with the high skill link there. Duke Katzivan. Whoa! I'm going to add you to the list. Can you remind me, guys, to add him to the list when I'm no longer dead? But thank you very much for donating there. Appreciate it. Box of uh, boxer tea bags. Beautiful. Beautiful box of tea bags. Oh, this is easy. This is easy, drives into a wall straight away. The top GM. It's nice to have an easy race after one that took two hours. Of it, uh, Quest 3 is absolutely amazing. VR is absolutely incredible. And so if you can afford to get a Quest 3, there's a bunch of games that are, that are on the device that are really good anyway. But like uh, Driving Sims with a Quest 3, Half-Life Alex, Onwards, Pavlov. Uh, Beat Saber's a bit shit, but still fun to play, especially if you're new to VR. Um, Box VR, there's, but there's a bunch of like fitness games that are just really, they're actually quite fun to play. The proper workouts as well, <laughs> like they're serious workouts. Uh, yeah. 
if I have a break from uh, sim racing, I might, I might do, um, I might go into doing a lot of VR stuff again for a bit. Half Life Two is really good in VR. Uh, what else is there? There's so much stuff. Yeah, it's weird how putting a roof on a sim rig adds to that enclosed feeling. It, do, it does work quite well. It's, it's surprising. No, I, I, I'm not that good at Beat Saber. I, I don't really like the design of it. I prefer, like, DDR. Whoa! Oh, shit. We stopped. <laughs> I prefer Dance Mat to Beat Saber. Quest 3 with low storage is 370 or 400, I think. But they're going to release a Quest Lite, I think, towards the end of this year, which for PC game, it depends on what the lenses are like. If the Quest 3 Lite has the same lenses, which it probably won't do because they're quite expensive. Well, I don't know, they might do. But if it has the same lenses, then for sim racing... It probably won't have the same, uh... Oh, God! <laughs> yeah, I... Just the standard Quest 3, though. Even with low space is good. For sim racing and stuff. I have a Quest 3 affiliate link, which gets you, uh, like, £25 or something free, like, back for software. You kind of the thing is with the Quest 3, you really need to get a head strap for it as well. So that's like another forty pounds. You can't just like the, the Quest 3 without a head strap is a bit. It's not very comfortable. No, so the the Quest 3 is a games console in and of itself. It's this it's whole. It's a standalone device. Yeah, you get there's cables that you can plug into a power supply. You go on my YouTube channel and watch the. I've got videos about Quest Three, Quest Three settings. If you just type in Game of Muscle Quest Three settings, it will come up. Yes, bronze, silver, gold, and alien. Oh, another Highland on oh, no, a Nürburgring Sprint in the old MX-5. Let's, let's see how this goes. Oh, I need to add you to the list. Got to add Ducati 7 to the uh, sponsors. There we go. Okay, let's go. D. <laughs> U. C. A. T. I S E V N. Thank you very much. On to the list of despair he goes. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah i mean i i've i'm a bit of a vr headset collector like i have the uh, dk1 the dk2 the cv1 uh, pimax 5k valve index htc vive quest one quest two and quest three <laughs> got a bit of a problem <laughs> we have a little bit of a problem I, I wear them all at the same time for multi-screen VR, it's genius. Oh dear. Has it appreciated in value? I oh, know, I, I sold the DK one. Or I used to have it. I don't know if they have, probably not. A lot of people are confused. I saw a post on Reddit recently with someone posting a CV1. They were like, what is this VR headset? <laughs> The big, big screen beyond's not got a big enough field of view for me. I like the idea of it being comfortable, uh, but also the, the uh, sweet spot's quite small on it. So for me, like, the biggest thing for me with VR, com comfort is a big one, but, like, the sweet spot is a large part of comfort for me with VR. That's why I really like the Quest 3. I really don't like adjusting the VR headset when it's on my head. Funnily enough, the DK2 was actually super, super comfortable because it was so light. I just find it funny, like, all the people that argued with me early on about how pointless VR was for driving sims. <laughs> it's exactly... I mean, we said this before. It's exactly the same. It's like... When I was going on about DD wheels back in 2010, people were like, oh, no, I don't need them, it's far pointless, that. And now, like, DD wheels like the norm. Then the VR headsets, I was like, well, no, look, this is really amazing. Oh, no, I don't need VR, it's a gimmick. <laughs> it's just like, you know. Yeah, the Reverb G2 is good, yeah, especially for the price it was going for. Luddites. Yeah, well, there's a whole, there's so many things where there's, and there's a lot of people that can't appreciate something until they've experienced it at all. They have no imagination for what could be good. And, uh, yeah, they will argue you to the death, even though they, like, they just can't. I don't think they have any imagination. I think that's what it is. Which is fine for someone to not have imagination, but it's really weird for someone to have no imagination, but then be super defensive of ideas that they, or like things that they've got stuck on. All right, we need to, this is going to be well hard, Christ. Get rid of the toe. Like, there's there's going to be loads of stuff. Like, I don't know anything about tennis rackets in particular or, or skis or snowboards or whatever. There's loads of stuff I know nothing about, obviously. If someone said to me, if they were like, oh, yeah, there's this uh, new uh, type of ski that works this way uh, and it's absolutely tr completely transforms skiing and they had a good logical reason as to why it completely transformed it, even though I knew nothing about it, I'd go, oh, cool, that kind of makes sense. And I could see how that would work. I wouldn't be like, no, it will never, never change. <laughs> you know. Yeah, 
Yeah, tra track IR is good. I think if you're trying to race quickly, track IR is a little bit dislocating. Uh, but some people are really good with track IR as well. I've got track IR, track IR. I, I bought it for playing helicopter games whilst I was live streaming. But to be honest, I tend not to use it. I think that I've been conditioned that when I when I have head tracking in a game, the expectation is that it's totally one to one, and then it makes so it makes me feel a bit motion sick when I use track IR. Uh, Red Eye Warrior uses track IR for loads of stuff, and it, and he, he he's really good. Yeah, you can you can look all around in VR. If you want to. Things in real life, you don't tend to move your head around that much. Which one's better, hey? Eh? Ah, uh, we guys, this is gonna be really hard to think. It's only three laps. How is this supposed to be possible in three laps? Oh, uh, what? How are we meant to do this? <laughs> three laps? What? This is impossible. This is gonna. We're gonna have to cheat to do this one. There is no way you can get to first. In three laps. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Even if we like absolutely pwn it, I do not see how this is supposed to be possible. Get good. Get rocket launchers. Well, we might, we might be able to do it. We might be able to do it. We have to absolutely send it. Oh, God, it's going to be hard, though, I think. Car looks like a cheap rental boat. Oh, P one's getting away. Oh, we totally should have gone second gear there. Oh no, this is getting. Oh Jesus Christ! Why Kunos? <laughs> Kunos are the biggest trolls ever.
Oh, there's no way we're catching up with P1. Jesus Christ, let's take all the toe out. Or oh, maybe some tire pressure we can do. Hang on. We had 90s to. Oh, we'll do it easy. <laughs> but we had the old tires on. Oh, easy, easy. Jesus Christ. Well, we do this easy. Wunderbar! Zendung! Oh, look at this. Oh, tyre hacks. Tyres were shit in the 90s. <laughs> uh, it's a shader patch option to force headlights to be on so that when you're playing online, headlights are on, the, on everyone's car. Turn it off. Easy mode. Tire hacks. This live stream is brought to you by Pirelli. This live stream is brought to you by Firestone. This live stream is brought to you by Dunlop, your favourite tire supplier. Come to Halfords for your 20% discount on Dunlop tyres. That's right, Birmingham Super Prix is sponsored by Halfords Roundabout and Dunlop tyres. Britain's favourite tyre choice. I bought tyres for my car. It were winter and I almost crashed killing family. But thanks to Dunlop, when I put foot on brake, my car stopped. I owe Dunlop my life, and you might too. Buy Dunlop today. Dunlop, making Yorkshire proud. Ah, oh, we're still... Still not going to win. Bloody hell. AI still aero boying. Yeah, yeah, shut up. We'll, we'll do it next. We'll do it. It doesn't matter. We've got it. Okay. Right, next one. Next one will do it. <sighs> I've got Dunlop Dunlop wellies. They also sell Dunlop socks in Lidl, so. I'm pretty cool when it comes to tyres and boots and shoes and socks. Textbook corner entry.
Look at these lines. Oh, incredible driving. Oh, here we go. That 60s car is paying off. Oh, look at this. That's what you need to be. You need to be in third place by the end of lap one. Now we need to send it over the chicane. Look at that send. Here we go. Come on, get in there. Up the inside here. Shut up, Tom Bland. Go and have an ice cream. I can run faster than this car. It's like a noddy vehicle. Oh! And the blank turn it <laughs> Technique. Yes, get in there. Beautiful driving. Another spectacular drive. We didn't cheese it. There was no cheese in this. We've cheesed one race. That's it. So don't give me the cheese. This was pure talent and skill and luck. Exactly. Bloody good cup of tea. Golden tea. Pro anchor butter. Oh, my shoulder keeps coming out of joint. I need to change my sheet, seat in position. <laughs> I moved my seat further back to give my arms more of a rest, which has actually helped quite a bit. To not have my elbows. Um, <laughs> my sh this shoulder keeps clicking out of joint. It's really annoying. Oh, look at this textbook drive pure parmesan <laughs> pure emmental I believe I can cheese good year H&R Pound Shop Haribo. Here we go. Another one down. We'll be soon. We'll be in the final ten hot laps. 
get Gouda. Oh dear, the cheese puns. Absolutely terrible. Beautiful, beautiful, there we go. Woo! Golden! There's another one down! It. We've got 11 left. Bloody hell. What's this? Silverstone in the Toyota TS040 hybrid. Let's go. Absolute pace. Do I do a like button reminder? We need the like button wheel. Oh, hang on. Hit the like button. <laughs> Forgot he had that. All right. The wheel of like. I hope this is a nice easy one. Oh! Okay. Oh, it's ten laps. The tires are gonna be wrecked. Shit. Well, we'll see. I'm going to put the medium tyres on. I don't trust these tyres. Oh! 
Got a nice steering wheel, this car. Whoa, a bit too much boost. <laughs> What uh, tyres do Alien Sim Racers drive on? M Mitchy Hoyerlin tyres. <laughs> Mitchy Hoyerlin. We need to do it. <laughs> we need to get the logo and make it so it says Mitchy Hoyerlin on the logo. Ah, oh, that'd be a well good shirt for Mitchy Hoyer. The Mitchy Hoyerlin shirt is a tyre with Mitchy, <laughs> Mitchy Hoyerlin. <laughs> That's well good. Ah, oh, tell him that. <laughs> Mitchy Hoyling tires. Ah, oh, amazing. That's where my brain's at. <laughs> that's that's where my brain's going. Oh, Jesus Christ! It's good. It's good. He would sell them. I'd buy a Mitchy Hoyling T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a tyre logo. Ah, oh, it's well good. Like a black and white shirt with a tyre, and then it says Mitchy Hoyling. Ah, oh, amazing. <laughs> it's so stupid, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense at all. Get it? Oh, I don't get it either. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> this is just stupid. Jim <laughs> uh. is broken. You can't be broken if you were never fixed. It's a nice, nice, easy one to do. I need a big red button on my rig. You push and it restarts the race. You can actually do that in AC. My favourite car show. I don't really like car shows. I, I tell you what, I, I liked. Um, what, what's the guy that uh, Wheeler Dealers was good? Like Ed, what's his face? Uh, that was good. Chris Harris was good before he joined Top Gear. I mean, he's fine on Top Gear, but it's you know it's TV shit. So, but Chris Chris Harris on cars was really good. Uh, yeah. Oh, I like um, fully charged. You know, uh, Lawrence Lu uh, Llewellyn. Crichton from Red Dwarf. It does fully charged channel. Uh, that that stuff's quite good. It's not really about cars though, but still. Oh, 
I mean, I, I, if I was watching, if I'm watching stuff on cars, uh, that, who's that YouTuber does good stuff? Um, I've forgotten his name. The guy does, he does like little history stuff. Aiden, Aiden Millward, he, his, his stuff's good. I like that. No, <laughs> not Shmi, for Christ's sake. Ah, oh, Shmi. Jesus Christ. Every video that pops up and he's fake smile talking. I think he's a nice guy, actually. So, you know, he's probably a nice person, but the way he presents with him, he's so fake in his presenting. F smile talking. He'll be like, hi, we've got here the new Ferrari and it's really exciting, the paint job. <laughs> it's like, he doesn't talk like that normally. He's, ah, <laughs> uh, it's like uh, Jimmy Fallon, fake laughing and clapping every guest. Oh dear. Imagine building an audience going around just filming supercars. I mean, that that's YouTube though. You have to build an audience with the most commercially vapid shit and then you can do what you actually want to do. <laughs> that is the key to success with most things. Ride the commercially vapid shit wave and then try and bail off it when you've got enough of an audience. Well, it's weird with Jimmy Fallon because he doesn't need to be like that. That's what's straight like. Uh, Conan's amazing. John Stewart was good. Uh, bloody uh, the Scottish guy. I've forgotten his name. Uh, even the um, what was the other presenter? Um, yeah, there's loads of them that are good. So it's, I don't know why. It's not that SNL thing. I, some other clips came up recently because, I don't know, it was Ryan Gosling was on it. And the whole SNL thing where it's like, oh, they were struggling not to laugh. How funny. Oh, look, they were struggling. It's like, but the sketch isn't even funny. And the joke goes on for half an hour. <laughs> Jeez. It's, it's like the audience thinks it's more funny if the actors seem to be struggling to laugh, even if it's not that funny. It's really weird. Yeah, I, I think if you like, if you if you genuinely can't detect how fake Jimmy Fallon is, not that he's still like, you know, it's hard to do a TV show and, you know, so it's difficult to do that job night in, night out and, you know, interview and keep everything going. So still, it's a hard job and that's, you know, he's, he's keeping it going, so fair play. But if you can't detect that fakeness, it's like James Corden as well. If you can't detect that has been utterly, utterly fake. I don't know, and a lot of people can't. It's a really good test of how perceptive people are. Because there's a huge number of people that have no, like, quantitative theory of mind. They, they can't, they really can't tell when someone's been fake versus actual being genuine. Yeah, James Corden is insane as well. Exactly the same as Jimmy Fallon. Totally and utterly fake. I don't, I don't know how people watch James Corden at all. I would say James Corden is worse than Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> Maybe if you're American, it hides James Corden's fakeness because he's British, so you don't notice how, like...
Yeah, there's just like a... <sighs> James Corden comes across as like some weird, super, super arrogant, mega narcissist, uh, pretentious... <laughs> So like so thinly veiled hyper pretentious narcissism the worst <laughs> I tell you what people can pick it pick it up that like uh Limmy makes loads of jokes about him and it's so true <laughs> You need to watch you should subscribe to Limmy guys the stuff he points out with James Corden is hilarious I guess I, I just think some people aren't don't have very good theory of mind and just aren't perceptive so they they can't detect it they really can't tell when someone's being genuine or fake Lim Limmy's a genius. So uh, the thing is, there's degrees of fakeness. So you can have someone that's just presenting a show, and they're not being, uh, you know, they're not being genuinely themselves, and they're presenting a show, and you know, they're just doing a job. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, you know, like someone that's working in the service industry, that's just being pleasant and doing their job really well. That's that's one that's one component of stuff. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that they like they might really hate a customer, but they're just doing the job really well, which in in a sense is fake. But they're at, they're not not being nice people. But you can totally tell. I guarantee you, James Corden is a complete ass to all the people he works with. <laughs> I guarantee you. Uh, I think Jimmy Fallon actually is probably all right. I'd imagine. I get the impression with Jimmy Fallon that he's actually quite high anxiety and so he does what he does to uh, offset his personal anxiety which is quite common that's the impression I get whereas James Corden I think it's to hide innate deep-seated pretentious narcissism Woo! Yeah, I think he's doing it to try and be a co like try and be welcoming to the guests. So he's he's fake, but he's he's not doing it out of a uh, ill willed place, if that makes sense. So it's, it would, it's in some senses, it's similar to Conan uh, being mean in a fake way for the sake of comedy. He's, you know, it's, he, and but he's not, he's not doing it ill willed. Whereas you have like uh, James Corden and Ellen DeGeneres, where they're just you. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but my my uh, narcissist radar. Alert <laughs> alert radar goes to maximum alert when I watch like Ellen DeGeneres or James Corden.
definite narcissist. Uh, John Oliver, I think, is alright. I think it's just a... I mean, I don't find him funny. Um, but he's fine. Like, I, I think he's... He, I don't have a narcissist radar. He just seems like a, a normal comedian. <laughs> John Oliver's alright. I don't find him funny at all. Are we there yet? Hello in now. No, we're, we're suffering through. I think John Oliver is probably quite a good writer. Who's John Oliver? He's a, a British comedian that does acting roles. He's been in films, uh, community. And he's, uh, he's now a, a presenter on uh, American... Is it... Uh, he's on a, a TV... He's a presenter or something. Comedian presenter. I think you'd go insane, though. If you were one of those uh, presenters for one of those TV shows uh, in America, like the late night show, whatever, where you... Where you have to interview guests and you're basically it's just famous people marketing their film or whatever they're in, you know, representing the film. That's such a terrible job. Like, yeah, okay, you make lots of money, you get famous and stuff. But how, like, dull would it be? Like, there, there'll be some people that are totally, like, there'll be, there'll be some guests that are fine. But a huge number of them will just be, like dull people that like uh, <laughs> I think Conan said this actually more recently where he's like he much prefers doing the podcast stuff he's done and also if you look at Conan everything that's like really memorable is when he's ever, uh, is when he's just had comedians on or he's done his uh, trips uh, like off location because he himself is actually a million times more entertaining than any bloody rando sexy Hollywood star. Oh, I think Graham, I think Graham Norton's really good. To be honest. <sighs> yes, there's another one. No, I don't really find Graham Norton funny, but I think he's a good, good. He does a good job. <sighs> Get in there! Ow! Foot cramp. <laughs> Why do you get cramp in the bottom of your foot? What's the point in that? Hello, stop. Ah, well, let's come back. Let's come back. <laughs> I just had a banana. Ow. Ah. Ah, it feels good when it stops. <laughs> oh, cramp is the worst thing ever, but when it stops, it feels so good. It's like when you have a really bad, like, violent massage. Oh, God. That was like adrenaline inducing. Here we go. Evan, Evan ER, you speak about so much different things so far. What if someone makes an AI, AI bot using this? If, well, they can make a game of muscle bot and then I can retire. It's fine. And it can just occasionally go off on like rants. Sorted. I, I can quit life. Oh, guys, we're in the top final 10. 89.7%. Oh, the emotion. Commotion, emotion. Oh, shit. Nordschleifer, two laps. Here we go. And <laughs> the Nordschleifer's back. Nothing like a flowing chat. What about a river that's flowing? 
Cramping the bottom of your foot means you're moving your toes too much. I think it means that my body hates me. I think what it might mean is that sim racing for nine hours plus for 12 days in a row is probably not a good idea. I think that's what it... I think that's what my body might be telling me. I don't know. I might need to go to a doctor, but I'm pretty sure if I go to a doctor and say, I have some weird headaches, my arms hurt, and I keep getting cramp in the bottom of my feet, I think they would say... Have you been using computers? And I go, oh, you could say that. <laughs> Do you go out much? Well, not in the last 13 days. I mean, virtually. <laughs> if well, we're kind of outside. <laughs> oh, dear. Is there a Birmingham Super Pre mod? Right, we're getting that. If, we're, if, that's, if that's good, we're getting it. Uh, the recognition I get from Kunos is that they won't uh, they won't uh, ban me from future games. I don't know. I, I already have a rep in the Kunos offices as the idiot that didn't stop complaining about ACC force feedback. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a street rep, sim dev street rep. Uh. The uh, game, game of Muscle's got a rep in the developers. They're like, oh, that Game of Muscle bloody complains about our games. I'm like, I'm like, boo, yeah. <laughs> Pointing out the flaws in your softwares. So that's what I do. And they go, why do you have to be such a dickhead? And I go, I can't help it. I haven't got any biscuits. The time board. <laughs> They have, they have a projector. Whenever I'm live, they have a projector, and it's just the camera box, full screen on the wall. And then they have, uh, yeah, they have, like, vegetables to throw at it. And if you get in the Kunos offices, if you hit my face three times in a row, you get a bonus. I mean, if it helps them uh, fix the force feedback from AC2 from ACC, I don't care. I, I don't... Whatever they need to do to make the game not drive like shit, I'm happy. It's all good. What about Jamie Oliver? He spits all over everything when he talks. I don't know. We see Jamie Oliver seems a bit shifty to me. It's hard to tell though because I, I I can't really tell. But he seems a bit. He seems a bit shifty. He seems like a bit of a shifty geezer. He's probably all right. You never know. I mean, I don't like watching his cooking stuff. Hang on. How far can I kayak? Well, downstream. What's the longest I've kayaked? Probably... 30 miles, 40 miles or something? I don't know. Upstream, I only I tend to only kayak like ten miles upstream, if that. It's bloody tiring. <laughs> Kayaking upstream is really annoying. Downstream's fine. You're already, you're normally travelling about what on a on a pretty calm river. It's at least three to eight knots. So, um, uh, what's that, like, four or five kilometres per hour, just without even paddling? Easy times. Right, here we go. Oh, is this the... Um, endurance layout? Oh, is this car front-wheel drive? Jesus Christ. Audi TT. No, I think this car's all right. It just has a super... Ow! Specific way to drive it. It's not actually that bad, but it's just front-wheel drive. I really don't, I don't fully understand, oh, 
I don't fully understand why, if you were going to spend shit loads on a race car like this, why you'd want it to be front wheel drive. You know what I mean? I, I get front wheel drive is a cost saving measure for cheaper cars. Or for like BTCC and stuff, or like some of the older cars, fine, but. Clio Cup's good. I mean, it's, it's all right, it's his own challenge. I like oversteering front wheel drive cars. Because you just use the f gas to bail it out. Bloody P1's gone. Jesus. Try this, just try this out, yeah. Most people aren't driving a road car at 200 miles an hour around the Nordschleife. Most road cars can't even go to 200 miles an hour. <laughs> What's the top speed of a Honda Type R? Like a 140? What's that? What? Downhill? Most cars would do 200 if you drop them out of an aeroplane. <laughs> What's the terminal velocity of a person? Oh! 
are you doing? <laughs> Psychopath AI. See, ah, oh, he's cat. He's disappearing down the straights. Three point one. Ah, oh, no, no, we're catching him. Yeah, okay, that's good. Point five. Here we go. Only two laps, but hopefully we can catch him. I mean, this is like it's a lot easier to drive than rear wheel drive with the car miss out you just anytime you get oversteer you just put your foot on the accelerator and it's pretty point and shoot I mean I still I prefer rear wheel drive it's all right though. I think you could have good um, the great thing with front wheel drive is it does mean if you're doing like rando public server racing it means that when people drive into you, you can put your foot on the accelerator and not crash. So it can be quite good for just jumping online racing. Yeah, you tend to you tend to just wear out the tyres. I think in a front wheel drive car. But Nordschleife is so good. Every time you drive one, it's just fun to drive around. I can totally understand how Misha just <laughs> goes around it over and over and over again in real life. It's never, like, going to be boring. Full send. No, still got uh, nine more after this of the single player races. No, we've not done the time attacks, but they're easy.
taking a bit of a wide line there. Oh, I need to put some potato in the air fryer. Potato! Be good. Thanks for clicking the like button on YouTube, guys. We're on 222. Let's see if we get to 250. Do you think there's enough people that haven't clicked it that will get us to 250? At least 235. Make the numbers go up. What a time to be alive. Push the numbers as high as they could go. What a time to be alive. No, two people clicked it. <laughs> the participation. Oh, 230. 230. It's moving up. Moving on up. Oh, 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 oh. Nailed it. <laughs> Blocked. Confuse the AI there. That's how it's that's how it's done, guys. That's how you maintain. I, I, I had a little bit of a slide and then I blocked the road so the AI couldn't pass me. But it's alright, nobody saw it. Mind the gap. Textbook driving. I was distracted by the light button. And the thought of a potato. Only click to stop the singing. Shall not pass. So just click the light button wheel over and over again. Every like five minutes. You should just go across the screen. We need automated. No, we need automated uh, graphics. Every every minute. Have any of you guys ever played the same video game for 12 hours a day, 13 days in a row? <laughs> I've never done that. Oh, I've done it with iRacing. Well, even with World of Warcraft. Did you play it for 13 hours a day? Sim race, a ACC's not uh, a game. ACC's just a method of testing if you have the ability to sense force feedback in your hands. ACC was developed by the CIA to test people's ability to detect force feedback. Icewind Dale. Thing is, Icewind Dale just makes me think of Dale Winton, which I don't think is what they were going for with that game. Supermarket sweep with Ice Wind Dale. <laughs> Ice Wind Dale Winton. <laughs> Emma Dale Winton. Yeah, well this is this is the ultimate gaming challenge. It's easier to get to level 60 in original in original World of Warcraft than it is to do this. Cuz you can get to level 60 in World of Warcraft without any talent at all. Just just doing stupid missions.
Whereas this takes superb talent and uh, skill and uh, technique and strategy and uh, brains and uh, yeah, yeah, it's where you know. Whereas wow, just did any anybody could do it. I, I I never played WoW, but I used to live with someone that did. I hope I've got a potato. Potato! Really need to, I need some carbs today. Oh no, we had some noodles. I might be able to, maybe I'll have some more noodles. I might just have I might just have another bowl of noodles. That's a good idea. Oh <laughs> shit, loads of noodles. I made like five portions of stir fry in one go. Barely fit in the container. Can't believe people buy pot noodles. Like, have any of you in chat eaten a pot noodle in the last year? If so, what on earth is wrong with you? What what makes someone go to a shop and go, Oh, I think I'll get a pot noodle. Like a pot noodle is about as appealing as eating a mouldy turnip. Like, ah, oh, you guys, what's wrong with you? You can just get egg noodles, or just get noodles. Oh shit! Ow, nailed it. And then get some vegetables. Pot noodles are criminal. I think pot noodles were created as an experiment to see how shit of food people are willing to eat. Hello, Sarah M. Yes. Oh, bloody hell, he's right on the tail. We need to not crash. I missed it. Have I played Ride 5 in VR? No. Whoa. I don't really like the physics in those games. Uh, not really. I mean, I don't think it's a bad car to drive. For If people like front-wheel drive cars, then I think it's all right. But I, I, it's not really my sort of thing. I'd ra If I was going to drive a front-wheel drive car in AC, I'd rather drive the Nissan Primera mod. But I could see how this could be a appealing to like lower-skilled sim racers that want something front-wheel drive that's approachable, has a bit of oversteer. It's, it's better than front-wheel drive cars in most sims, to be fair. Also, if you had a gamepad or you're playing with a keyboard, this could be quite good. Boiled potato food van. Yeah. Well, there was a, there was a really good place in South Shields, though, that had one of those proper potato ovens. Not boiled, but like baked, proper baked potato. But they always had like super fresh salad and pickles and cheeses and stuff and it was really cheap it was like two pound <laughs> it was really good yes yes
alien done. Right. Yeah, let's get some noodles, seeing as they're already cooked. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's 8 o'clock. We've been going for nine hours today. Shit. <laughs> what a waste of life. Oh, dear God. How many have we done? 62. Oh, what are we on? 90 percent. 90 percent. 90 percent. 90% Completitetativo. Tell you what, what I might do is we do some time trials. We'll get the time trials done because we could probably blitz through them. I don't want to finish on a time trial. That's lame. Time attacks. We could probably blitz through some of these. Let's get some noodles and let's try and blitz through these. Oh my goodness, guys. Yeah, maybe we can get this finished. Uh, maybe not all the achievements, but 100% of AC. We can probably get that finished. Um, maybe tomorrow. Completed Tetativo. You'll be finishing on the BMW GT2 on Lapatimilla, probably. I've got. To, we have to do the drift achievement. Those are achievements. It's not a hot lap. Is it? That's an achievement, isn't it? Oh, man. Oh. <sighs> yeah, on Steam. We are on. 650, 87%. Hang on, why is it not updated? 89% of Steam achievements. 631 of 709. The first achievement we ever got was on the 8th of November 2013. <laughs> Hang on. That, when did um, AC come out? Is it Wasn't that the alpha? 8th of November 2013. Didn't AC come out 2014? When did Assetto Corsa come out? 2014, December. Ah, oh, yeah. So I, well, the, the, this has got to be like one of the longest spreads of achievements. <laughs> First achievement was on the day that the Alpha launched. It must have been when... Uh, when did the Alpha early access... Start. Uh, November the 8th. <laughs> yes! <laughs> November the 8th was when the early access started. So I've been playing Assetto Corsa from the very first day of the early access, and it's taken 14 years! Oh dear God. Oh, what time did it come out? What time of day? It must have been like, yeah, no, it would have been like 4 p.m. That's when games come out on Steam, which is like mid midday, whatever. Uh, this is my job. This is why. This is why I beg for channel members and donations, and uh, we do YouTube videos. I do some sponsored stuff, but this is all I do. Yeah, there's no way you could spend 12 hours a day bloody streaming if it wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't your job. Unless I was, like, massively pro at playing the benefit system or something. But, uh, no, we, this is what we do. Uh, race censored. Speaking of spreads, you need to reinstall Stanley Parable and get the five-year... I, I don't know if I... I don't know when the last time I played it. Go into your Steam, and then uh, you can see... If you click on the game, you can see the latest achievements in the Steam library. Thanks for clicking the like button, guys. Two hundred and forty. 
Right, let's get some noodles. But yeah, no, so I don't, I don't, it's not just streaming. I make less money from streaming, to be honest, than uh, YouTube videos. And uh, yeah, just YouTube and stuff mostly, to be honest. I do all right with streaming, but it's, it's not that good. You thought it wasn't enough to live? Yeah, it, it wouldn't be if I just did streaming. But uh, we do a mixture of stuff. What's Billy Strange doing? Does today's money buy you the same model kit? <laughs> Billy's gone model making mad. Okay. So I, make, I might make a cup of tea. Cup of tea and some noodles. Be back in a second, guys.
Noodle time. Thanks for following, Grizzle. We're doing everything. We're hundred percent in everything. Everything. We're currently on eighty nine percent of the achievements. 90.1% of the game. Uninstall the greatest simulator ever made. Who does that? Kunos University. <laughs> Kunos University. Yeah, Jarku. We'll do that easy. As long as, uh, like, imagine doing that, uh, that level 100 um, <laughs> uh, drift challenge in the crossbow. So bad. Drifting was um, one of the worst things ever. Some mods change physics, but they're basically fundamentally using the same game code for the most part. There's some uh, additional physics features that have been added, but they're still basically the same. At its core, it's AC physics from the original game.
But it's not, not, not really. It doesn't really work like that. Well, it's the um, tuning in and he's eating spaghetti. <laughs> I bet he smells. <laughs> How good was that? Uh, yeah, Evo's coming out when I finish this challenge. We did a deal with Kunos. Here we go. 1,500 points. No, 15,000. Can you remember that, guys? 15,000 points we need. Oh, dear. So supposedly you just drive around slowly for the first lap, for the first thing, and then get faster and you win. Only it's that easy. Yeah, they, they didn't really think about the design of these. Yeah, but I'm, I'm so good, I, I, I'm incapable of going too slow because I'm too talented. What do I need? Uh, is it, it was 15,000, right? I think. Was it 150,000? No, no 24 hours. Hang on, is the gearing wrong on this?
Hang on, did I mess this up? Why does my top speed seem really low? I think I might have picked the wrong setup here, guys. <laughs> might have messed this up a little bit. <laughs> the gear in the fifth and sixth gear is messed up. Whoops. Do I need to drive this even slower at the start? Your friend got spine damage. What was he doing? Well, I drive for like 12 hours every day. <laughs> well, how was he sat? on a bin bag. Was he slapping himself in the arse with a brick? much we did we needed 15,000 we're on seven th oh no we have to do this I need to change this out I need to drive slow on the first lap Two thousand twenty-five thousand.
installing a washing machine. Formula wrong bloody car setup. No, we're gonna have to do oh, shit. Shit, we need a better setup. Ah, oh, look, we need to do fifteen thousand. We only got to that eight thousand. Fifteen thousand. We need this good setup. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> you have to drive painfully slow. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's do that. This is how it's done. This is like that stupid mission in... Uh... Alright, we can go slower than that. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's like those shit WRC rally stages where you got to drive around at five miles an hour. So dumb. What is this? This is pain and suffering, Kuno style. <laughs> this is peak sim racing. You, 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 you might not understand it, but this is what it is. This is what peak sim racing looks like. I am the champion of the oh, nation. Thank you very much. Oh, I also got gifted. 
Nice. Thank you for gifting us the sub there. Appreciate it. Who gifted it? I was too quick. I was too damn quick. Too slow. Oh, no. It's stealing all my points. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the worst. What speed do we need to go at? Let me just stay in second gear. KHMP1, thank you very much. No, because if you go still, you get your points get deducted. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. We've got the strats. <laughs> Welcome to Kudos Game Design. They really know what they're doing. Are you guys enjoying this? The view is kind of nice. You gotta stay above fifty. <laughs> right. It's doing first gear. What's happening? We're doing the time attacks. What's the pit limiter out? That's sixty, right? I don't think the pit limiter works on this car. Oh, this might be too slow. You know it. You know a challenge is good when you resort to beatboxing. I don't. I don't like ACC, but I do like the normalist. But that is amazing. So it's probably one of the, probably one of the, one, one of the or not the best simulation to practice. Like uh, even F1 or GT mods. Really, it's really good. Wow, 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 wow. Oh no! 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 Ah! Ah! You are fucking slow. You are fucking slow. Thanks for that.
This is a sanity test. Yeah, we've done all the drag challenges. This is beat gaming, guys. That's the challenge. The actual the mission is to not fall asleep. We've got eleven of these to do. Are you excited? I am.
When do we get to pwn it? <laughs> At what point do we get to pwn it around the track? We'll get 15,000 points. <laughs> Four laps! Do this for another week. Oh dear. How many laps have I done now? Oh my god, are you serious? Summer reaches zero, it's game over. <laughs> I have to take a break every five minutes. It's quite tense because if, if we fail this, I have to start the whole thing again. goodness how many laps have I done I've done five laps <laughs> at what point can I go for it <laughs> at what point do we lose by accident
<laughs> I don't need three more laps. I'm going crazy. Crash, we have to do this whole thing again. This is the worst time of my life in a video game. Ow. Who thought this was a good idea? 10,000? Come on. What should they improve on? I, d I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, maybe... I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know anymore. I've lost all my brain cells. Yeah, make more of these fantastic challenges. That's what they need to do. This this was the best thing they ever did. Let's be honest. We got to do ten more of these. No, we've got to do 10 more of these things. <laughs> Bloody hell. Is this set up wrong? <laughs> we might be in trouble, guys. This setup might be the wrong setup. We only need 2,000 points, though. Christ. <laughs> what do you have to do? Not fall asleep? <laughs> you have to not go mental. Come on, come on. Oh shit, this is going to be close. Just need one more. Oh no! Oh, this is gonna be. This might be close. <laughs> oh no! If we fail after that. Oh no! We're all right. We're all right. Oh. 
there we go. Let me just drive around now. If that's 15,000. I think it's 15. It's one billion. One billion. <laughs> one hundred thousand. One hundred and fifty thousand. Don't know, no, probably not, but I'm, we're getting the extra points just in case. What a treat! Boy, I'm excited to do that! Because you're going to die of a heart attack from old age if you do this. That's why it's called time attack. Should be called sleep attack, really. Should be called Kunos attacks its player base attack. should be called please it's called uh, time attack because if you do this you'll want someone to attack you with a brick just to put an end to it uh oh no time attack master we got an achievement 10 laps we got an achievement it was all worth it guys it was all worth it we got an achievement that we didn't even know we needed so it was all worth it time attack master Thank you. That is how you master time attack. Don't you can't argue with the steam achievements. Ah! Can't argue with the steam achievements. That was close. Almost lost it there. Time attack master. Get in there. That's no, right, I'm a time attack master. 
Some attack master can't get a DQ. <laughs> something happened. We don't know what it was, but something happened. Now nah, this this is great. What a time to be alive. <laughs> I'm looking forward to ten more of these. <laughs> ten more. Ah, oh, there it is. Gold. Thank you. It's over. And we're a time attack master. Oh. Golden Age of Sim Racing. Well that's the first one done. <laughs> Try again. Oh, I'd love to. I'd really love to. Here we go. 15,000 again. Oh, bloody hell. Well, we got to 20,000 there, so we only need to do... Let's do four laps slowly. Three laps slowly. Are they all like this? Yes. They all like this. Oh boy. It might not look like it, but this is Pete Games design. The skill is to not fall asleep. <laughs> you wouldn't want anything to happen too quickly. Where's the bloody first checkpoint? Oh, there it is. No. It's Coca Cola. Oh, shit. Where is it? Okay, we might have overestimated where the first checkpoint was. Four, three, two, what? Oh, there it is. Oh, I <laughs> okay, we need to go a bit faster for that. What a loser. I think 120 will do it. Oh, second gear. Perfect. Time attack master in the house. Like, what's funny is, this is motorway speed. <laughs> this, this is motorway speed. Ooh, what's going to happen? Oh, I love road cars. Wow, it's so, I'm so glad I bought a McLaren to drive on the motorway. What a great time I'm having. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta hit the red line on your McLaren to get the value out of it. It's the sound of it, you wouldn't understand. It's all about it's all about enjoying the sound of the car. <laughs> it's how it's how you can experience the red line on the motorway. You <laughs> put it in second gear and <laughs> Imagine if you were on a motorway! Imagine if you're on a motorway <laughs> Just, you're just driving along and you turn to your right and there's a McLaren going wah, 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 wah. <laughs> the speed limit <laughs> uh, oh no the checkpoint's too close oh shit oh shit we might have ruined it well we'll see Yeah, you don't want to wear out third gear, but they're notoriously fragile in McLarens. Third gear, third gear is a uh, real big, real big uh, thing to avoid. All McLaren owners know this. Dave, we are. This is peak sim racing. We are 
<laughs> We're attacking the time, can't you tell? Oh no! <laughs> oh, this car's a bit leery. Where's the next checkpoint? Oh, there it is. Is that it? Yeah. I'm on the limit. Uh. Am I going too fast? Shit. We'll see. We'll do... Oh, I don't know. How many laps are we going to do? Explain the strategy. There is no explanation. Basically, you get more points for how much you improve. So starting off slow and getting faster. It's, it's the ultimate sandbagging. This is Michael Schumacher's School of Sim Racing. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> Hang on a minute, where was this checkpoint? Shit, it was on the start finish line, wasn't it? Was it around this corner? I can't remember. Oh, it's there, it's there, it's there. Oh, shit. I don't know what you mean about this bit of snooze fest. This is this is probably the most intense thing that you can do in AC. This is what makes AC stand out. No other simulator has this. Well, they just don't appreciate driving, appreciating the countryside and driving at motorway speeds. You know. Uh, what do you mean slow? We're driving at motor at the speed limit. It's pretty quick. It's all relative. Three thousand hard earned points.
Oh. I don't know what's worse, me doing this or people watching me do this. I don't, I don't like ACC, but I do like the normal. <laughs> the normal setup. It's amazing. It is amazing. Probably one of the. <laughs> amazing. Probably one of the. That is well, amazing. Max <laughs> Verstappen like was specifically uh, referring to this one, mode. <laughs> Clearly, he was obviously referring to this mode when he was talking about AC. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Max Verstappen loves this mode. He's the biggest fan of Time Attack. It's what he spends all his free time doing, is this. Oh dear, that's so funny. That's amazing. I think we can do it based on the delta. Like, if the delta's always up by, like, X seconds, then we're all right. Uh, it's 15,000. It wasn't 25, it was 15 for this one. Shut up. Oh, peace go. What's 10 PLN? I don't even know what that is. Thank you. Thanks for the PLN. What's the PLN? It'll be, it's a bit delayed. Super chats are a bit slow. Is that five of whatever? Put you on the uh, list. Thank you. Appreciate the PLN. This is the closest simulation of what it's like for Max Verstappen to be in a Formula 1 race. That's why he likes it. Three, two, two, one, one go! <laughs> do nothing. Do nothing, Death worse than watching. Thank you very much. We really appreciate the support. Thanks for everyone for clicking the like button as well. Wow, there's so many ways you can support this channel. What a time to be alive. This is basically turned into Euro Truck Simulator. I hope Ace Assetto Corso 2 AC Evo is literally just this. I hope the old game is just time attacks. That would be absolutely hilarious. Like 300 time attack challenges. <laughs> How good would that be? Crap. 
cruisers love this. If this could be a game mode where you literally, you just have to drive around at a set speed and you get points for fuel burned and that allows you to buy paint to do or do stuff to your car. There are a no large number of people that love that shit. They would absolutely love it. Oh, you've tires are what now you can buy new tires. Ah, uh, and then it, the rain and then day night and stuff and they, they love it. They, they would absolutely love it. That's there's a whole scene around people that do that stuff. Cruise it, the whole cruising thing. For, even on racetracks they were doing it back with live for speed i'm not even talking about uh no hesse they, they would just drive around the same road slowly really weird like euro truck sim i think it's all right because you're actually doing something and it's on interesting roads but people would do it on a track like this for every day i mean it makes them happy yeah scored on how, how many uh, seals you've killed so slidey at such a low speed. Bloody hell. Oil on the motorway, yeah, typical. We should put we should put a warning out. Can I? No, because I have to keep explaining. It doesn't work. It's just stupid. Because you, it just means you have more time to get more points. Okay, let's go. How many laps have we done? Six. <laughs> We've really done six laps. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's go. Why is it so slidey? Oh, the tyres are cold. Shit. This might actually be really hard to get to 15,000 because the tyres are, are, are off. <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm not forcing you to watch this. We need like 4,000 more points. Oh, we just need a few thousand more. Oh no, this is way more exciting than hot lapping. Oh, we need to do three more. This is like when people do supercar track days and they're like, oh, I, I drove a, I drove a Formula One car. And they're driving around the track at like 10 miles an hour. I I got Formula One experience, guys. Formula One. Wow, one more, and I think we're good.
There we go. Right, we just need to do a couple bankers. Yeah, the rally experiences where <laughs> people are barely even like sliding. It would be better for them to just have a car park and then for them to do some, you know, like the Richard Burns rally training thing. That would be way better than pootling around a, a thing where you are shitting yourself from like worrying about wrecking. No, it's just it's just a certain point amount of points you need to get. It, it's basically just a test of how much torture you can take. Fifteen. So we, we've basically done it. I'm just making sure. Are you guys not entertained? Uh, no, I don't have any pets. I did have some fish, but they died. <laughs> I had them for like five or six years, and then they died. Oh, there's a cat in the garden though. I was doing the I was washing some stuff up and I saw it. I'm gonna try and make friends with it. I'm gonna steal the cat. So that is my cat now. I feed it some fish or something. Befriend the neighbourhood cat. Then I don't need a pet. It's genius. Yeah, I rescued it. It's a bit timid though, so I don't know how I'm gonna. It always runs away when I wave at it. Not like the cat that just came through the window. Oh, is that what you do? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> totally Jesus Christ. <laughs> Can, you Can you imagine if someone did that? <laughs> the owners of the cat wouldn't know, and they'd just be like, and then they find out. Oh, <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> so stupid. Oh, so dumb. Oh, dear, so dumb. There we go. Jesus Christ. If I crash now, we have to do the whole thing again. Oh! If 
if anybody ever calls into question Kunos's capacity for game design, just show them this to prove them wrong. Well, we have 129 people on Twitch wondering what on earth is going on. <laughs> Welcome to Assetto Corsa. This is peak Assetto Corsa right here. Uh, you get free uh, d depression. is about as exciting as gaming can get in 2024 the golden era golden era i'm not i don't know what i'm doing we're just going Maybe we can get 25 then. Maybe we get an achievement. Who knows? What is this challenge? I don't know what this challenge is. That's Kunos. Oh, we can get 25. Maybe we're getting a, a, a bonus. No! No! Woo! 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 <laughs> oh, that was close. That was close. <laughs> that was really close. 25! No! <laughs> we still got gold. Woo! Bloody hell, that was close. You're an emotional support donkey. Oh, that's not nice to call your girlfriend. Oh, we only need 10,000 for this one. Ah, oh, 8,000. Ah, oh, those were the hard ones. Right, 10,000 for this one. Let's go. <laughs> this is terrible. Ah, oh, bloody hell. Nine to go. Gaming. Ah, oh, this squeaky suspension spaceship. quite relaxing doing this though apart from when you get 20 minutes into it and then you bit get you're worried that you've wasted your entire life there's the checkpoint I can't see it Skill. Skill. We get seven points for that one. Oh well. It was beautiful.
Oh, guys, remember to click the like button <laughs> if you enjoy this high quality live streaming. Oh, wow, yes. 262 likes. What a time to like a live. We'll be alright, we'll be alright. <laughs> Whoops. Don't worry. No, you get you can see we well you can't see it, you start getting penalised. You go below like forty miles an hour. Two seven. We might get three hundred likes. Not bad. No, can't make it smaller. All you need to know is that we're suffering miserably. <laughs> the competitivo can't be moved. Come on. It could probably be moved to the right. Yes, anything's possible when you're as skilled as me at gaming. There's 137 people watching on Twitch. Uh, <laughs> wondering, they're all wondering what the hell is he doing? Imagine loading this up and you're like, oh yeah. Makes sense. Oh shit. Checkpoint. Oh no. We're a bit close. Easy. Beat content. We've cracked the we've cracked the uh, sim racing code. Turns out people are bored of people driving fast. What they really want to see is someone just driving around at hundred motorway speeds on racetracks. We've got tunes. Probably a bit quiet for you guys. It's quite loud for me.
This one was only 10,000, wasn't it? Hundred thousand. Oh, oh, oh! That's all right. Right, if you go off the road, you lose points. You'll be careful. This is sim racing, yeah. It's a good demo. If this doesn't sell you a, a, a 500 pound DD wheel, I don't know what will. What's going on? Well, you're the first person to ask that, actually. The pace car is out of control. Thanks for following. Coxlander. Welcome. Welcome along. No, I'm not. I, I, I think if you, if you're, do you have any tips uh, for beginners in this out court? Yeah, start with the time attack. If you want some heart pounding action, and to really experience the thrill of sim racing, start with the time attack. It's where it's at, mate. That's my advice. Time attack. More like, wow! I really want to do more of this attack. Yeah, time attack's the best place to begin sim racing. Or, alternatively, I highly recommend doing the uh, drift challenge in the KTM crossbow. That's, that's um, you know, if that's probably one of the best drift cars ever made in sim racing. And that drift challenge is such a joy and thrill to take part in. We, we really should be grateful that a developer spent the time designing a game and putting that car in the drift challenge for us i mean really if you were skeptical about sim racing and thinking oh you wasted your money doing it just that ktm drift is unbelievable changed my life
This is quite exciting. This is this is like waiting in an airport to see if your plane's cancelled. It, it captures that 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 kind of excitement. Pretty amazing. Or like this, this captures the joy of waiting for a train that's been delayed. So, I don't know how Kunos managed to do that, <laughs> given that they're in Italy. So you know, really clever design. Oh, Cory, the achievement is, can we do this without uh, passing out? <laughs> How are you doing? Man, you need to, Cory, you need to try these time attacks. I know your sim rig's not been used much recently. Boy, are you missing out. You could be doing this. Really, you could be, you could be experiencing the joy of time attacks. My goodness. It's really hard to do this without falling asleep. Because <laughs> you make one mistake, you lose. And all 20 minutes that you've done previously are gone. You're confused. No, yeah, no, everyone understands what this is about. Everybody gets this. Nothing confusing about this at all. What's the goal? What is the goal? Deep philosophical questions from Corey. What is the goal? Who knows? It's, it's whatever you make it. I need a cup of tea. Can you make me one? No, no bloody sugar. I'm on 8,500 points. Yeah, we're up to fourth gear, the excitement. Are you not scared of the speed? <sighs> A 
There we go. 10,000. I think that's it. We're going to keep going just to play it safe. How many bloody laps have we done? Six. Christ almighty. Please stop. Please stop. No. There is no stopping. One does not stop time attack. Time attacks you. At least three hundred pounds. Everyone, everyone wants to watch Time Attack. Ever since uh, Time to Survive came out on Netflix, ever since that, it's been the big, it's been the big thing. Let's just let the timer run out. We'll drive slowly. Ah. Oh. tune engine right here we go god damn it ah god right you know what guys this has put me to sleep i need a good rest i need a good rest so we can continue this tomorrow maybe we'll finish tomorrow you know Maybe we will finish the challenge tomorrow, or well, all the missions. <sighs> we we we're like, let's have a look. Ninety-one point, ninety-one point six competitive Ninety-one point six. What a time to be alive! Uh, yeah, we still got some race challenge to do. Uh, uh, we've done all the hot laps. We've done 62 out of 71 of the races. We've done all the drifts. We've done all the drags. We've done 27% of the time attacks. Um... Yeah. 
Bloody hell. Thanks for taking part today, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you very much. Thanks to the people that donated and became members. Thanks for clicking the like button. 280 likes. Thanks for, yeah, supporting us and everything. Oh. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, guys, could be the day where we complete a tetativo. Or at least complete a tetativo, the, uh, uh, the, the single, like, all the AC stuff. Maybe not the Steam Completed Tetativo, but, uh, oh dear. Yes. Have a good night, guys. Let's raid someone on Twitch. Who's on at this time? What fool is on at this time? Let's have a look. What are we, what are we going to do? I don't know. Uh... Who's this? Who's marrying a Papapopolo? Uh, we've got like an American, an American lady. Who's this? Never seen them before. I know, oh, not American. Spanish? Hola! Si! Yeah. I don't know them. Right, uh, who else is there? Uh, is this? Uh, uh, who's on? Who's Rift Blondie? Yeah, I these new people I've not seen before. Offline. Oh, I don't know who they are. They're, they're not on. <laughs> uh, who is here, guys? Where are... I'm going to look at all following. T Twitch is weird. Paul Smith's on. Sim Gamer Hello, Nerd. No, we've not raided him for ages. Yeah. And, yes. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Sim Game Nerd. Check him out, guys. Nice guy. Good streamer. There we go. Let's raid a ledge. Check him out, guys. Thanks for. Thanks for following him. If you do, if you can, if a bunch of you follow him, that'd be awesome. Give him a good, make his afternoon good. That'd be cool. Um, yeah. Thanks for taking part. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Oh no, he's leaving. He's ending his stream. Let's raid him at the end to confuse him. <laughs> Let's confuse him. Here we go. Bye, bye, guys. For sponsoring us.